Crushing on My Billionaire Best Friend. Chapter 1. Lainey. Are you serious? No way. I practically shouted at Lisa, my bestie, on FaceTime. Yes, way. She beamed, bringing her face close to the screen. When? I couldn't believe she was taking a vacation. If anybody deserved the time off, Lisa did. She worked her ass to the bone. Leaving in half an hour, girl. She rolled her eyes, waving her hand dramatically. I still need to pack. How long will you be gone? Lisa grinned with a dreamy expression. A few weeks. That'll be so much fun. Yep, especially in the bedroom, she said with a wink. I can't wait to get me some down and dirty action. Maybe he's going to propose. A dream vacation where the man you loved proposed? Yes, please. He better. Lisa hooted. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Oh, speak of the devil, he's here. Sug, I gotta run. Text you later. Love you. I touched my fingers to my lips and blew her a kiss. Have fun. You better send me a pic first thing. Of his popsicle, she asked, lifting an amused brow. Of the ring. Lisa. We burst out laughing, and she fell out of view for a moment. I think maybe she rolled off the bed? That girl was crazy, I loved it. The pic, it was an inside joke between Lisa and me. My last Tinder date had sent me a dick pic. Yeah, I know. Sending dick pics, that was creepy as fuck. No man should ever do that. I mean, hello? Lisa had thought it was hilarious, and she'd asked me if his face was in the pic. It wasn't. That had been another red flag. It had probably been another guy's popsicle, that's what Lisa had thought, anyway. Was that a thing? Did men do that? I was so clueless. Will do. I'll miss you. Love you, Lainey. Don't work too long, get laid. And she hung up on me. Yeah, right. Get laid, I wish. I glanced up at the clock. It was late. And I was still at work. The lab had gone dark hours ago, and yet again, I'd forgotten to flip on the lights. The sting of the bright computer monitor had started to scorch my eyeballs, I really needed a blue screen filter, but I sat, and I worked. Like I did most nights. Linzer Incorporated was a multinational pharmaceutical corporation, and one of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies, also known as my second home. Or really, it could be considered my first home since it was actually the place where I spent most of my time. I was trying to push through the familiar late-night exhaustion and focus, but a notification on my phone yanked me away. I glanced at it for a moment, just long enough to see Oliver had posted yet another picture on Instagram. Seeing it was a sensation I was all too familiar with. A perfect photo of him standing at a glamorous party or nightclub with a stick-thin, supermodel-looking girl on his arm. Absolutely nothing had changed since high school. Seconds after his flawless photo hit the gram, another text popped up on my phone. It was the second one from him in the past several hours. Oliver, you should have come out tonight, Lainey. Oliver, lots of rich, single guys here. Good grief. I groaned and rolled my eyes. How can men be so blind? Oliver and a shit ton of drinks and fun. I'd intentionally ignored his first text inviting me out, but of course, he couldn't take the damn hint. He never did. Not when it came to trying to lure me out into his ridiculously glammy nightlife of socializing and drinking. Sure, Oliver, I mumbled to myself in the dark lab, I should just drop everything and be your third wheel around town. It's not like I'm doing anything important, like, you know, developing cancer treatments. Oh. Wait. Yes, I am. I knew I shouldn't be such a bitch about it, and I knew he meant well, but come on. No one wanted to hang around their best friend while he tried to get laid. Nobody, and I mean, nobody wanted to be the third wheel. Ever. Especially where Oliver was concerned. I'd be invisible, and I didn't need that tonight. I had work to do. If it were just the two of us, that would be a different story. 
Me, sorry, still at work. Always at work, I thought to myself, but I didn't type that. If I seemed a teensy bit bitter and resentful, it was because I was. Or maybe just overworked. Or both. I wasn't resentful in the sense that I disliked him. Quite the opposite, actually. Oliver was my best friend. I'd pined over him for years, but none of that mattered. Sure, I was a little bitter at times, and I was hard on myself. I couldn't be Miss Mary Sunshine all the time. I mean, seriously. Could any woman? Really? Since I was 14 years old, I had watched everything fall into Oliver's lap. The lucky bastard. An endless string of beautiful women, that was hard to watch, his lucrative career with his family's company, that wasn't hard to watch, and fun. Always non-stop fun. Or so it seemed. What I wouldn't give to have his easy-going, I don't give a fuck attitude and not worry about anything anymore. Trust me, I'd tried. It wasn't easy to not give a fuck. I'd faced the truth a long time ago, I just wasn't an easygoing person. Sigh. Especially when it came to him. Well anyway, while I attended our expensive New York prep school on scholarship, fighting to keep my GPA up, it had been the Humphreys family that funded the place which basically meant Oliver was a straight-A student whether he earned it or not. And while I was studying my ass off in undergrad, Oliver was partying his way around campus. He was bestowed the title of chief financial officer of his family's real estate company after graduating college, see? Told you he was a lucky bastard, and I continued working my ass off to earn my master's. And the rough road was far from over for me. My next stop? NYU's prestigious PhD program. Oliver's next stop? A trendy new club opening in Midtown Manhattan, apparently. With one of Cosmopolitan's recent top-featured mannequins. Like I said, absolutely nothing had changed since high school. I blew out a long, steady breath, knowing I didn't have time to get wrapped up in any of my wannabe, deep-seated feelings of resentment toward Oliver. I failed miserably when trying to actually resent him. I mean, I loved the guy, actually loved him, and a lot. And honestly, it wasn't about money and lifestyle differences. Truthfully, my main reason for secretly holding on to those off-the-wall feelings toward my best friend was that in all these years, he'd never once considered my potential to be anything more. The only reason I could see that I'd been so quickly written off his list of prospective girlfriends was either the fact my ass wasn't rail-thin skinny, which let's face it, who gives a rat's ass? Well, honestly, me, but only on bad days like today, or I'd been shoved directly into the friend zone, forever. Both sucked ass. Speaking of sucking ass, I never should have confessed my love for him. I did. Sigh. In a letter. That was more than ten years ago. Talk about the most embarrassing moment of my life. Let's just say, I wished I'd never written it. Thankfully, we remained friends. I'd come a long way since my frizzy-haired, baggy-clothed, four-eyed high school days. I'd also learned how to master the art of makeup and waxing my eyebrows. Yes, ladies, those brows, if they were anything like mine, they needed to be waxed in a bad way. Nobody liked caterpillar brows, it just took me longer than most to get my fashion sense in order. Not that it made any difference to Oliver. Truth be told, sometimes I still wore glasses. Sometimes contacts irritated my eyes, go me and baggy shirts, I loved my comfy, oversized, funny t-shirt, okayest girlfriend ever gift from Lisa. She loved funny gifts, and nobody could top her gags. And frizzy hair, unless I dumped all the anti-frizz I could get into it. I mean, who cared? I was at home, and I had nobody to impress. I was comfortable in my own skin, and I didn't give a shit what other people thought. Okay, except Oliver, and he'd seen me at my absolute worst. But, I didn't allow anybody's opinion of me to define my self-worth. I'd learned that the hard way when I was a kid, struggling with my weight and self-image. Then I decided, screw it. I refused to live my life by other people's standards or what a scale said. Scales were the devil, anyway. I felt myself slipping back into the land of medicinal science, where nothing else existed except me and the tedious collection of things in front of me, be it algorithms, bacterial slides, or clinical trial results. Who needed nightclubs, cocktails, and entertainment when you had all of that in your life? 
all day, every day, often for 12 to 16 hours a day. For that matter, who needed a sex life? Especially one with Oliver Humphreys in it. Not me. Okay, that's a lie. I would very much like a sex life. Preferably with him in it. But that's a whole other story. My fantasies, though? Yeah, they totally starred him, center stage. I'd named my trusty vibrator Oliver. I was bad, and I knew it. Sue me. I just finished my turkey on rye with pickles and chips. I was stuffed. And, I was finally back in the flow of things when my phone rang. I threw my head back in a long, dramatic groan. Oliver. I'm working. Stop. Ms. Carter? An older man's thickly accented voice cut me off. Oops. Oh. Uh. Sorry. Yes? This is Mr. Cruz. The supervisor at your apartment building. Mr. Cruz. Of course. I knew the voice seemed familiar, but something was off. His Spanish accent was thicker than usual, and he sounded alarmed and frantic. What's going on? The moment I asked the question, I picked up on the noises ringing out from the background. There was a lot of commotion, shouting, and sirens. My heart started to pound in my chest. I, I don't know how to tell you this, Ms. Carter. But I didn't want you to come home and find out by surprise. The building, there was a fire, and I'm sorry to say that, well, your belongings were destroyed. What? Fire? Oh, my god. I blinked, processing one word at a time. Which belongings? I'm sorry? I didn't repeat what I'd said. It was clear enough the first time, wasn't it? Or maybe I was just in shock. All of them, he said after a long, awkward pause. Most of the units inside the building have been destroyed, they just poofed up in flames. I'm afraid your unit was one of them that didn't make it. You should turn on the local news and see for yourself. It's bad. I am so sorry. I immediately opened my browser and searched for the local news report. Sure enough, there it was, and my mouth fell open. I couldn't believe my eyes. Plumes of smoke were billowing from my building, and suddenly the weirdest sensation washed over me. Like I was standing on a floor, but suddenly realized the floor was gone. Only I was still floating there in space, trying to figure out where it had gone. Didn't make it? I murmured, the only three words out of all that I could think of right now. Mr. Cruz kept talking, explaining everything in more detail, but his words were no longer registering in my brain. He said something about the Pomeranian that belonged to an older woman who lived a few doors down from me. A candle knocked over. Flammable curtains. The only thing that seemed to really sink in enough to make sense was when he said that none of my neighbors had been hurt and everybody got out safely. I breathed a sigh of relief. Ms. Carter? Are you still there? No, I blinked. I mean, yes. Yes, I'm still here. I'll, I'll be right there. I wouldn't come tonight. It's dark, and the air is filled with smoke and mist from the firefighters' hoses. There are parts of the fire they're still trying to extinguish. They're trying to clear everyone that they can out of the area for now. His voice grew louder, but then it was gone, like he was talking to somebody else. A few seconds later he returned to the phone. Sorry about that. Where was I? Smoke and mist. Me coming there. Ah, yes. You can come tomorrow and see for yourself. The insurance people will want to interview everyone. When I didn't respond, because my brain was working overtime just to keep up with everything in its state of shock, he added, I hope you have somewhere to stay. A hard lump rolled down my throat. Uh, huh. Well, thanks for calling to let me know. Shit. I hung up the phone and stared at the screen for a long time without moving. Like most nights, my plan was to work for another hour and then go home to cuddle up with a Sylvia Day hardcover and crash, only to get up early tomorrow morning and do it all over again. It had all been ripped out from under me. None of the work in front of me made sense anymore, and whatever came after that was completely unknown. A memory from that morning flashed through my brain. 
I'd run to catch the closing elevator doors and found Mrs. Mosley waiting inside with her dog, Princess Bubbles, perched next to her on a leash with that giant pink bow flopping around on the side of her head, piercing the small space with her little yapping, she was so cute. I'd always loved that dog, and now everything I owned was gone because of a cute little puppy? I didn't understand. I mean, yeah, accidents happened, I knew, but Princess Bubbles had always been so well behaved. I just couldn't imagine her setting the entire building on fire, okay, the inside, but still. Mrs. Mosley would even allow me to watch her from time to time when she needed to do grocery shopping. I'd never once seen Princess do anything but lay at my feet or on my lap and beg for belly rubs. But now, I was homeless. What was I going to do? My chest rose and fell as I clung to that breathing technique I thought I needed moments before, but apparently, it only worked for melodramatic crises and not real ones. Because it was quickly spiraling away from me, leaving me feeling like I was hyperventilating right there in my rolling lab chair. All of my stuff was gone. My clothes. My memories. My letters. My books. My kitchen stuff. My favorite, I love me, coffee mug. My favorite sweatshirt. It was a school logo hoodie that just so happened to match the one Oliver always wore. Oh, and poor little Oliver. He'd surely be a bubbling goop of pink in what was left of my nightstand. Thank God firefighters would never find my little secret toy of joy. This was a nightmare. All of my favorite things I thought had been so safe tucked away in the security of my apartment were now destroyed. Okay, think, Elaine. One thing at a time. What comes next? I glanced over to the stacks of papers around my computer and the slides glowing from the screen. Obviously not that. What comes after work? Home. Bed. I have no home, but I have to find a bed to sleep in. One downside of working all the time was that it left me with no time to socialize, which meant I didn't have many close friends. That's why any recent noise from my phone was usually a notification from Oliver, one of the only people I ever bothered getting to know and keeping around in my life. With one exception, Lisa. She was a hairdresser I'd run into outside of my regular morning bodega stop, while she ducked out of the salon to grab some coffee in between clients. She'd complimented my outfit and my figure. It had been one of the rare moments in my life when I could eye another woman up and down, and realize that she was fierce, and yet, she didn't fit all the cookie-cutter beauty standards. She had dark skin, was tall, slender, but not what you'd call typically beautiful, she wasn't one of the fake-breasted, nose-in-the-air NYC model types you'd normally see. No, Lisa barely had a chest at all, and she didn't care. People often called her a tomboy, her words, but I didn't see it. She carried herself with grace and confidence. I'd stood there on the street corner in awe of her, a feeling which only intensified as we'd gotten to know each other. All I could stutter back in reply was, I want to be just like you. And I meant it. I wanted to know how to wear my flaws, if you could call them that, like pearls around my neck. Girl, I want to be just like you, she'd smiled back without missing a beat, and have those girls. She'd gestured to my breasts and then to her own boyish chest, again, her words, then shrugged it off like, oh, well. She'd laughed and asked if I wanted to go and get a cup of coffee. I nodded and followed her like a lost little puppy. The rest was history. Lisa was my go-to girl for support, and she taught me a thing or two about being a sassy, confident woman, and owning it. She started cutting and styling my hair in exchange for me helping her out with her taxes and other business things, she wanted to learn to branch out on her own as an independent hairdresser. I had always been good with numbers, graphs, finances, you name it. I brought my analytical brain to the table, and she always knew how to make me laugh or bring me out of my shell. And right now, I wanted nothing more than to cry on her shoulder. Especially because I knew with her talent for styling, she could help me shop for new clothes that would actually fit me, my boobs in particular, and look good. And clothes were one of many things my life was suddenly void of. I yanked out my phone and scrolled to Lisa's number. The split second before I could hit the dial button, I shook my head and cursed the heavens. Shit. Of course, not even an hour ago, Lisa had told me she'd be jet-setting off on some fabulous mini vodka with her boyfriend Chad and wouldn't be home for a couple of weeks. I scrolled to my dad's number, but the mere thought of how he would react to this news was too daunting to face. 
he'd always been overprotective and would go into a full-blown panic attack over something like this. My childhood home was a last resort, but if I could delay telling my dad about the fire until I had a chance to process it myself, we'd both be better off. There was my sweet grandma Thelma, but she lived too far away in upstate New York. Damn it. My crazy Aunt Lois, nope. I stopped that thought before it even gained traction. That would be worse than being homeless. I'd rather sleep under a freaking bridge. That woman was certifiably bats hit, and she hated my mother for unknown reasons, and still did to this day, even though mom had died years ago in a car accident. Hard. Nope. And, of course, there was Lizzie, another friend I'd met years ago. She was an exotic dancer who just moved in with her new roommate and worked two jobs. I didn't want to bother her. Lizzie had enough on her plate as it was. I'd helped her move and knew how tiny her apartment was. There wasn't even room for a spare couch, much less another woman and her baggage. The only other option I could possibly think of would be a couple of my neighbors, but they were facing the same dilemma as me. Hell, I couldn't afford to stay in a long-term hotel until I found another apartment, either, or if they decided to renovate mine. Double damn. I was up shit creek without a paddle. Burying my face in my hands, while also kicking myself for not having more friends, I began reliving everything that had happened. It was as if I needed to relive each moment of it, just to believe it was real. Mr. Cruz's words ran through my mind on repeat over and over, seeming less believable each and every time. I pushed those thoughts aside and racked my brain for somebody else I could call. Okay, yes. There was another friend. Oliver. But damn it. Calling my lifelong, drop-dead gorgeous crush in a time of crisis wasn't exactly ideal, but he was the only person left I could turn to. Especially at that hour. I started looking around, digging through the clutter on my desk, frantically trying to find my phone. The empty takeout box fell to the floor around me, and it wasn't until I lifted an oncology reference book that I saw the damn thing right there in my hand, where it had been the whole time. Oh. My. God. I needed to get my shit together. 4. Real. My hand was shaking as I lifted the phone back to my ear and held my breath through the ringtone. If Oliver didn't pick up, I was screwed. Ring. 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 Why the hell isn't he picking up? Ring. Ring. Pick up. Pick up. Rin. Yeah, he finally huffed, sounding out of breath. This is, pretty bad timing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I closed my eyes and said a brief silent prayer of gratitude before yelling everything out in a burst of speed even I didn't know I was capable of. He was my only lifeline, and I felt the urgent need to get everything out all at once. Oliver? Don't hang up. You're not going to believe this, but something crazy happened. My apartment. There's this cute little white fluffy dog, Princess Bubbles, on my floor, and apparently, she knocked over this big candle and sent it crashing into these rayon curtains, oh, do you have rayon curtains by the way? Because they're apparently super flammable. Like combustible level flammable. Anne. Laney? Oliver cut me off. He seemed like he'd been so focused on placing who I was that he hadn't heard a word I'd said. There was a tension in his voice that made it sound like he was straining. Was he working out or something? Yes. It's Laney. I didn't hide the impatience in my tone. Didn't you look at the caller ID? Anyway, listen carefully because this is really important. Princess Bubbles? Oh, okay. There was a strange grunting noise in between his words. I groaned and rolled my eyes, pressing my palm flat to the part of my head that hurt the most. Everything in my skull was pounding in one way or another. Leave it to a man to barely listen to you even when you specifically say, listen carefully. My apartment. It's gone. There was a fire, and, well, everything I own is gone, aside from what I'm wearing right now and whatever random odds and ends are in my purse. Which might be a lot, actually. I shook my head, trying to focus on what was most important. Anyway, can I come over? I need a place to crash. Just for tonight. Oh, my god, he panted away from the phone. 
he must have been just as shocked as I was. I know. It's crazy, right? I'm just so glad I wasn't home when it happened. What? Lainey? Sorry. Can I call you back? Huh? Haven't you been listening to me at all? Oliver. Okay, again. Can I, please? Stay. At. Your. Place. Tonight. Please? I repeated slowly, making a point to emphasize each word more carefully this time. Whatever part of space his head was floating in at that moment was obviously a place where the workout gods only had ears for weights and give me more. Men and their tools, or weightlifting in this scenario. He let out an even louder grunt, and for the first time, I realized I didn't think I wanted to know what he was doing. My place? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Fuck. Yeah. You know you're always welcome, any, time, Laney. Oh. Uh. Okay. Great. I didn't expect you to be so, enthusiastic about it. Thank you, Oliver. You're a lifesaver. I'm leaving the lab now, so I'll be there in about 20 minutes or so. See you soon. Yup. See you later, La. The call dropped before he even finished saying my name. Okay, so, Oliver was obviously drunk, and not working out. Whatever. Not the ideal thing to be around right now. But that was okay. Beggars can't be choosers. And on second thought, maybe it was exactly what I needed to be around right now. Maybe I need to be drunk. I certainly wouldn't be able to concentrate on work tonight. A nice glass of red wine was just what I needed. I bolted up from the chair, sending it rolling backward into the desk behind me. Quickly, I slipped out of my white lab coat before rushing over to the hooks near the exit, where my enormous bag and jacket were hanging. For once, I was glad I carried such a big purse, often throwing in apples, books, bottles of water, tissues, chapstick, and who knew what else. It always seemed like such a bad habit before, but now that bag carried the entirety of what was left of my belongings. I flashed my badge across all the security keycard access panels that opened the ridiculous number of doors between me and the main lobby. Before I stepped foot outside, though, I made a mad dash to the ladies' room to check my hair and makeup. I'd been working all day, so what had been a cute updo was now a mess. I took it down and shook out my long, brown hair, finger combing it and my curls as best I could. It didn't look half bad, kind of like that sexy, wind-blown look. I dug through my bag and found my cherry-stained lip gloss. Perfect. Swiping it across my lips, and then blotting with a tissue, I smiled in the mirror. I was missing something. Yes. I needed a fresh application of coal and mascara to make my green eyes pop posing in the mirror and analyzing my reflection one final time, I pushed up the girls for good measure, because Oliver, and straightened my slacks. I was ready. Soon enough, after I'd properly primped, I found myself out on the street corner in front of the Linzer headquarters, which were mostly empty that time of night. I was glad I didn't have to make small talk with anybody on my way out. Dropping the bomb of, my apartment just burned with everything I own inside, wasn't exactly the most pleasant evening conversation. Once I was safely settled into the warm, slightly smelly, comfort of the backseat of a taxi, I gave Oliver's address to the driver and set myself to the task of dumping my bag's contents out onto the back seat, taking inventory of what I owned. Lip gloss, mascara, and eyeliner, check. Keys to an apartment that was now burnt to a crisp. Phone. Glasses. Work badges, used daily. Gym badge, used never. Takeout menus and receipts galore an apple, and a bag of my favorite cookies, with only three left inside. There was a banana that was a little too brown and starting to slip out of its peel, gross. A book and a magazine, both bought at random at the corner drugstore, neither of which had been read. Approximately fifty bobby pins, but only three hair ties. A funny face mask with a toothy laughing mouth that had been a gift from Lisa. Tissues, hand sanitizer, aspirin, tampons, a bottle of water, and two small notebooks filled to the brim with random work notes and to-do lists. So, basically, I now owned a pile of things that could easily be bought at any pharmacy or convenience store. 
In other words, nothing that really mattered to me, aside from Lisa's face mask. I turned the bag inside out to make sure nothing else was hiding in there, which sent one thick strip of glossy paper and a few wrapped pieces of chocolate, gum, and mints falling onto the seat. I picked up the mints, while pulling the wrappers off, because, bad turkey on rye breath, yuck, one by one, before tossing a couple into my mouth, flipping the strip over to reveal five black and white photos of Oliver and me from the time we'd gone to Coney Island as teenagers. I ran my thumb over our smiling faces, remembering what a great day it had been. It was the first time we'd ever hung out outside of school, and I'd been ridiculously happy. I loved that photo. I actually looked good in it, I hated taking pictures. My boobs were on point. And my legs. Watching the how to angle photos to take the perfect shot video on IG had paid off. Oliver had caught me outside school one day bawling my eyes out. He'd stopped and asked if I was okay, assuming I was just having trouble with bullies again. He'd gotten way more than he bargained for when I'd tearfully explained that it was the anniversary of my mom's death. Some years were harder than others, and that one had been particularly rough since I was throttling full force into my teen years. I know just the thing to cheer you up. He had grinned, wrapping his arm around my shoulder. It was the closest he'd ever been to me. I'd cried against his chest for a little bit, but honestly, I'd been quickly distracted by how his skin felt against mine and how wonderful he'd smelled. And can you believe it? The next day he'd whisked me off to Coney Island. Sure, it might have had something to do with the fact that all of his cool friends were off to the Hamptons, and his parents couldn't take them until the next week. But I didn't care. His kindness at that time meant everything to me. No one had ever known how much losing my mother had affected me. But Oliver, he'd made the sunshine when all I could see were dark clouds and rain. He was my lone star in a dreary black night. Maybe it sounded corny, but he'd been there for me when I'd had no one else. The small stuffed bear he'd won for me at one of the carnival games, whose fur was a horrid shade of neon green for some reason, still sat on my dresser at home, hidden carefully behind several framed photos. Or at least it used to. Oh. Oh, damn. I could do without my yearbooks. I could do without other things that reminded me of some of the worst years of my life. Honestly, I even felt a little relieved that my old diaries, riddled with Oliver's name or my own paired with his last name, were no longer drifting around in the world. Pfft. Who am I kidding? Elaine Humphreys sounds so totally perfect. But in that moment, as I stared at that photo booth strip, I felt the sting of missing that stupid little stuffed bear so much that tears were threatening to spill from the corners of my eyes. I wanted to curl up in my bed, holding it tight. But instead, all I had was the freaking chocolate I'd tossed back in my purse, and there was no way in hell I was going inside his place with the possibility of yummy goodness stuck in my teeth. Nope. I ate another damn mint. If I couldn't have that little souvenir, I guess seeing Oliver in person wasn't such a bad alternative. The taxi stopped, and when I glanced up, I saw his richy rich apartment building towering above me. I grabbed my lip gloss for one more swipe. Hell, what could it hurt? I paid the cabbie, opened the door, and stepped out, stealing my nerve. I was about to see Oliver. Oliver. Nadine. With her silky, long blonde hair, the hem of her mini dress that kept her round ass, and her long tan legs perched on top of red stiletto heels, my dick jumped in response at the thought of having several hours of uninterrupted fun. She walked in front of me toward the main door of my penthouse, shooting me a come and get it smile over her shoulder as she went. Game on. I'd noticed her at the bar of the nightclub opening. A few minutes later, I'd talked her up over a few drinks. Details like her last name, career, and where she'd grown up were all discussed, but I couldn't give two shits about any of that when I brought her inside my place. I had a flawless strategy for getting a woman into my bed. It usually worked like a charm. Three to four steps usually sealed the deal. I never turned the lights on all the way, check. I had a second switch that activated just enough accent lighting to create a dim, sexy atmosphere, check. I lit a few candles and opened a bottle of red wine, handing her a glass while she perused my classic jazz record collection, check. 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 She was eyeing the obvious choices like Prince and Marvin Gaye. I was eyeing her breasts that threatened to spill out of her sheer and curve-hugging dress. More often than not the seeker was to put on jazz, it got women to let their guard down. It helped them relax and get into the mood, and all the more likely to prove their freaky sophistication in the bedroom. 
at least in my experience, and, to be fair, I had a lot. I'd admit, there had been a time when I hadn't known my ass for my dick. But at least women didn't run out of here clutching their purses and heels in a rush to get the hell away from me. Beautiful place. She glanced around with an impressed smile on her face, thrusting her chest forward. I clinked my glass to hers. Looks a lot more beautiful with you in it. She laughed and shook her head, and I knew she was about to call me on my generic come online. But I also knew she was flattered, regardless of how hard she tried to deny it to herself. She arched an eyebrow and lifted her wine glass to her lips. Does that work on all the girls? Sure does. I flashed a white smile, staring her directly in the eyes. It only needs to work on one. Preferably you. Cheesy, yeah. Worked every time, well, almost. She blushed and continued her walk around the penthouse. By the time I opened the second bottle of wine and we'd finished another round of small talk, she was sitting so close to me on my leather sofa that she was practically on my lap, grinding against me. Her dress had slid up her legs, revealing her black silk garters. That was a surprise and sexy as fuck. I feel like I've talked about myself all night. She stroked my arm with her nails, peering at me beneath thick black lashes, a wanton expression reflecting in her gaze. Tell me more about you. What about your family? Do they live in New York? I took a sip from my glass. Sure do. We're all close. I have a younger brother. Miles. We both work at our father's real estate company. Her eyes widened before she sat up with a gasp, her tits accidentally brushing my arm. Oh, my God. Humphreys. You're that Humphreys? In real estate? Here we go, I donned my best humble smile. You've heard of us? She made a point to move a few inches closer, trailing her fingers from my arm down to my leg. Of course I have. Your company is legendary. Hasn't it been featured in Forbes quite a few times? I was actually on the cover once. I shrugged like it was no big deal. All bets were off. Now that she realized who I was, and money and power were involved, she was determined to dig her claws in deep and have me inside her even deeper. Between that and the jazz music, she was about to make an effort at giving me the best sex of my life. Hell, I didn't have a problem with that. I wasn't a total asshole when it came to women. I was a ladies' man. I'd gotten used to being the center of attention since high school. I'd spent many nights with beautiful women, but I always made sure they'd left happy and satisfied. Sure, someday in the distant future, I hoped I'd end up as one half of a happily old married couple like my parents. But I didn't plan on giving up my life for that any time soon. Few things compared to the high of making up with a sexy woman like Nadine and coaxing her into my bed. It was almost as exhilarating as rock climbing or skydiving or gunning down the highway on my bike, which were other steady habits of mine. I'd always been an adrenaline junkie. Our eyes locked, and I went in for the kill. The kiss quickly turned into her straddling me on the couch while I ran my hands up and down her smooth, tan thighs. She tilted her head to the side with a challenging grin, removed my hands, dropped to the floor, and knelt in front of me. She had me with hunger and unzipped my fly, and I lifted my hips as Nadine yanked my pants and boxers down over my hips. I spread my arms over the back of the couch and leaned back, letting her believe she was in control. She shot me a sexy smile, and I watched as she wrapped her hands around me. Just when she started to slide her mouth down my raging length, I heard the damn phone ring. 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 Fuck. I never let a call go unanswered this time of night. It could be a work emergency. With millions of dollars hanging on the line every day, it was a sacrifice I had to make. Besides, I knew Nadine wasn't going anywhere. I just had to do my best not to let it sound too obvious. I picked up. Yeah? Nadine sucked me like a lollipop she couldn't get enough of, and my shoulders relaxed. Holy fuck. Somewhere, a woman's voice started ranting and raving. Something about a dog and curtains. It sounded important, whatever it was. But who fucking cares about curtains? Nadine picked up the pace. Damn, this girl knew how to play the clarinet. I was barely able to focus enough to realize that the voice on the line belonged to Laney. Laney? I asked to be sure. And to act like I was listening while my eyes practically rolled into the back of my head. I didn't really catch what she said, and it was getting harder to hide the pauses in my voice while Nadine continued to slowly run her tongue up and up and... Princess Bubbles? Oh, okay? 
I grunted. Laney kept talking as Nadine slid me deep into her mouth. Deep enough that I moaned despite my best efforts. Oh, my God. I heard Laney's reply on the other end. I know. It's crazy, right? I didn't know what was crazy or what I was doing on the phone anymore. What? Laney? Sorry, can I call you back? And as much potential as there was for it to be hot, in the back of my mind, I knew it was fucked up talking to one of my oldest female friends while being busy. Who would have known Nadine had such talent? Whatever Laney had going on tonight would have to wait. Oh, fuck, that move right there was awesome. I was about to explode. Laney spouted off something, but I only made out the words stay and your place. Nadine moved faster, and I groaned even louder than before. My place? Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck, yeah. You know you're always welcome, any, time, Laney. Another string of mindless words flew out of my mouth. I hung up and tossed the phone to the side. Everything all right? Nadine sat up, wiping her mouth. Everything was all right until you stopped. Huh? Oh, yeah. Everything's fine. Just an old family friend. Nowhere near as important as what's happening right here, right now, with you. She smiled and climbed back on my lap, sucking my bottom lip into her mouth. We made out for several minutes before I stood and wrapped her legs around my waist, carrying her into my bedroom. I took my time undressing her after shucking off my own clothing and tossing them to the floor. Nadine yanked me to the bed. I want you. Now. Who was I to say no to a beautiful woman? I had no problem with returning the favor from the couch later. As you wish. I smirked, and after rolling a condom on, I positioned myself at her slick entrance. But just as I was about to inch into her, a loud knock sounded at my front door. Knock. Knock. I let out a frustrated growl. Ah, oh, fuck. Nadine was starting to look impatient as she stared back at me with eyes full of lust and need. Knock. 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 I decided the knock could wait. I was busy. But the moment I went back to concentrate on what we were doing, the knock got even louder. Loud enough to cause concern. Knock! 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 Damn it! I rumbled, finally climbing off the bed. I grabbed a towel and quickly wrapped it around my waist before flinging the door open. What is it? Laney was standing there, a shocked and confused expression on her face. Laney? What are you doing here? Her brows wrinkled as she looked me up and down. I suddenly felt exposed in nothing but the white towel around my waist, barely masking the obvious tint I was pitching underneath it. Thankfully, she didn't seem to notice that not-so-small detail and just pushed past me into the apartment. What do you mean what am I doing here? she asked. Did you hit your head? We just talked on the phone like twenty-five minutes ago. You told me I could stay here. Ah. That's what that was all about. I sighed, raking a hand over my face. Oliver? Baby? Nadine called up from the bedroom. Everything all right? Yeah. It's fine. I just have company. Company? She shrieked. I could hear the distinct frantic shuffle of her gathering her clothes to put them back on her perfectly naked body that would soon be walking at my door. Great. There goes my chance at sliding into something wet and waiting. Oh. Laney glanced around awkwardly. Am I interrupting something? Laney had managed to interrupt us not once, but twice. And the second time was apparently going to evolve from an interruption to an all-out showstopper. Uh, don't worry about it. What's going on? Are you all right? I'm such an idiot, Oliver. Her shoulders dropped. I didn't know you were. I thought you were drunk. I'll just go. No, wait. Why do you need a place to stay? I hated to give up my shot at Nadine, but I wondered what was going on, why Laney was acting so strange. It wasn't typical Laney behavior to just show up, even if all hell had broken loose. I wouldn't send her away. Nadine would have to wait. My dick wanted to punch me in the face, but the old boy would just have to sit this one out. Laney was more important than getting laid. Fuck! Didn't you hear anything I said on the phone? She dropped her bag to the floor, cutting her gaze toward my bedroom. There was a fire in my apartment. Everything's destroyed. What? Oh, shit. Man, I felt like an asshole. 
That's what that was all about. Why don't you take a seat and calm down? Want a beer or something stronger? I almost didn't notice Nadine storming past me, her tits bouncing in anger. She kept her jacket and purse clutched tight under one arm, her cum heels dangling by the straps of her fingers. She was obviously in a hurry to get the hell out of my place. I'll call you. I managed to say just before the door slammed shut. It looped back to Laney who was staring at the door with a wounded expression on her face. Why was she upset? Was she still comparing herself to thinner girls? No. She couldn't be. The way I'd seen her transform into this confident woman was amazing. She didn't take shit from anybody anymore. The days of my protecting her were long over. I'd always thought Lenny was attractive with her long brown hair and bright green eyes. She still wore glasses at times, usually when her hair was pinned to the top of her head in a messy bun. But that wasn't the look she sported tonight. Tonight, she was gorgeous, with her hair down in spiraling waves, and wearing makeup. To me, she didn't need to, she looked nice without it. Lainey was pretty in her own way, beautiful with her natural curves. Back then, though, she didn't see it, regardless of how many times I told her. I pretended not to notice the way she stared enviously at every girl she'd ever seen me with. Maybe it was because I cared too much about her to see her hurt. I'd only wish she could see herself the way I, and many other men did. She just never noticed it, always keeping her head down and concentrating on work. That's why I continued to bug the shit out of her about going out with me and my friends so she could let her hair down, see what others saw in her. But, she almost always refused. I really didn't mean to ruin your night. Her face was filled with remorse and a little embarrassment. Don't be ridiculous. Your apartment just burned down. You don't need to worry about my night being ruined. Yours has been much worse, and of course you can stay here. I moved forward to hug her but suddenly became all too aware of the fact I was still wearing nothing but a towel around my waist, and not a large one at that. Just, uh, yeah, let me wash up real quick. Make yourself at home. Help yourself to anything you want in the kitchen. I'll be right back. I ducked into my bedroom, cutting through to the master bathroom so I could wash my hands, splash some water on my face and my junk. Did I regret not getting to bust the nut in Nadine? Of course. Would I jerk off later in my room to some naughty pics of her? One hundred percent, yes. But there was something to be said about my friendship with Lainey. Regardless of what happened in her life, if she needed me, I'd be there for her. Lainey was the only female friend I'd ever been able to keep around. I'd do anything for her, and she'd do anything for me. Plain and simple. There wasn't any kind of drama bullshit tied to our relationship, not like you'd expect from most women. She was my best friend. She came first. Period. When I was done cleaning up, I threw on a pair of sweatpants and a t-shirt and went out to find Lainey in the kitchen hunting through my cabinets. Watch you looking for? She spun around with a look of desperation. Red wine. Or vodka. I smirked, pulling out two glasses along with a bottle of Belvedere, pouring us each a hefty amount. Not so much. She held up her hand. I have to work in the morning. What? No. That's absurd. Your place just burned down with everything in it. You can't just turn around and go to work tomorrow like nothing happened. Take a couple days off. You need it. She nodded, and I could tell everything was still sinking in. I guess you're right. I can use the time to find a new place. Well, that and new clothes, and every other essential. Underwear, pajamas, shoes, clothes for work, and about a million other things like a toothbrush and a hair dryer. I handed her the drink, narrowing my eyes at her. I know it's a lot, but don't freak out. I can give you something to sleep in for tonight. I'm sure I have a pair of shorts and a comfy t-shirt that'll fit you. Just stay here. No, no, I... It's closer to your work anyway, and I've got three extra bedrooms. Take your pick. No, really, thank you. I've already imposed enough by ruining your, um, date or whatever that was. I don't want to force myself on you any longer than one night. Two, tops. I'm not asking. I'm insisting. Please. I've got plenty of room, Laney, and I want to make sure you're taken care of. You're staying here until everything gets sorted out with your apartment, and that's final. But it'll probably be two or three months. Maybe even longer before they finish renovating my apartment. I shrugged. Works for me. 
A relieved smile flashed across her face. I'll think about it. Thank you, Oliver. I wrapped my arms around her, pulling her in close for a hug. She leaned into me, a little closer than I'd expected, and I caught a whiff of her berry-scented shampoo. I loved the way women's shampoo smelled. But I couldn't blame her for clinging to me and hugged her a little tighter. She had a terrible day. One for the books. Are you okay? Sorry, I was so distracted on the phone earlier. No worries, she grumbled as we walked over to sit on the couch. I'm fine. I was working when it happened, of course, like always. Well, hey, I said, nudging her arm, at least now you can officially say that working your ass off all the time saved your life. We laughed for a moment, trying to lighten the mood. But I had a startling thought. My smile faded. Laney, what about that box of your mom's stuff? Since we'd been kids, I'd known about Laney's box of memories she kept of her mom. Little things like ticket stubs or photos, any memento she had from the short time when her mother was still alive. It said my dad's. She blew out a long breath. Thank God. I knew it would be safe there, so I asked him to store it for me. I don't know what I would have done if I lost that, too. I nodded. I bet your dad flipped out when you told him. Mr. Carter had always been overprotective of his only daughter. I couldn't blame the guy. After his wife died, Laney was all he had left. No, I haven't told him yet. She bit her lip the way she always did when she was nervous about something. I came straight here. I'll deal with him tomorrow after I've had a chance to process. We sat and talked until our glasses were empty. But I got the feeling that Laney was still too upset to go to bed. I went to my room and grabbed her something more comfortable to change into. Want to watch a movie? I asked as I laid the clothes out on the couch next to her. Only if you let me pick. I mean it. Don't put anything on. I'll do it when I get back, she commanded with a laugh as she rushed into the bathroom to change. It was good to see her smiling. That was another thing I liked about Laney. She was so resilient. Plenty of other women I knew would have been a sobbing, hysterical mess in her shoes right now. But not her. When Laney walked back into the living room, I couldn't help but notice she wasn't wearing a bra. I could see her nipples pressing against the fabric of my borrowed t-shirt, and I swallowed, clearing my throat, and mentally shaking myself. This was Laney, for Christ's sake. She placed her folded clothes on the chair and had the TV to make sure I hadn't changed the channel. I tossed over the remote as soon as she curled back up on the couch, and that's when I saw the smooth expanse of her muscular legs. I smiled. Perfect. You'll pick some boring old science documentary that'll have me snoozing like a baby in no time. Putting you in charge of the TV is just like taking a sedative. I wish it felt that way to me. She sank down against the cushion, pulling a blanket around her. We were only kidding, but I could see how stressed she was, still reeling from everything that had happened. I reached out and placed my hand on top of hers. Hey. You sure you're okay? She swallowed hard with a brief pause. Yeah. She shrugged. I'm fine. Or at least I will be. Still just a little shaken up is all. No need to worry about me. I won't as long as you take me up on my offer to stay. Come on. You don't need anything else to worry about while you're applying for your PhD program. And it'd give you a chance to save up some money. You know I won't charge you rent. I said I'll think about it. She groaned, obviously not in the mood to talk about the subject anymore. Laney, I know how important getting your PhD is to you. I squeezed her hand. And your work? You're always trying to power through like everything's fine. But give yourself some time to regroup and focus on what's important to you. Let me help you with that. She offered a sincere smile, seeming to take what I was saying more seriously this time. Thanks, Oliver. You know I've always got your back. I know. Maybe I can use this opportunity to hassle you about your work the same way I used to give you crap about your homework, she teased. Hey, I've come a long way since then, I argued in a playful tone. Thanks to you, really. Do you remember what you said to me when you were interviewing me for that school report? Ah, uh, yes. The infamous school report. She grinned. I had to do a report on successful family-run businesses for economics class in college, and you just so happened to come from a very prominent family with its own business, conveniently enough. But I hated it. The weight of my father's expectations on my shoulders was still so vivid. 
I was miserable in school, dreading falling in line with my family's company. I didn't want to do any of it. You just needed some tutoring in math, she said with a shrug. Which you did. And you helped me realize just how much I liked math and finance. It helped me set my sights on the financial officer position under my dad. And you told me with that job, I would be afforded the financial freedom to spend the rest of my time outside of work doing all the things I loved, while still making my family happy. Uh, I was such a know-it-all. She sighed, shaking her head. Did I tell you the right thing? Maybe I should have encouraged you to go rogue. You could have told your dad off and left to do your own thing. I love my job and my life. And I owe a huge part of that to you. For helping me in high school and in college. She flashed a shy smile. You've helped me plenty in return. I smirked. If you say so. I feel like all I ever did was get you in trouble. Laney sat up, smacking her hand against the pillow next to her. All right. Enough gabbing. Are we going to watch something or not? Lead the way, Captain. I winked, turning to the TV. She chose a documentary about the history of vaccinations to watch, and, as I predicted, my eyelids were heavy and dropping within minutes. With her bundled up on the opposite end of the couch, my head fell back, and I slipped off into a deep sleep. I woke up sometime in the middle of the night and realized she'd fallen asleep on my couch, too. Rubbing my eyes, I stood to grab a blanket to cover her up. When I stepped closer, I noticed that her shirt had slid up her torso, revealing her naked chest, gorgeous full tits with delicious peaks staring back at me. My dick jerked in response, it was rock hard, and I was turned on in a way I wasn't accustomed to. The metaphorical angel on my shoulder scolded, turn and walk away while the devil on my other shoulder encouraged me to take a closer look. Touch them. What the fuck is wrong with you? I shook my head and muttered under my breath. She's your best friend. She's like your fucking sister, man. Get a grip, you fucking creep. Shaking off my internal debate, I placed a blanket over her before I turned and walked away. That night, I rubbed one out to glorious nudes of Nadine. Laney's perfect tits may have tried to cross my mind a time or ten, but I quickly shoved them to the farthest corner of my brain. Fuck my life. I didn't even know what I was thinking. Laney. I woke up with a distinct sharp pain in my neck that could only come from sleeping on the couch. Wincing, I tried to sit up and stretch, impressing myself by the three loud cracks popping down my spine. Had I fallen asleep in front of the TV again? The blanket wrapped around me seemed unfamiliar, and the give of the cushions was far nicer than my sofa. I panicked for a moment, glancing around to take in my surroundings. My heart sank into the pit of my stomach when it all started coming back to me. Sweet Princess Bubbles. The fire. Everything I owned, gone. And it all led me to my best friend and high school crush's couch. Awesome. I didn't remember falling asleep. But I recalled watching the documentary, and yes, Oliver had been right, it was boring as hell. He wasn't here now, though. The other end of the couch where he'd been sleeping last night was empty. He must have gone to his room. Suddenly I thought of work and my boss. Crap. Bill would likely be freaking out right now because I wasn't there. What time was it, anyway? I'd always been the first to arrive and the last to leave. Judging by the sunlight filtering through the windows, it had to be at least eight in the morning. Damn it. I threw back the covers and searched for my phone. Where had I put the stupid thing? My mind had been a freaking wreck, and now it was like I couldn't remember to wind my head or scratch my watch. For the love of all things holy, I was a walking disaster. Yes. I shouted and did a little happy dance, then remembered Oliver was sleeping. Oops. My bad. I'd found my phone lying on the side table on the other end of the couch. But then I remembered Oliver slept like a rock. He always had. He used to sleep in school. One time, he even fell asleep on my couch while we were watching Alien. I mean, how could anybody fall asleep watching that movie? Besides, the apartment was so huge I could turn the music on full blast, you know, like Marty in Back to the Future, and he still wouldn't wake up. Must be nice. Stealing my nerve for the conversation ahead, I dialed my boss and waited. I so did not want to talk about what had happened, nor did I want to hear anybody's pity. 
I just wanted to get some semblance of normalcy back and return to work. After I talked to Bill for 15 minutes, explaining what happened and that I needed at least a week off to get my affairs in order, he was quick to agree. He told me to take all the time I needed and make sure to call him if there was anything he could do. The conversation brought everything crashing back again. I let the heartache and dread simmer for a moment before doing my best to push it down. I was starving, and cooking breakfast seemed like a good way to thank Oliver for offering to let me stay here. I stood up to fold the ridiculously soft and likely expensive blanket before draping it over the back of the supple brown leather couch. How sweet of Oliver not to wake me up and send me to one of his guest rooms. He'd known I was down for the count. What had I ever done to deserve such a wonderful best friend? If only. I stopped myself from that wayward thought. Not going there right now. I shuffled into the kitchen, rubbing my eyes and chuckling under my breath at the t-shirt and shorts Oliver had loaned to me. The moment I'd slid into his clothes last night, I had been hit with his lingering sexy scent mixed in with laundry detergent, a smell I'd soaked up multiple times throughout the night. He was over a foot taller than me, but somehow my curves and petite stature amounted to something that fit perfectly in his baggy clothes. Oliver kept a few photos and cards pinned with magnets to the front of his fridge. I wrapped my hand around the handle but stopped for a moment to study them. There were a few pictures from high school, but most of them were with his family, he and his younger brother on their rock climbing and skydiving adventures. A luxurious family cruise. But there, on the upper right-hand corner of the freezer door, was a familiar black and white strip of photos. I felt a flutter inside my belly as I grazed my fingers across it. His charming smile with his dirty sandy blonde hair. It was the same Coney Island photo booth souvenir I'd found in my purse the night before. I'd never realized he had kept his copy, much less that he'd displayed it so prominently on his fridge. A faint smile curved the corners of my mouth. I pulled the fridge door open and felt the gush of cool air from inside as I surveyed its contents. It was well stocked for a bachelor, better than I'd expected. But I had to assume Oliver used some kind of service to deliver his groceries. A man with his job and financial status wasn't exactly the type you'd see perusing the aisles of Trader Joe's on a Saturday afternoon with the rest of New York. Pulling out milk, eggs, bacon, and butter, I started rifling through the contents of his pantry and cabinets to locate pots and pans and a loaf of bread. With everything gathered and spread across his black marble countertops, I got to work. This felt like a strange new world, cooking breakfast in Oliver's kitchen while wearing his clothes. If high school me could have seen the sight, she would have melted into a puddle on the floor, literally, or combusted with emotional overload. Okay, I couldn't deny some part of me didn't relate to that old feeling, at least a little. I was grown and more realistic, but I figured some part of me would always love Oliver, even if it were in a way he would never feel for me in return. Still, the irony of the situation, along with the photos of us hanging on his fridge, it was easy to get swept away in a long-held fantasy for a moment. I'd spent countless hours, especially as a teenager, swooning on my bed, yes, I actually swooned, staring at the ceiling and imagining a life with Oliver. There in his kitchen while I cooked us breakfast, I could almost imagine it had finally come true. It was certainly a better alternative to my reality of being homeless, with almost zero possessions, and permanently stuck in the friend zone. I propped my phone up on the back of the countertop and put on some music. After cracking all the eggs and simmering the butter, I found it easy to drift deeper into my fantasy. I lost myself in this la-la land where I was Oliver's girlfriend making him breakfast. It got me dancing around the kitchen while I cooked, and that soon turned into singing along to the music, using kitchen utensils or bottles of seasoning as my microphone, whichever happened to be in my hand at the moment. I was right in the middle of a rather dramatic lip-sync performance of Aretha Franklin's, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, when the photo strip of Oliver and me hanging on the fridge caught my eye. Wrapped up in the moment, I slid the photo from under the magnet and started dancing around the kitchen counter, holding it between my fingers, shaking my hips and butt. My lip-sync performance turned into an all-out belting solo. With the photo in one hand and a big pan of scrambled eggs in the other, I sang and danced, I even twerked, my way between the stove and counter when, suddenly, a series of loud claps from the corner of the room turned my little private concert into a loud, shrill scream. So much for sleeping like a rock. My hand instinctively jerked back, sending a waterfall of eggs cascading around the room with pathetic little splats. Shit. They littered the floor and counters all around me. 
I'd closed my eyes from the scare, but I finally opened them to see Oliver standing there with a huge grin splitting his face. I cringed from embarrassment. Little bits of egg plopped onto the top of my head, catching in the curls of my hair as they slithered down. If that isn't damn sexy, I don't know what is. I'd been busted. Dancing. In Oliver's kitchen. Singing. In Oliver's kitchen. While cooking. And I just threw food all over the place. God, just let the floor open up and swallow me whole. Now. I wasn't sure if anyone could actually die of embarrassment, but I was certain if it were possible, I'd be close. Like, really freaking close. Shit shit shit. Oh, hey, I didn't, I didn't know you would be up so early, I murmured awkwardly, feeling my cheeks turning blazing hot and red. I did a double take between him and the photos of us still between my fingers, quickly stuffing it around my back, into the waistband of my, his, shorts. I tried to play it cool and failed, miserably. He clapped a bit more, just to emphasize my humiliation. I didn't know I'd be waking up to a private show in my kitchen. I wanted to say something, some kind of smart-ass comeback to save myself, but I was quickly distracted by Oliver's tan, chiseled chest, completely bare and exposed. Oh, my, God. My gaze drifted along the muscles of his impressive body, down to the oh-so-sexy V-trail that led to his tight-fitting boxers, complete with the hint of a, quite impressive, morning bulge just above his perfect thighs and calves. My mouth went dry. Oh, my God, I gasped, quickly averting my gaze for a moment. Peering around, I abruptly covered my eyes with my hand, but I snuck a peek through my fingers. Hell, who could blame me? I caught the expression of realization registering on Oliver's face, but his reaction wasn't what I'd expected. His grin widened, and he winked. Gotta take care of that. He rocked on the balls of his feet. Be right back. Oliver turned and strolled toward his bedroom with a chuckle. My mouth fell open. Did he? No. I'd been gawking at his morning wood and he just let me, then walked away? What had he been thinking? What was that supposed to mean? Crap. I didn't have time to think about any of it right now. I made a frantic rush to the fridge to return the photo strip without him seeing, praying with all my might that he hadn't noticed me serenading it when he walked in. Phew. That had been close. I just added another incident in the mental box of most embarrassing, laney moments. I had quite a few, unfortunately. Sorry about that, he called out to me. Honestly, I was still half asleep and kind of forgot you were here. Or else I would have put on my pants. He emerged again in his sweats from the night before, still shirtless, both to my dismay and pleasure. I got distracted by your little solo performance. He grinned. Again. It was hard not to stare directly at his still exposed torso, complete with six pack abs, killer pecs, and that sexy as hell tattoo that stretched across his upper back, shoulder blade to shoulder blade, it looked like a pair of black wings, I'd say from his love of skydiving and flying high. My adrenaline junkie, all the way. He must have gotten the tattoo recently. Good for him. Glad I got to see it. Damn. Hey, that new? Yep, had it done a month ago. Nice, I said, trying not to smile like an idiot. Likely failed, knowing me. He was also wearing some sort of cool, black leather band on his wrist, with silver wings engraved on the pendant that rested in the middle. Yet something else I'd never seen before. It seemed I was learning a lot about Oliver. Okay, I seriously needed to stop staring before it became too obvious. I didn't think I could possibly embarrass myself any more than I already had, but the day was still young. So, clearing my mind straight out of the gutter, I abruptly diverted my attention to the huge mess of eggs scattered all around. Well, I shrugged with a sigh, I tried to make us breakfast. There's toast and bacon. Guess I'll have to clean this up and start over, though. Don't you dare. He jumped in and shuffled me around the bar. He put his hands on my shoulders, causing my heart to give a big thwack against my ribcage, as a strong whiff of his delicious cologne and manly scent washed over me. Oliver gently grabbed my shoulders and forced me onto one of the stools with his strong hands. You sit right here and don't lift another finger. I'll clean this up. Besides, the maid's coming this afternoon. She'll take care of the rest of it. 
You've done enough. I'll cook us each a plate of eggs. You're already doing more than enough by letting me stay here. I tried to argue, but he ignored me and went about his business. A shirtless, barefoot Oliver, with his cool messy hair cooking for me was almost better than the fantasy I'd been lost in moments ago, but I did my best not to be too blatant in my ogling. He quickly cooked the eggs and piled them in heaping portions onto two plates, along with buttered toast and bacon. It's kind of nice having breakfast in here like this. Oliver slid one of the plates over to me. I'm usually in a rush in the mornings, so I grab breakfast with coffee on my way to work. Probably just in a rush to get some girl out of his apartment, I thought. But my attention quickly diverted back to caffeine. Ah, uh, coffee. Damn it. I totally meant to start a pot. I jumped to my feet to do just that. Hey. No, you sit back down, he ordered with a stern raise of his brow. You're a guest in my home. And one who's having some pretty shitty luck at that. I'll take care of the coffee. I would have fought him on it, but one look at his expensive coffee everything machine with all its buttons and weird contraptions, and I knew it was likely a job better suited for him. Do you ever make your girlfriend's breakfast? I asked the question as inconspicuously as possible, watching him were the thing into action. He gave me a sly smile. I wouldn't call them girlfriends. You always were a ladies' man. I had to bite back my jealousy as I brought a forkful of fluffy eggs to my mouth. What's going on with you these days? Got a potential boyfriend I might expect to see hanging around the penthouse while you're staying here? As close as Oliver and I were, I never broached the topic of our respective love lives by choice. He knew I wasn't dating anybody. I hated to hear him bring it up. Yeah, totally, I quipped, lifting my fork to punctuate my smart-ass comment. Two actually. One's named Linzer, and the other one's called my application for the PhD program at NYU. Weird names for dudes, but whatever floats your boat. He spun around to hand me a steaming mug of delicious-smelling coffee. I inhaled the scent of my caffeinated yuminess before taking a slow sip. Whatever the hell kind of coffee-making contraption he had, it was worth every penny. This is the best coffee in New York, I swear. If I'd known this is where the good stuff was being served, I would have started stopping by here for breakfast a long time ago. You're always welcome here, Lainey. You know that. He turned to me with his own cup in hand. Hey, whatever happened to that one guy you were dating in college, he blurted out of nowhere. What was his name? Herbert? Ha! <laughs> ha! You got jokes this morning. I nearly sprayed the coffee out of my mouth and threw my nose from laughing. Herbert? I wiped my mouth with a cloth napkin. His name wasn't Herbert, Muffin. No, his name was Hugo. And that was a very short-lived, fling. I had several nicknames for him. Obviously, Oliver wasn't a muffin, and that's just cheesy, but he liked them, a lot, especially Banana Nut. He always got annoyed when I called him by his pet names, and so, that's why I did it. He just had to bring up Herbert. Game on. He was using you, anyway. Oliver shrugged. I do love your term of endearment for me, though. Muffin. That never gets old, bookworm. Nope. It's here to stay. I quirked my lips into a smirk of my own. But, maybe I was using him. Did you ever think of that? Bookworm? Oh, he thought he was original with that one. Pfft. I had better names than that. He flashed that self-assured smile of his that always slayed me. I'd built up a lot of confidence over the years, granted, a lot through my friend Lisa, but I would have killed to have it come as naturally to me as it did Oliver. And somehow, even with all the money and women any guy could ever dream of having, he still managed to preserve his kindness and a sense of humility. Were you jealous of him for some reason? I asked, trying not to blush. Oliver hadn't done much to hide his dislike for the guy back in the day, which made my wishful thinking emotions even more confused about his feelings for me, the never-ending saga of, does he or doesn't he? It only ever ended up with one very clear, resounding conclusion, sorry, Sug, he does not feel the same way about you. Not jealous. His expression appeared serious. I just want the best for you. Always. 
I tried not to let him catch me rolling my eyes. I'd always hated the way he insisted nobody was ever good enough for me. All the while I thought he was the perfect one for me. So, what do you have planned for the day? He pulled up a stool across from me, causing me to have naughty thoughts about those muscular arms and what the rest of his glorious body looked like naked when he sat down with his own plate of food and cup of coffee. I let out a long sigh, clearing the sexual fantasies from my brain and realizing I hadn't planned that far ahead. Well, since you've forbidden me from returning to work for a few days, I guess I'll go visit the wreckage of my apartment. I'll need to stop by a drugstore and buy all the necessities I'm suddenly without. You know, girl stuff. I also need some clothes. I'm sure there's some insurance stuff to sort out. Oh, I have to call my dad and deal with the heart attack he'll have from this news. Huh. Sounds like you've got nothing to do all day. And the smirk was back. Right, Jim Sock. I couldn't help but chuckle. Want to go with me to my dad's house instead of calling him? I know it'd be the highlight of your day. His face paled a bit, and he shook his head. Nah. I've got to work. You've got your hands full. But, seriously, though, if you need me, just call. Uh. Huh. That's what I thought. I eyed him over my coffee mug. He leaned forward and grabbed his own cup. Maybe I'll go check in with the homeless ladies on the other side of town, I said. You know, just to weigh out the options of my future. Maybe learn a few tips and tricks from them. Hey, you could moonlight as a singer. You know, with performances like what you were putting on in here this morning, you could make the big bucks, he joked, but his smile quickly faded into something more solemn. Seriously, Laney. I'd never allow you to live on the streets. If you need anything financially or whatever, you know I'm here for you. I know you do well for yourself, but, I just want to help in any way I can. His eyes were filled with a sincerity that made me squirm, finding it hard to swallow. My throat only tightened more, and my nipples peaked when he reached across the countertop and squeezed my hand. I wasn't wearing a bra. Damn. I hoped he wouldn't notice. I could barely look him in the eye with the weight of his strong hand holding mine. I could feel my palms sweating and had to pull back from his comforting grip, my nipples rubbing against the fabric of the shirt. I'm fine. I promise. Thanks for offering, though. He was so sweet. See? That's just another reason why he was so incredible. Well, why don't you let me give you a ride? I can take you on my way to work. You really don't have to. Really, Laney. He shrugged. You're going to have to stop being so stubborn. Just let me take care of you for a while. That deep and serious concern returned to his brown eyes, cutting me like a knife. If he only wanted to take care of me in the ways I wanted him to the most. But those were dangerous thoughts to keep giving in to as long as I was living under his roof. Note to self, always wear a bra around him. I can't even imagine the embarrassment if he accidentally saw my boobs. I'd die. Like, drop dead and die. For real. After all, what are friends for, he added before setting his plate in the sink and disappearing into his bedroom. I'll shower and get dressed. Then we can head out when you're ready. Right. What are friends for, I mumbled under my breath, feeling my nipples finally relax. They had a freaking mind of their own and really needed to get a grip. The girls couldn't just get all perky willy-nilly in Oliver's penthouse, for goodness sake. Down, girls. Hard nipples are not a thing here. Clear? So, I'm talking to my breasts now. Awesome. Maybe I need therapy. I finished up my breakfast and placed my plate in the sink before hunting down my clothes from the night before. I wasn't excited about putting them back on, but it was better than going out in Oliver's shorts. Though, it was a little thrilling to have the remnants of his scent wrapped around me. I couldn't resist taking in one last long smell of his shirt before giving it up to slip back into my bra, slacks, and blouse. I waited for Oliver by the door and followed him out to the elevator and down to his building's parking garage. I was so weighed down by the impending visit to the ashes of my apartment that I didn't notice he was no longer walking beside me. I stopped and swiveled around to see him approaching a motorcycle in one of the parking spots. Come on. 
He waved his hand. Hop on. My mouth dropped open as I looked over the death trap, while Oliver held a helmet out toward me. You, want to take me, on that thing? I stammered. Sure, why not? He shrugged. I was planning to ride it into work today, anyway. It's a beautiful day out. While nuzzling up behind Oliver with my arms wrapped around him had its appeal, I was not about to get on that thing with him. I was curious, but afraid. You know, on second thought, I'll just take a cab. I smiled nervously. Come on, no. You can't be serious. He had an almost pleading expression on his face. This thing is as safe as any cab. I promise I'll take it easy on you. I'm wearing heels, I said and crossed my arms. So? I don't have a helmet. I know, got a spare right here. Is it your first time on a bike? You've never sat on one? Hurry up. I couldn't help but tilt my head and shoot him a look that begged the question, do you really have to ask? When would I have had the opportunity to jump on the back of a motorcycle if not with you? No, I haven't. And I'm not in any hurry to, I shot back. Don't worry about it. I'll see you later, okay? Come on. You'd have fun if you just give it a try. I narrowed my eyes at him. Oh, yeah, history has proven quite the opposite. Usually when you talk me into something, I end up regretting it. Name one example. Right now. The memory of the awful high school bonfire he dragged me to his senior year flashed before my eyes, but I couldn't get into that with him right then. I have plenty of examples. I stood firm on my decision of hell no. None of which I have time to name off right now. I turned to bolt away from the temptation of him and the bike as fast as I could while he called out after me. Laney, wait. We can take the car if it bothers you so much. But I really think you'd like it if you'd just give it a chance. My heels clacked along the concrete with panic determination as I fled toward the light. I bolted through the nearest opening of the garage out onto the busy sidewalks and up the block before stopping to try and flag down a cab. I figured the further away I was from Oliver, the less likely he would be to come running after me. Of course, the moment I was climbing into the back seat of the first taxi to stop for me, my phone dinged. I dug it out of my purse and swiped to see the message from Oliver. Oliver, one of these days, I'm going to get you to take a walk on the wild side with me. Oliver, chicken emoji. I rolled my eyes and tossed the phone back in my bag with a vengeance. Sinking against the back seat, momentarily ignoring how greasy and unsanitary it was, I began to wonder if staying with Oliver was such a good idea. I had made my peace with our friendship never being anything more, but was I really prepared to see him in nothing but his boxers in the mornings? Especially if he was going to be casually tossing around invitations to take a walk on the wild side with him, all completely innocent to him, but with a whole different, much more suggestive meaning for me. I started rolling words around in my head, rehearsing how I might begin to explain to him that he and I weren't the same, and he just wasn't going to understand it. He could afford to go out and have fun and take risks and walk on the wild side. Because in the end, he would always be Oliver Humphreys, the most popular guy in school turned one of the most desirable men in New York City. He had the safety net of his good looks and perfect body and family's money, always ready to catch him if he fell. I wasn't so lucky. As much as a huge part of me wanted to climb on the back of that bike with Oliver, feel my body pressed against his, the wind in my face, I couldn't. My thoughts painfully drifted back to the many bullies of my childhood. What they'd said had scarred me, although I was much more self-assured now. With Oliver, though, it was different. Those niggling doubts crept into my mind like a punch to the gut. I couldn't help nor stop that small insecure part of me from wondering about the what-ifs. Would Oliver feel too many curves or my soft belly against his back, or worse, what if he thought, oh, my god, why's this motorcycle not speeding up? This girl behind me is slowing me down. I knew I couldn't suffer that kind of humiliation. My heart sank in my chest as another thought occurred to me. But most of all, I knew I couldn't possibly handle the closeness or making another memory of having Oliver feeling so wonderful, and that memory messing with my mind days on end. I couldn't bear it. Any of it. I shook my head to rid myself of those thoughts. No. I was actually far from lucky, 
thanks to the fire that destroyed everything I owned, and the harsh reality became far too clear as the cab pulled up in front of the black, scorned appearance of my building. Can you wait here a moment? I asked the driver, while I stood in shock, staring at what would take at the very least, several months to renovate. The outside seemed to be mostly intact, but from all the blown-out windows, I could see the remnants of what used to be beautiful apartments. Damn! The cab driver whistled, surveying the damage from the driver's seat. What the hell happened here? A sweet little Pomeranian, I murmured in a daze. I suppose seeing it was what I needed to get some kind of closure, but it didn't make things any easier. And no sooner than I'd said, Pomeranian, did Mrs. Mosley walk by with Princess Bubbles, likely to assess the damage as well. Oh, Elaine, dear. How are you holding up? I'm so glad you weren't here when the fire, she paused and picked up Princess Bubbles, when poor little Schnookums here knocked over that candle. Just look at her. She's still shivering from fright. She'd sort of caught me off guard. Mrs. Mosley. It's, well. I'm in shock, really. I scratched behind Princess Bubbles' ears. What are you doing here? It was then that I remembered in my fog-filled haze that she didn't drive. How had she gotten here? Those candles. I'm not sure how my poor baby was able to flip them over. She waved her free hand in dismissal. Oh, well. Nothing's quality anymore. When I was young. Wait, was Mrs. Mosley blaming the candle manufacturer for the fire? I just tilted my head, blinked, and nodded. And then, she went on to finally answer my question. I couldn't even speak. I had nothing. My man friend, she glanced around covertly, speaking in a hushed voice, he only lives the next block over. Now, you can't tell anyone I'm staying there, darling. My niece Cindy would have an early heart attack. She smiled and I nearly choked back a laugh. Oh, my God. I hoped she wasn't about to go into detail about her sex life. She had to be pushing 75 or 80. It reminded me of the time when my grandfather was still alive, and my grandmother had called to ask me what kind of lube would work best during sex. I'd nearly dropped dead on the phone. She had assumed I wasn't a virgin, and with us being so close, she thought it was the most normal thing in the world to call me. Because, why not? Needless to say, that had been an awkward conversation. My mother's side of the family was hilarious. I made a zipping motion across my lips, hoping my amusement slash mortification wasn't clearly written on my face. Your secret's safe with me. But where did you tell her you were staying? Princess Bubbles barked. Hush that. Mrs. Mosley stroked her fur. I simply told her that all the residents were afforded a temporary home until our building was restored. It's plausible enough, as that's what my homeowner's insurance company would likely do. I nodded along, smiling, still trying to bleach my brain of all the images that had inadvertently been shoved there. Cindy lives over an hour away, so it's not as if she will check up on me. I leaned over and pecked a kiss on Princess Bubble's head. It was nice seeing you, Mrs. Mosley, and it's wonderful you found a place to stay. But I need to speak to Mr. Cruz. Oh, yes. He's a fine-looking gentleman. She winked, and I had to keep my jaw from dropping. Who was this woman, and what had she done with Mrs. Mosley? Oh, before you go. Where are you going to live, young lady? She gave me a conspiratorial grin. I seriously needed to run. Mrs. Mosley had never been this inquisitive before. Had she inhaled too many fumes? Maybe it was smoke inhalation, or had she always been this way? God help me. Um, at a friend's place. She lifted a perfectly arched gray eyebrow. Of the male variety, dear? We ladies need to keep each other up to snuff on all the details. Yup. I was going to die. And no, I was so not sharing that little tidbit of information. My best friend's place. I reached over and hugged her, effectively ending the conversation and waving my goodbyes. The rest of the afternoon went by in a blur as I checked in with Mr. Cruz, who'd said his insurance company anticipated to have an inspector there within the week to assess the damage, in order to give us an exact time frame for renovations from start to finish. 
According to Mr. Cruz, though, he estimated the apartment itself would likely take a couple of months to be restored. Next on the agenda, I had an appointment with my rental insurance agent, I didn't own my apartment like Mrs. Mosley, so it was different. Thankfully, I could expect a reimbursement check for what my policy covered, which was mostly my personal belongings, that I had to back up on my initial list after I'd created the policy two years ago, a pain in my ass, within the next couple of weeks. After leaving the insurance company and stopping by the drugstore to get a few basic necessities, I strolled aimlessly down the street, stopping to treat myself to a chocolate ice cream cone. I'd eaten a grilled chicken salad for lunch. So, why not? I'd had a hell of a night. Lost everything. What woman didn't deserve a little splurge once in a while? I marveled at each construction site I passed, thinking to myself how crazy it was that everything always seemed to go up so fast. An empty lot one day, a high-rise seemingly the next. But it didn't feel as quick when it was your own residence being rebuilt, or renovated in my case, semantics, and you were at the mercy of a ridiculously hot roommate you were secretly in love with until it was finished. That sneak peek he'd given me this morning in his tight-fitting boxers, damn. It was more than hot. I'd often wondered what Oliver's schlong looked like. Rocket ship? Skyscraper? Crown jewels? Wait, I think that's balls, but what do I know? There had to be another name for it, because who said penis and thought it was sexy? Not me. Hell, I fantasized about it, if I were being honest, name of my now-melted vibrator, clue number one, rest in peace, old friend. Would the tip of it look like a mushroom as I'd read about? Okay, I'd seen a few online. Sue me. I'd been curious because Lisa had mentioned mushroom tips, and it sounded strange, until I'd actually seen one. Oh, and how could I forget? The infamous popsicle pick. That didn't count, according to Lisa. It was tiny. Hell, I didn't know. Then, I understood. Hmm. How big was Oliver's ice cream cone? Battleship? Was it long and thick? I'd secretly wondered, and not once, what it would feel like inside of me. Holy hell, I'd need a fan soon if I didn't stop my naughty thoughts. I didn't know if it was the fresh spring air, filled with fragrant blooms drifting in from the nearby park, or the endorphins releasing in my brain from my frozen treat, but something put me in the mood to suck it up and use what happened as an opportunity to start over. I'd been needing a day off for a while, even if the circumstances for it finally happening were far from ideal and I had a whole new wardrobe to shop for. What girl didn't want an excuse to spend the afternoon shopping? A plus-size girl. That's who. I walked into a nearby boutique with optimistic confidence, but quickly found myself sinking into the reminder that most stores weren't made for girls like me. If you were my size in New York. Can I help you? A saleswoman asked, barely masking her disdain. I had been staring at a mannequin wrapped in a chic little dress, one I could imagine looking super cute on me. I turned to see a young, impatient-looking associate tapping a pen on the clipboard in her hands. I never understood why they walked around looking so official with headsets. What kind of fashion emergency could really happen in a store like that to require a retail worker to need such accessories? Yes. I smiled meekly. I was just wondering if... She shifted inside, already irritated with me before I even asked my question. I wanted to ask if she thought I could pull off the dress I was looking at, but judging by the way she eyed me from head to toe, I had a feeling she wasn't too sure that I could pull off anything in the store. I sucked in a deep breath and pictured the way Lisa always blazed into these kinds of boutiques as if she owned the place. She didn't take shit from anybody, and I wasn't going to either. Yes, I repeated, more confidently this time. Do you have this maybe two or three sizes bigger? Mm-hmm. No, darling. She lifted a brow. I don't think so. Really? Are you sure? Could you check? It was a wrap dress, and I knew the sizes varied. I could even go a size smaller. She swayed with a cocky sort of arrogance, took a few steps closer, leaning in to say, no offense but you'd probably have better luck at Lindy's boutique down the street. They tend to carry a lot more sizes for women like you. I wasn't sure if the emphasis on you was real or if I projected it, but either way, her tone and pitying expression made it clear I couldn't count on her help. I felt my cheeks blaze red, 
followed by a burning sensation behind my eyes. I would not cry in front of this woman. I wished more than anything that I had Lisa's confidence and I'd managed to manifest it for a moment, but it was fleeting. Suddenly, I felt like that same nerdy girl being bullied back in high school all over again. Thank you. I nodded before quickly darting out the front door. Thank you? I was kicking myself as I headed down the block. The girl was a total bitch to me, and I actually thanked her for it? Hell, no. I stopped dead in my tracks and turned on my heel. I was not about to thank somebody for treating me like shit. Not only that, but I would also ask to speak to a manager. I was so done being pushed around by people who thought they were better than me because of my size. And I wasn't even that damn big. I'd learned to love my curves a long time ago. My size was not that freaking big. So what if I didn't look like a model on the front page of a magazine? I had curves and boobs. She could kiss my plus-sized ass. I pulled the door open to a shocked face Miss Pris. Excuse me, miss, but... Please, save it. I need to speak to your manager. I'm sure you have one of those, right? I treated her to a sickly sweet smile. What's your name? Oh, wait. I see it on your name tag, Natalie Banks. What could you possibly need with my manager? She appeared aghast at my request. Well, Ms. Banks. There's this little thing called customer service, and you suck at it. You're also quite rude. While I may not be a perfect size, I am still a person. And I would like to ask your manager if your shop carries the size I requested since you seem unable to fulfill your duties as a salesperson. She opened and closed her mouth, dropping her clipboard to her side. I, I, have no idea what you're speaking of. I. I kept my tone as sincere and professional as possible. I hope this situation may teach her a lesson or four. An apology and your manager would do. Thank you, Ms. Banks. I, I am truly sorry if I offended you. Natalie brought her clipboard to her chest, and I could see her bottom lip trembling. If you'd like, I will assist you, unless you would rather have my manager do so. I felt my heart soften at her fearful expression. Yes, she behaved like a bitch, but I could be a bitch, too. A bigger bitch, in fact. But now, seeing her shaking like a leaf in front of me was not the right time. When I was younger, I swore I'd never stoop so low as to hurt someone in return just because they'd hurt me. I was a true believer in good karma. A little bit of kindness goes a long way, my grandmother Thelma had always told me. Tears were welling in her eyes, and at that, I felt I'd made my point. I didn't want the woman to get fired. I'd only wanted her to see me. Not my size. And not to judge me. I nodded. That would be wonderful. Thank you, Natalie. She shook her head. No, thank you, miss. My name is Elaine. She smiled, appearing grateful for my change of heart. Come along, Elaine. Let's find you something gorgeous to wear. And so, we did. One of the most notable items being a red and black dress I couldn't stop staring at. I left with a few super cute wrap dresses that I loved, several blouses in a variety of colors, pairs of pants, jeans, even underwear that fit me. Unfortunately, bras were off the table, but I could order those online with Oliver's laptop, seeing as mine was lost in the fire. Or I could use my phone. In the meantime, though, I'd just grab a few from a local shop to tide me over until my new ones were delivered. I also got a cute, pink shirt for Lisa, she loved pink and rocked it, and a pair of fluffy house shoes for Oliver. I bought matching ones for myself. I seriously thought of pink furry bunnies, but I figured Oliver wouldn't wear them. It'd be freaking funny, though, if only for the pictures I'd take. I thanked Natalie profusely, for real this time, and she handed me her business card on my way out. After our little chat, she'd been such a huge help, I'd definitely be going back. I settled on a park bench with my bags in tow, sucked in a deep breath, and dialed the number I was dreading the most. Hi, Dad. Elaine. Great to hear from you. It's been long enough. I've been worried about you. I just called you last week. I sighed. Listen, Dad, I need to tell you something. 
His voice dropped to a dead serious tone. What is it? Where are you? Are you okay? I'm fine. I promise you I'm safe, and I'm fine. Okay? I said slowly. I need you to tell me you understand before I say anything else. But Lainey. Dad. I know how you are. So, please. Just say you're hearing me when I say, everything is fine. There was a long pause before he finally replied, okay. I'm hearing you. Now, go on. I could hear the tension in his voice as he tried to contain his freak out before he even knew what was up. There was a small, very small, tiny, insignificant, I squinched my fingers in the air as if that would help. He couldn't even see me, fire in my apartment, I blurted the last words out in a jumbled mess, hoping he both could and couldn't make them out. What was that? Honey, I couldn't. My apartment caught fire, and I lost everything, I croaked, ripping it off quickly like a band-aid. Lainey. Are you okay? Are you safe? Oh, my God. Come home. I knew you should have stayed here all along and... Dad. Dad. Listen to me. Remember what I said? I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm safe. I wasn't even there when it happened, and I'm staying at Oliver's. I heard him exhale over the line. Phew, okay. I'm glad you're with Oliver. He has always taken such good care of you. There was a suggestive rise in his tone, one that I was all too familiar with. My dad had been banking on the two of us tying the knot since high school. That dream had yet to come true for either of us. Well, actually, daddy, I would say I'm taking care of myself just fine. But yes, Oliver is a good friend, and everything is all right. I just wanted to let you know what was going on, and I'll call you back later. I tried to get off the phone as quick as I could, but of course he put me through the ringer before he would let that happen. Was I eating? Had he ever seen me not eating when I was supposed to? Had I heard from NYU yet? I wished. Soon, hopefully. He wished I wouldn't work so much, same, but I truly loved it. He wished I would just come back home to live until Oliver and I came to our senses and walked down the aisle. Universe, hi there, it's me. Yep, still me. I know you're probably kinda busy, but can you listen to my dad on this one? Only the walking down the aisle part, though. Thanks. Bye. My head was spinning by the time I was finally able to hang up, and I swore I heard him spring one final question as I disconnected the call. One that I would pretend I was oblivious to. Are you and Oliver sleeping together? Dear God in heaven. Glad I hung up. E was feeling amazing by the time I made it back to Oliver's apartment. The call to my dad had gone much better than expected, even with his interrogation. And the shopping. Who knew it would be so freaking exciting? I couldn't wait to tell Lisa what happened when she returned from her trip. It was so freeing and exhilarating. It felt like finally, something was going right for me. My confidence had soared today. I'd stood up for myself, and I was proud of the outcome. But, after the long day I'd had, I wanted nothing more than to curl up on Oliver's big comfy couch with a glass of wine and laugh at stupid movies with my old friend. I smiled just thinking about it as I unlocked the front door with the extra key he'd given me. Oliver? You home? It's me, I called out as I stepped inside the dim-lit foyer. I could hear music faintly playing in the background, and there was a delicious smell of garlic and onion wafting from the kitchen. It carried with it the reminder that I hadn't eaten anything today but a grilled chicken salad and that ice cream cone. Hopefully, he had already cooked something for dinner. My stomach growled. Oliver? I yelled out again, strolling to his bedroom door. I knocked and flung it open without thinking, barging in on him under the sheets of his bed, making out with what my friend Lisa had coined a triple T. Triple T's were all he seemed to have any interest in, tall, tan, and thin. Basically, the opposite of me in every way. And as far as I could tell, he was trouble with a capital T, especially for somebody like me. Oh, my god. Shit. So sorry. I quickly slammed the door shut and rushed back into the kitchen to try and recover from my embarrassment. 
What was I thinking bursting into his room like that? Of course he's not alone. I heard his bedroom door swing open. I turned to the sound with a smile that quickly vanished. My mouth dropped as Oliver came out wearing nothing but a towel loosely wrapped around his waist. A perfect deja vu moment. Dick Tent included. Laney. He smiled warmly. You're home. How was your day? Uh. It was, I. Uh. I was ill, prepared to be hit with the image of his half-naked body yet again. For a brief second, I decided to let myself enjoy it. He was the one flaunting it around all the time. I'd barely been there a whole day and it was already the third time I had seen him without any clothes on except for impossibly tight boxers or a towel. It was fine, I said tightly, hardly able to fake a smile anymore. I'm just really sorry about that, and, I'm really tired. So. Yeah, have a good night. Without looking at him, I handed him the gift I'd bought, our matching house shoes. Oh, I got these for you. Uh. Thanks, Lainey. I turned for the hallway leading to one of the spare bedrooms I'd changed in that morning. I knew if I stood there one second longer, I'd end up snapping at him. Don't you ever wear clothes? I should have gotten him a damn robe, giving up on my wine and a movie couch fantasy, I slipped back into his shorts and t-shirt, then climbed into bed. After using my phone to express order a few more basics to be delivered the next day, I pulled the covers over my head and tried to fall asleep before the tears began to spill down my face. I'd had some bad days crying over Oliver in past years, but this one really sucked. Two nights. Two different women. Neither of them me. You was left standing there like a dumbass with the spare helmet in my hand next to my bike in the parking garage. Laney steady steps away from me broke out into a sprint around the corner. Why the hell was she running from me like that? I scratched my head for a moment and shook it off, tucking the extra helmet back into its compartment before putting on my own and climbing on, starting the engine. Women. They're all crazy. I never could understand why Laney always seemed so afraid of everything. Afraid of going out, afraid of motorcycles. Was I crazy to think she might actually be afraid of me? I parked my bike outside Humphrey's properties and slipped through the back entrance into my private elevator. Only my father, my brother Miles, and I had access to it, aside from Damon. Loved Damon to death, even as grumpy as he was. He still liked to join us for long motorcycle rides, which was more than I could say for Laney who wouldn't even humor me on the back of my bike for a short ride through the city. I took the elevator up to our private floor where Miles, Damon, and I had our offices. I nearly jumped when my chair swiveled around in front of me, revealing Miles sitting at my desk, waiting. His hair was thicker and darker than mine, and his blue eyes carried an eternal devilish spark, hinting at the mischief he constantly seemed to be scheming in his head. Plus, a charming smile to match his personality. He was an even bigger ladies' man and wild card than I was. Good morning, big brother. He grinned, kicking back in the chair, propping his feet up on my desk. I let out a sigh, eyeing his leather shoes. Hey, that desk was custom made. I pointed, raising my eyebrows. Your feet. Do you mind? Sorry, I get a little careless when I'm in such a good mood. He stood and walked across the room, helping himself to my bar cart. I flicked my wrist to check my watch. It's nine o'clock in the morning. Shouldn't we save drinks for after lunch? Normally, I'd say yes. He twisted the cork off an expensive bottle of bourbon. But this deal we're signing today is making us another million. I figure why not start celebrating early? Because we haven't even signed the papers yet, I reminded him as I settled in behind my desk. And if you start slurring your words in the final run-through, there might not be anything to celebrate. Oh, come on. I know you think I count my chickens before they hatch but this is a done deal, and you know it. The cork popped, followed by the trickle of dark amber liquid into two glasses. He had a point. As the chief financial officer of our family's billion-dollar real estate business, I'd always been the more cautious one. It was my job to keep an eye on the bottom line and to never count on anything unless we had it in writing. But the commercial plots we were unloading in three days were pretty much a done deal, as he said. It was a quick and easy million. Fine, I obliged him, taking the crystal tumbler from his hand and clinking it to his. Cheers to what should be a successful business venture. Miles stretched out in the chair across from me and started to prop his feet right back onto the opposite side of my desk. 
One stern look from me made him think better of it. He put his hands up in mock surrender and dropped them to the floor. So, that club last night was something else, huh? So was that hot chick I saw you sneaking out with. She had a nice ass in that mini dress. I cringed at the thought of Nadine, remembering the angry texts of hers that I'd forgotten to respond to. I would have to sweet talk her if I stood any chance of getting her back into my bed to finish what we started. She would have been something else, but, hey, do you remember Lainey? From high school? Lainey? Elaine Carter? Yeah, of course. He nodded and took another sip. You were always hanging out with her. Aren't you two still friends? Roommates now. I took a long swig of my drink. Her apartment caught fire. I offered one of my spare rooms for her to stay in while it gets sorted out. Damn. He clicked his tongue. Tough break. What's she up to these days, anyway? She works at Linzer, basically curing cancer. It's all a bit over my head, but it seems like she's really successful. At this rate, she'll have her PhD by the time she's 30. Just as my mind wandered to Lainey's rolled-up t-shirt, her beautiful naked breasts, I stopped myself as the memory of her dancing around in my kitchen flashed in my head. It took me a moment to catch onto the skeptical expression Miles was shooting my way. What? I shrugged innocently. Nothing. That's just impressive. He quirked his lips into a smug smirk, like he knew something I didn't. Must be pretty stimulating to have a nerdy, scientist genius lounging around your place. Like a seductive sexy teacher or something. I tried my best to unhear the words, but once they were out, they weren't going back in. Stimulating? Seductive? Okay, man. That's enough. Shut the hell up. I felt guilty for sounding so surprised. It wasn't that I couldn't see it, but words like that were far from my mind when thinking about one of my best friends. I mean, yeah, those kinds of thoughts had crossed my mind, especially after seeing her half-naked on my couch. Okay, and that little stunt I'd pulled in the kitchen this morning when I knew she was checking out my dick. I'd let her. Fuck. I couldn't help myself. But in the end, how dumb would I be to risk our friendship? Last time I saw her, she looked completely different than how I remembered her in high school. He shot me a smart-ass grin. It's funny. That amber girl you used to mess around with, the one who used to tease her about her weight? Yeah. She's changed so much I almost didn't recognize her, and not in a good way. He grimaced. But Lainey's looking better than ever. Beautiful curves. I've always had a weak spot for her. My nostrils flared, and I fake coughed to cover it up. Shit. Why did his comment irritate the hell out of me? Yeah, I didn't want Miles to add Lainey to his ever-growing list of conquests. Where did you see her? Miles grinned. I saw her one day when I was driving to work. She was stunning. I felt myself growing more agitated, trying not to go there with my brother. I was just letting you know what was going on with her. That's all, okay? Sure, she's gorgeous, we all know that, but I've never looked at her that way. And you shouldn't, either. She's my best friend, and off limits. He nodded, still seeming slightly unconvinced. Whatever you say, bro. Not so sure if you're trying to convince me or yourself, but whatever. We've got a meeting to get ready for. As anticipated, the deal went down without a hitch three days later, making Miles a very happy man. I got a thrill from it, too, of course, but he was an even bigger adrenaline junkie than I was. The higher the dollar amount on a contract, the higher he got from it. I was just glad to get the weirdness with Lainey off my brain, especially after everything Miles had suggested about her. The next night... I was gearing up to join my brother and our client Adriana Miller to celebrate the success of the big deal. Lainey had been behaving the same, declining my invites to go out, as usual, but she'd said she'd been crazy busy. Which didn't surprise me. I was just happy she wasn't upset about walking in on me with another woman. Again. I knew she'd been trying to get everything in her life back on track. She even learned how to use my coffee maker and had it ready for me in the mornings, leaving funny little notes. Today's had said, have a good day, jockstrap. I had to chuckle at that one. She never ceased to amaze me with the names she came up with. Man, I could get used to waking up to the smell of fresh coffee and her funny notes. I hoped to catch her on my way out the door, but I had no idea what time she would be home tonight. I stopped to look in my bedroom mirror and straightened my tag before grabbing my keys and strolling into the kitchen for a quick shot. 
A little tequila always helped me amp up the charm before meeting up with business associates. Just as I was about to down my drink, the front door opened. Laney walked in looking calmer than she had the past several nights. She had on black heels, a pretty white blouse and blue jeans, and they hugged her curves in all the right places. Her long brown hair was braided back into a bun, and her big green eyes, behind black framed glasses, met mine with a smile. Oh, hey. She gave me a little wave as she walked over to the counter, tossing her purse down. Hey there. I smiled. Would you like a shot of tequila? She laughed hesitantly, but finally agreed. Okay, sure. Why not? I poured another one and slid hers across the countertop. We both tapped the small glasses to the counter before throwing them back. Laney's face wrinkled, and she stuck out her tongue. Phew. It's been a while since I've done shots. Did you just say shots, as in plural? I raised a brow. Because I'm more than happy to pour you another. Didn't you just have one when I came in? Can you really handle three all in a row like that? She stared me down with uncertainty. Don't underestimate my tolerance, I replied confidently, pouring another for both of us. But, no, that was my first. I hadn't tossed it back yet when you walked in the door. Well, two was my limit. Because I just realized I'm drinking on an empty stomach. She stared at the empty glass with what I assumed was regret. Have you had dinner? I can cook us something. Or we could order some food. My phone dinged with a message from Adriana, letting me know she was five minutes from the restaurant. Which meant I was officially late. I've got plans for dinner. I was just heading out the door. Laney's face dropped in disappointment, and I had to admit I was disappointed, too. Hey, do you want to come? I can call the restaurant and have them add another guest to the reservation. Miles will be there. I could even invite Damon. You remember those guys, don't you? Oliver, no. She shook her head, seeming a little offended. You don't have to drag me along on your date out of pity or whatever. I'm more than happy to cook something for myself and curl up on the couch. You go out and have fun. I'll see you later. It's not a date, I said. We're just celebrating a contract we signed yesterday at work. Please come? I batted my eyelashes, like a damn girl, flashing the puppy dog eyes. That face had historically always made her cave into whatever I was trying to drag her into. She swayed with a little grin while she thought it over, but I could tell she was about to give in. It had worked since we were kids. She couldn't resist. I see that smile. I taunted, pulling her in for a friendly hug. I know what that means. You're coming. She smacked my chest playfully, pushing me off her. Okay, fine. I'll go. But please give me a few minutes. We'll have a blast. I raised my hand to hers for a high five. We're taking my bike. Oliver. Just kidding. Relax. I chuckled. We're not taking my bike. Okay, good. I almost changed my mind. Let me just freshen up a bit, and then I'll be ready to go. I glanced down at the message from Adriana, and another from Miles, letting me know they were being seated at our table. Fuck it. They can wait. Sure thing. I smiled up at Laney. The tequila and I will just be waiting here for you. She laughed and added over her shoulder, that bottle better not be empty when I get back. I don't want to spend all night babysitting your drunk ass and then dragging you home. I held up my hand, crossing my fingers. Scout's honor. You weren't in the scouts, pumpkin, she shouted just before slamming her bedroom door. Hey, Laney. Miles pulled me into a hug as I took my seat, and the waiter set a dirty martini on the table. It's been a long time. You're looking great. How have you been? He cringed. Yeah, sorry. Heard about the fire. I mean other than that. Smiling, I didn't know what to respond to. He'd rattled off several different things at once. I'm good. Loving my job. And congrats on the new deal. Oliver told me all about it. Miles quirked an eyebrow and chuckled. Did he now? Shut up, asshat. Oliver interrupted before I could respond, and I had to laugh, because it reminded me of when we were all teenagers. The guys were still the same. Yeah, I told her about our success. He turned to me with a smile. 
my heart fluttered in my chest. So, Elaine, what is it that you do? Adriana asked as the waiter brought another round of drinks for her and Miles. Adriana Miller looked like Posh Spice with her blunt cut and friendly expression. Please, call me Laney. I work in medicinal chemistry. She's a scientist. Oliver beamed. The woman's eyes widened. Very impressive. What does medicinal chemistry do exactly, Laney? A lot of different things. I shrugged. I specifically work in synthetic chemistry, developing oncology drug discoveries. Adriana tilted her head, as if she didn't understand. She cures cancer, Oliver chimed in once again. I'm not actively curing cancer, I corrected. But we are working to find more cures and treatments, yes. That's a very noble pursuit. She sent a surprised glance across the table. I feel very shallow now in celebrating our real estate deal. All we really do is exchange buildings and properties from one set of hands to another. Miles tipped his glass in the air. And we make a lot of money in the process. Yes, but your friend over here is saving lives. Trying to, I added with a smile. She's about to start attending NYU's PhD program, Oliver said, picking up a breadstick and breaking it in half. If I get in, I amended. In addition to my work in the lab, I'd like to contribute more to the research side of things. There are so many treatments that don't get picked up by big pharmaceutical companies due to a lack of profit or understanding of how the drugs work. I'd like to make sure everyone, doctors, patients, scientists, and academics know the broad range of options out there. My phone began vibrating in my purse, and I leaned over to check it. I felt a rush of happiness at the sight of Lisa's name scrolling across the screen. If you'll excuse me for a moment. I smiled and rose from the table. I just have to take this call. So sorry. I retreated to the front lobby of the restaurant and answered Lisa's call. Girl, you have no idea how glad I am to hear your voice. I'm so happy you're calling. I sighed. I saw your texts, Sug. She snorted. What the hell's going on? What do you mean a Pomeranian burned down your apartment? It's a long story, and that part was an accident. I smirked, glancing through the open wood columns to see Oliver chatting up Adriana at the table. But don't worry about me. How's Aruba? Divine, of course, she answered through a contented sigh. But Chad's getting on my last nerve. I can't wait to come home and have a girls' night with you. I need it. You have no idea how bad I could use one of those. I don't have much time. We're scheduled for a scuba diving class in 20 minutes, and apparently Chad thinks I take too much time getting ready. I couldn't help but laugh at the thought of her boyfriend waiting impatiently while she perfected her eyeliner in the bathroom mirror of their luxurious hotel room. Lisa always looked good. And she wasn't one to concede her daily rituals of getting ready for anybody, no matter how rich and handsome he was, or how many five-star resorts he whisked her away to. But tell me, what the hell's going on? Are you staying at your dad's? No, actually, I moved further into a quiet corner and glanced around to make sure nobody was within earshot, I'm staying with Oliver. I had to move my phone away from my ear to avoid the sting of her reactive shrieks and cries. When she seemed to quiet down, I slowly brought it back to the side of my face. Are you done, sweetheart? I'm sorry, but you can't just drop a bomb like that and expect me not to freak out, she gasped. You're staying with your lifelong crush, who just so happens to be one of your best friends and is probably secretly in love with you, too. It's like a rom-com movie just waiting to happen. Tell me everything. I appreciate your confidence in me, but Oliver is not in love with me. And there's nothing to tell. Aside from how incredibly awkward and uncomfortable it is for me. He sucks at wearing clothes at the appropriate times, and he has girls rotating through his apartment like a revolving door. Triple T's? Yep. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Sounds promising. The no clothes part, anyway. So, what about those emaciated hoes? They've got nothing on you. Your brains and beauty. You don't understand. I rubbed the bridge of my nose. I can't compete with them. This whole thing is like daily torture of having the fruit I can't ever taste dangled right in front of my face. 
Even worse, I have to watch other women chomping away at said fruit while knowing I can't have any. Elaine. Lisa's voice grew stern. There's not a damn thing those chicks have that you don't. In fact, you've got quite a bit that they don't have. My boobs? No. Well, yes, but that's not what I had in mind. Like the fact that you're Oliver's best friend. They're the ones who can't compete with you. I felt the comfort of her words wash over me, settling my nerves with ease. Thank you. I miss you. I'll be home soon. Hey, before I go. Have you heard from NYU yet? Not yet. Hopefully soon. Maybe without that hanging over my head, I wouldn't feel so uptight about everything with Oliver. I've got my fingers crossed for you, but they'd be crazy to turn you down. Now go tell your new roommate you love him, and then climb him like a tree. Show him what a freak you are. Uh. I think you've confused me with yourself, I teased. There will be no tree climbing with Oliver Humphreys. Suit yourself. Well, at least go rub it in those snotty girls' faces that you've got your rightful place as his best girlfriend, and they ain't got nothing on that. Thanks, sweetheart. Remember, you only live once. Relax, spend time with him. Enjoy yourself, and I mean it. Hey, and don't be shy. Maybe you catch him sleeping on the couch. Just kiss him. Or even better, girl, suck his popsicle like a lollipop. Every guy loves waking up to that. That's what Chad told me, anyway. I bet you Oliver won't say no to that. She took a deep breath. That was a lot in one dang breath. I gotta go now. Love you, girl. Bye. Oh, and do everything I would do. I laughed and made a kissing noise into the phone, then hung up. The next morning, I was in a great mood when I woke up earlier than usual to head out for my first day back to work. I was ready to get back in the lab, and the pleasant evening and my brief phone call with Lisa had lifted my spirits even more. I sang my way through a shower, and even spent a few extra minutes on my hair and makeup. The bonus of having to rebuild my entire wardrobe was that it made me realize how much better I'd gotten at picking out clothes that made me feel great. I'd thrown on a cute white dress with a green leafy pattern. It wrapped and tied just under my breasts, accentuating them while hitting the rest of my curves in all the perfect places. Admiring my reflection in the mirror, I let out a big sigh and smiled. I looked damn good. And I had another few new dresses hanging in the closet that I was saving for special occasions. What that occasion would be, I had no idea. It was the kind of morning where it felt like anything was possible. Creeping out of my bedroom, I noticed Oliver was asleep on the couch. He must have watched late-night TV and passed out. I stared at him longingly for a moment before snapping myself out of it and heading to the kitchen to prepare a batch of breakfast muffins and coffee. I knew Oliver would love them. I even added bananas into the mix because they were his favorite. I loved making breakfast for him, it was the least I could do after he'd let me stay at his place rent-free. Well, and I enjoyed cooking. While the muffins were baking, I pulled out the stationery and a pen I'd stashed away in his junk drawer, he never used it, anyway, and started writing today's note. Yep, I was the dork who'd spend hours searching for the perfect postcards for my friends. I loved it. I was also the person who liked to send real letters, yes, handwritten and in an envelope, rather than email. It felt so impersonal otherwise, and I added my own flair to everything, just for fun. Because who wanted boring? Not me. Oliver had always thought it was goofy, but I'd done it anyway just to annoy him, in a joking way of course. I knew it was much too girly for him to ever write notes or letters, but oh, well, it wouldn't spoil my fun. I read the note back to myself after I'd finished and laughed at my Star Wars reference. Which made me think of a perfect Netflix night, one he wouldn't object to. Yes. Hey, Nerf Herder. Have an awesome day. Don't give your employees too much BS. Oh, and don't mess up that new business deal. Ha! <laughs> Laney. Setting my note on the countertop next to the coffee maker, I pulled the muffins out of the oven and placed them on a cooling rack. After making sure everything was good to go, I headed back to the living room. I tried my best not to wake him as I walked over and admired how painfully gorgeous he looked, even when he was out cold. 
Brushing his sandy blonde hair away from his face, I pulled a blanket from the back of the couch and draped it across his shoulders. As I leaned over him, another strong desire hit me. And I almost laughed out loud when I remembered Lisa's suggestion. Okay, here I go. I wouldn't kiss his lips, but how about his cheek? Just a quick peck? Yeah, that sounded good. You got this, girl. Unable to resist, I pressed my lips softly to his stubbled face. I couldn't help but think of what his full lips would feel like against mine, his mouth on my skin, being with him. I sighed, allowing the fantasy to linger in my mind for only a moment. Just as I pulled away, I jumped at the sight of his eyes opened wide, glaring at me. My lips parted to try and offer some kind of explanation or apology, but he quickly groaned and rolled over, shutting his eyes tight as he pulled the blanket over his head. A second later, I could hear him snoring from under the cover. Swiftly shaking it off, I headed for the door. What was I thinking being such a creeper? At least I didn't go through with Lisa's other suggestion. Oh, my gosh. I almost snorted, imagining his face waking up to that surprise. It was strange being back in the lab, working late after everybody else had gone home. It was the same scene from the night Mr. Cruz had called to give me the bad news about my apartment. I found myself being jumpy and oddly afraid to be in there all alone, as if the next bad thing could creep up and surprise me at any moment. But I did my best to shrug off the feeling and ordered a turkey on rye with a side salad from the trendy new sandwich shop down the block, they delivered, before diving back into work. A while later, I decided to call it a day. And what a day it had been at that. Getting back into some semblance of my normal routine did wonders for taking my mind off everything that was going on, but I was eager to get back home. Or rather, Oliver's home. The longer-than-usual commute, thanks, traffic, between his place and my lab almost made up for how different it had been around the penthouse since I moved in. I mean, we'd been friends for years, but seeing him on a daily basis was strange, not in a bad way, excluding the triple T's. As I stared out the backseat window of my cab ride home, I smiled, thinking about the other night. The taxi rolled over a big bump, shaking away the fun memory, forcing me to clutch my phone and bag extra tight to keep them from flying into the floor. As my butt slammed back down to the seat, my phone dinged. A text from Oliver. Oliver, thanks for breakfast this morning. And the note, you goofball. A new bar is opening up down the street from my place. Want to grab some drinks with me tonight and check it out? I let the phone flop to my lap in my hand, closing my eyes as I tried to recenter. Things felt better after accepting one of Oliver's invites to hang out, but there was still a lingering reservation. So, I pretended not to see his message. The cab came to a standstill. Again. There was an accident up ahead, so all traffic had to be rerouted, which added 45 minutes to my already long ride. Well, it had still been a good day. This just gave me more time to not think about Oliver. Or the kiss I'd planted on his cheek this morning. Or the fantasy that had stayed with me all day. Nope. Not thinking about it. Paying the cabbie, I stepped out of the taxi and got on the elevator. The apartment seemed quiet and empty when I walked in, though there were a few lights on. It looked like Oliver had rushed out to that new bar. I sighed, thinking a night to myself with the TV was just what I needed. I put up my purse and keys and turned for the liquor cabinet. I bought a bottle of red wine, which I was all too happy to pull out and uncork. Long day? A man's voice suddenly cut through the room. I nearly jumped out of my skin just as I was filling up my glass. The stream of red wine wavered just long enough to splatter down the front of my new dress. Damn it! Why are you sneaking up on me like that, Oliver? I thought you'd left. Oh, shit. I love this thing. Now look at it. I'm sorry. He walked over, tugging at the front of my dress to see the glaring deep red stain for himself. I thought I was being funny dramatic, not like, scary dramatic. You scared me, all right, I huffed, still scowling at my dress. Take it off, he said. I cut my eyes up to his, thinking he couldn't be serious. But he seemed entirely too serious as he nodded his head, repeating himself, go on. Take it off. I can get that out for you. My heart was pounding as I thought of those words directed at me, coming from his mouth. Yeah, 
They'd be haunting me for days. I felt red-hot heat rising in my cheeks and let out a nervous laugh. I'm not going to take my dress off in front of you right here in the middle of the kitchen. You're crazy. Let me change real quick, and then I'll give it to you. You have a secret stain remover or something? I didn't mean here in front of me. He chuckled. Oh, my gosh. Of course not, I was so silly, words were just falling out of my mouth. Yup, nerves. And my brain. It short-circuited. Well, now would be a good time for my brain to get back to normal mode. But you're more than welcome to take it off here, he said. I'll even turn around. As a matter of fact, I've seen you in a bathing suit before. It's no big deal. That's different. I retreated into my bedroom, grumbling to myself, wishing he would stop making things worse like always. If only he could have said it for a reason other than feeling bad about causing me to mess up my new favorite dress. I popped back out a minute later, wearing a baggy shirt and shorts with the ruined dress in hand. How's it different? He stared at me expectantly. Of course, he couldn't just let it go. Here. I handed him the dress. I wasn't about to go into the fact that undressing in front of him was what made it different. I didn't need another reminder that he was so indifferent to my half-naked body. Maybe I wasn't wearing any underwear. Honestly, I surprised even myself with my reply. A smile tugged at his lips. Oh, is that so? I guess I'll never find out. He grabbed my dress and picked up a bottle of dishwashing liquid in his other hand. Could you grab the hydrogen peroxide from under the bathroom sink, please? A few minutes later, he'd mixed up some sort of concoction and was blotting it against the stain. There. Now we just let it sit for about an hour. Your stain will be long gone after we wash it. Thanks. I smiled lightly. I didn't realize you were such a laundry expert. My granny taught me, he said with a shrug. I tried to shake off the swell in my heart that came with the mental image of sweet little boy Ollie bonding with his grandma over laundry. It was too much to take. Like puppies or kittens sending me into cuteness overload. What are you doing here, anyway? I thought you were checking out that bar you texted me about. So, you did see it? He smirked, like he'd just caught me in a lie. Yeah, so? I shrugged. I never said I didn't see it. I was just on my way home and didn't feel like going out, so I didn't respond because I couldn't come up with a good excuse. Why didn't you go ahead without me? Because I wanted to go with you, he shot back, the smirk gone from his face. Oh. With me? I could feel the familiar heat rising to my cheeks. Why? He flashed an incredulous smile and poured himself a glass from my bottle of wine. Then he sat down on the stool across from me, and his eyes bore into mine. Laney. We need to talk. Oh, shit. My throat tightened, making it hard to swallow. My heart was pounding even harder than before. I threw back a gulp of my wine. About, what? Sit down, he commanded me. I'd rarely ever heard Oliver be so stern, and he had definitely never talked to me like that. No wonder he had women falling over him left and right, doing whatever he told them to do. His regular voice was sexy enough, but bossy, pissed, dominant Oliver was impossible to refuse. I plopped down on the other stool without giving it a second thought. Oliver, you're scaring me. You're the one scaring me, he argued. What's going on with you? I mean, I know you've always blown off most of my invitations to go out. But it's been even worse since you moved in here with me. I feel like I see you less now than I did before you started staying here. I had to bite my lip to hide the trembling. I always did hate keeping secrets, and I hated getting caught or getting in trouble. I tried to think of some joke I could make to blow the whole thing over, but I could tell by the serious expression on Oliver's face that he was nowhere near a joking mood. I just went out with you last night. So? What about all the other nights I've asked you to hang out with me here, he snapped back. I shook my head, avoiding his gaze. I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't been avoiding you, if that's what you're implying. Okay, good. He sighed. I looked back into his eyes. 
So, what are you doing right now? He asked, his voice calm. You just opened a bottle of wine, and you don't want to go out? No, I prefer staying home. Okay, so let's hang. We can watch a movie. Damn it. I thought I was going to get a relaxing night and without him looming over my shoulder, making my entire body pulse with that feeling only he could incite in me. Oliver, I'm tired. I made yet another excuse, but honestly, I was tired. It's been a long day. It was my first day back at work. I just want to go to my room and... See? I knew it. He drummed his fingertips on the countertop. You wouldn't be going to hide off in your room if I was out like you thought I was. Lainey, tell me what's going on. I know you, and I can tell when something's off with you. You've been acting weird. I'm sorry it took me a minute to remember not to go roaming around the house half-naked, but... You're not the only one roaming around half-naked, I mumbled resentfully, remembering a few nights ago when I made the mistake of going to the kitchen for a glass of water in the middle of the night. I saw your girl from Saturday night sauntering to the liquor cabinet in nothing but your dress shirt, unbuttoned, might I add. Oliver smirked at first, like he was proud of that one. But when he saw how pissed I was, he quickly wiped the grin off his face. Okay, fair enough. I'm sorry I made you uncomfortable and put you in that position. She made me uncomfortable, I corrected him. Mostly because her boobs were hanging out, and she didn't even bother saying a word to me. Mostly because I'm in love with you and hate her and every other woman you bring around here. I won't let that happen again, he said earnestly. From now on, I'll be much more discreet about the women I bring over. I'll make the whole kitchen and living room a strictly nude-free zone. No clothes, no service. The end. My shoulders slumped. I wished that fixed everything. I wished it would make all of my feelings for him and the awkwardness of the entire damn situation just disappear. But I still had the sick feeling in my gut that came along with all of my feelings for Oliver. I just miss hanging out with you. Just the two of us. Like we used to. The sincerity in his voice melted me inside. His big brown eyes burrowed into me, tucking at all my heartstrings. I want us to do something fun together. What about the other day? I thought it'd be a blast for us to take that quick ride on my bike together, but you took off running from me. I'm just clumsy. I don't know how to do all the crazy things you do, I defended, grasping at straws. I knew damn well I was no clumsier than he was. I felt uncomfortable in my body whenever he was around. Because he was perfect. And I was not, at least to what I believed were his standards. I had to say something to keep from blurting out that I just didn't know how not to be in freaking love with him anymore. So let me teach you. I buried my face in my hands, groaning. Ugh. Oliver. No. That's not going to work. Why do you have to be so pushy? Because we're friends. And that's what friends do. They hang out. They have a good time together. You helped me with my research papers last week and with other stuff all the years we've been friends. So, you can help me, but I can't help you? Come on, Lainey. Unless there's another reason you're avoiding me. Please, tell me now. Everything in me seized up as I tried not to scream and cry into my hands. No, I shouted. No other reason. Okay, have it your way. He moved to get up. Fine. You win. Geez, you're such a stubborn jackass. Okay, what do you want to do? Whatever it is, skydiving, motorcycles, bungee jumping. You name it, I'll do it. There. You happy now? Any one of those possibilities seemed infinitely less terrifying than telling Oliver how I really felt. He smiled wide and responded with his usual cocky air he had every time he won something. Yes. It does make me happy. Tomorrow. You're free? I racked my brain for any last-minute excuse that might save me, but even if I could think of something, I'd only end up right back in the same standoff with him next week. Sure. I sighed. Tomorrow, I'm free. All day. He arched a brow. Tomorrow, all day long, you're mine. 
looking awfully pleased with himself, he tapped his fist on the counter in front of me. Last chance. You wanna watch TV with me tonight? I shook my head, and Oliver turned to grab his keys and wallet. I'm going out for a bit, but I'll see you bright and early tomorrow. No bailing on me this time. I already had my back turned to him, planning to escape to my room until he left. But the next thing I knew, I felt his body hovering behind me. I whipped around just in time to get caught in his embrace. He enveloped me in the kind of long, friendly hug he loved to give, the kind that always destroyed me on the inside. I wrapped my arms around his massive shoulders, and the mere thought of caressing his muscular back, his perfect ass, made my entire body tingle with need and lust and want, and all the things I only wanted from Oliver. Having him this close, his hard body pressed to mine, I could imagine what he'd feel like if he were actually mine. Trust me. You'll be fine, okay? I won't make you do anything you'll hate, he promised in a low, deep reassuring voice that vibrated through his firm, strong chest against my cheek. Mmm. Hmm. I squeaked, pulling away from him as fast as I could. Distance was the only thing that could protect me from the kinds of things that the deep, sexy hum did to my body. The door shut behind him, leaving me to melt in a mini freak out. Great, can't wait, I moaned sarcastically, while my thoughts raced with, what the hell was I thinking? I'm screwed. I spun around and stared at our photo strip on the fridge. I hoped it'd be Coney Island all over again. That had been one of the absolute best days of my life. God, I was such a clusterfuck of an emotional roller coaster. On the one hand, I loved spending time with Oliver and couldn't get enough of him. Yet, on the other, I felt as if I was digging myself deeper and deeper into misery. I mean, obviously, I couldn't avoid him, because that would only result in ruining our friendship and both of us being unhappy, and neither of us wanted that. Ignoring him only made him miserable, and it angered him, too. I sighed. Screw this shit, I thought. Lisa was right. I would do what I should have done all along, relax, spend time with him, and truly enjoy myself. I'd not worry about a damn thing any longer. Just like Coney Island. I pulled my notebook and a pen from my purse, they were on top, thank the universe, and plopped on my bed to jot down my new life plan. In a nutshell, at least. I could add more later. 1. I will relax and be my normal happy self. 2. I'll forget all about wishing he'll be my first. Hell, other moms have handsome sons, too. 3. I'm done being a nutcase. D.O.N.E, once and for all. Really? I mean it. New Elaine Carter, here I come. 4. I will not think about the letter. 5. Almost forgot. I will not drive myself crazy if I mess up numbers 1 through 4. Nobody's perfect. P.S. Motorcycle rides are excluded from this list. I'm not getting on that damn thing. Ever. I read over my plan one more time to make sure I hadn't forgotten anything, and then got up to toss the notebook inside my purse. My bag was a bottomless pit, nobody would dare rummage through it. I'd melt and likely go into cardiac arrest if anybody ever did and found my plan. With my wine bottle in hand, I smiled to myself, plan now set, and head now out of my ass. Whatever he had in store for me the next day, it would be fun. Everything with Oliver was fun, as long as he didn't try to get me on the back of his damn bike. He'd laugh and joke with me all day like his best bud. And you know what? I would have the time of my life. And so would he. Tomorrow, he was all mine. I crashed back on my bed, feeling giddy and nearly spilling the bottle all over me. Then I remembered Lisa's words and laughed out loud. Oliver, twelve years earlier. There was only one thing worth getting out of bed a half hour early for in the mornings. Hint, it wasn't sports. It was a smoking hot chick from school. Amber Collins. Hell yeah. Blonde, full pink lips, and athletically built with an ass to die for. She was the girl every guy in school wanted, but she wanted me. Getting to school early meant I could drag her off to the side of the building and maybe finally have enough time to venture beneath her sports bra to see if her tits were on the same level as her sexy butt. After my shower, a few squirts of cologne, and one last quick comb through my hair, I grabbed my duffel bag and started the drive to school. I could see Amber in front of the building chatting with her girlfriends. 
At least, that's what she seemed to be doing. But I knew it was just a ploy to stall and catch me coming in. It was a game I was all too willing to play. But the moment my sneaker hit the bottom step, the speakers hanging over the front entrance started crackling with an announcement. One that, much to my dismay, instructed me to report to the principal's office at once. Both my and Amber's faces dropped in disappointment. I'll come find you after. I offered in passing. Sure. She shrugged. I could hear her and her friends giggling behind me as I walked inside. I wasn't normally one to seem so eager, but if Amber was just as willing, there didn't seem to be a point in playing it cool. Mr. Humphreys, thank you for joining us, Mrs. Dupree announced as I walked into her small, stuffy office. I nodded and smiled politely, instantly noticing the girl sitting in the chair across from her. She was plain-looking, nothing special, really, with long, brown curly hair pulled back in a ponytail, her hair sort of reminded me of the professor guy from Back to the Future, and glasses covering the shy expression in her green eyes. Not gonna lie, first impression, what a nerd. The girl wore a plain, gray extra-large shirt, probably hiding a big chest, and baggy pants. This is Elaine Carter. As you know, we have the tradition of our school's mentorship program for new students, and as an upperclassman, I'm assigning her to you. Shit. I swallowed hard, trying to determine how this might ruin my life. I knew of the mentorship program, this wasn't my first time. But, this was the first time it was going to be a pain in my ass. And the words assigning her to you made it sound like a much bigger responsibility than the last guy I had mentored. More than I was ready to accept with everything else I had going on. Namely, my mission of getting into Amber Collins's panties, or wherever she would let me. See to it that she knows her way around the school. Introduce her to your fellow classmates. You know the drill. I glanced down at the girl. She looked up at me with a timid smile, the pinnacle of mousiness with the big black frames covering her eyes and half her face. She pushed the glasses back up her nose and clutched her stack of books tightly to her chest like a shield of protection. Yeah, fuck that. I was absolutely not about to miss out on the hotness of Amber Collins for this girl. Uh, actually, Mrs. Dupree? I worked hard to hide the annoyance in my voice. You know, this is actually a really busy time of year with football practice and all. And? And last I heard you intend on going to work for your father's real estate company after college? She cut me off with a snide smile. Not planning to try and squeeze in a football career in there anywhere? I think you can manage the minor distraction. Besides, Elaine already has a long list of her own extracurricular activities that take place during your football practices. It won't be any conflict to get her acclimated to the school grounds. Unless, that is, if you have something more pressing to attend to that I may not know about. Amber Collins, I thought to myself. Specifically, her titties. That's the more pressing matter to attend to. Well, not even mentioning the conflict of what being seen around school with this poor nerdy chick might do to my reputation. To top it all off, the reminder of my sealed fate to my father's company definitely wasn't helping matters any. Problem, Mr. Humphreys? Her long, dark purple nail tapped impatiently against the laminate of her desk. No, of course not. I slumped. No problem at all. I glanced over at the girl again, and she smiled with a happy expression on her face. I nodded with a small smile in return, trying my best to be polite. She gave a quick and frazzled goodbye to Mrs. Dupree before shuffling out of the office behind me, ready to follow me around like a lost puppy. I rattled off a few obvious instructions as we walked. Cafeteria. Gym. Bathrooms. Each one clearly labeled so that you have to be an idiot not to figure it out on your own. And this girl seemed like many things, but I had a feeling her brains were not the problem. What's your first class? I grumbled as we went. AP English, she answered brightly before quickly recoiling. It was like she was hiding behind a mask of uneasiness that fell off for a moment, but she was quick to snatch it up again and retreat back into her shell. AP, of course, I huffed. Huh? Nothing. I glanced up just in time to see Amber and our other friends coming down the hall. I had the impulsive urge to ditch her as quickly as possible. Hey, listen. Think you can manage for first period? I have... Uh, some stuff to take care of before class. She stared at the floor and blinked. Um, okay. I guess. I could tell she wanted to say no, absolutely not. But since she was too polite to do so, I took my chance to flee. It was worth it. I wrapped my arm around Amber as we walked down the halls. 
Just a small taste of what would come later, after school when we could be alone again. By the end of first period, I'd almost forgotten all about, shit, what was her name again? How strict could the mentorship program really be this time around, anyway? I doubted Mrs. Dupree would come hunting me down to demand I be more attentive. I was wrapped up in amber again as we slowly strolled to our next class. When we rounded the corner, I felt her body jerk next to mine. Hey, Chubby. Watch it, you fat elephant. Amber barked. Her sweet demeanor had quickly turned vicious and unforgiving. I looked down to see the nerdy chick. She was scrambling to the floor to pick up all of her things that had gone flying when the two bumped shoulders. Even with tears in her eyes, I could see she was angry by what seemed like rage contorting her features. And what she said only confirmed it. She stopped what she was doing, glaring at Amber, the expression on her face defiant. Watch where you're going, Blondie. No matter how pathetic she seemed, I felt a tug of guilt for how Amber talked to her. I quickly joined her on the floor to help pick up her books. It was the least I could do after abandoning her. You don't have to do that, Amber insisted. It's her fault she's too clumsy. She better watch where she's going or keep a grip on her shit. You heard me, chubby. The more Amber talked, the more my blood boiled. Not just for her mean streak, but also for the corner she was backing me into. Now, not only was I paired up with this geeky girl, but I had to protect her, too. Nobody deserved that shit. Thanks, she breathed out as she stood with all her belongings back in place. I could tell by her tight smile that she wasn't oblivious to the fact that half of the incident was my fault in the first place. Let's go! Amber pulled on my arm, her voice full of spite. Uh, actually. I stared her straight in the eyes, not liking the part of Amber I'd just gotten a glimpse of. Hot or not, that was uncalled for. I'm supposed to be showing her around. I kind of bailed on her this morning, so, yeah, maybe I'll see you around. My guys snickered behind Amber, right along with her girlfriends. I could only imagine what kind of trash they'd start talking the minute they walked away. I shrugged it off. Amber's face twisted. Sure. Suit yourself. Then they walked away, along with my hope to finally stop wondering what her boobs looked like. I no longer cared. Sorry to steal you from your friends, the girl said quietly, still wrapping her arms around a stack of books and papers. Maybe a little tighter now than before. Thank you for showing me around. This place is like a maze. It gets easier when you get used to it. I gave her a half grin. You'll be navigating it like a pro in no time. The layout of the school was one thing. But the savage social cliques of our high school were a whole other beast, one that the girl did not do such a great job of taming in the coming weeks. My obligation to her was only meant to last a couple of days, but the more I saw the way the other kids treated her, the more I felt the need to stand up for her. At first, I didn't even really like her. I mean, I didn't dislike her, but I didn't see us ever becoming best buddies, either. I may have been the typical popular teenage guy in many ways, but I wasn't heartless. I couldn't just throw her to the wolves to fend for herself. One advantage of my hanging around with her was that it made the geeky girl more approachable. She seemed to break out of her shell as time went on. Girls weren't threatened by her because they saw her as overweight and not in their league. And they should have been, for a different reason, because over time, I learned she was the smartest kid in school. But something else happened. The more people started to see me as her protector, the more the girls tried to use her as a gateway to get to me. After class, she'd pass along sappy notes and love letters from girls with crushes on me. If I thought they were hot, she'd pass a note back to them for me. Usually, mine were much shorter and to the point. They'd send a page of nervous confessions, I'd send back one line requesting them to meet me behind the bleachers after school. And the bonus was, she got to make new friends out of the fleet of girls fawning all over me. It was a win-win for everybody. Laney, 12 years earlier. Okay, only one thing could make me spend an extra 30 minutes in the bathroom each morning, agonizing over what to wear, how to do my hair, good lord, the freaking frizz was a bitch and a half. And that was him. Oliver Humphreys. Oh, my god. Sandy blonde hair, tall, and built. The thought of him made me want to fan myself. He was that freaking hot. Like, if you were to stare at him too long, you'd actually burst into flames. Dramatic? Yes. But, oh, so true. In a metaphorical way, of course. He was the guy every girl in school wanted. 
every girl's dream. Me, unfortunately, I was practically invisible to him. At least in all the ways that mattered to me. Sure, it was kind of nice to know he watched out for me. I was like a little sister to him. It was better than nothing. At least he actually listened to what I had to say and stared at my eyes instead of my boobs. But damn. The problem was, I would have given just about anything to have him stare at my chest the way he did with the other girls. I know. I know. It was a strange thing to crave, but I wanted him to desire me. Regardless of how objectifying and shallow it may have been. I stared at my reflection, taking off my glasses to reveal my bright green eyes. But I could barely see my face without my glasses, so back on they went. I tried twisting my hair into a new kind of style, but nothing looked or felt right. Whatever magical ability other girls my age had in order to look like a model straight from the pages of Teen Vogue, I so did not share. I felt clueless when it came to my looks. Maybe it was because I knew it wouldn't really matter what I did. I could fix my hair and makeup and wear revealing clothes. Well, what I would consider revealing anyway, which was a skirt that hung just above my knees or a shirt that hung loosely from my shoulders. I could never pull off the midriff shirts the popular girls wore. It'd only make them tease me for my belly even more, because I didn't have washboard abs, or my ribs didn't show. I was tolerable so long as I knew my place as the mousy girl who stayed out of everybody's way. But the moment I tried to assert myself as something bold or attractive or pretty, they would attack me like rabid wolves. And all that extra effort wouldn't change the way Oliver looked at me. I tried to shake off all the negativity as I climbed onto my bike and started the ride to school. I knew none of it mattered. I wasn't there to fit in or be popular. I was there to learn and make good grades. I had big plans after high school. Plans that didn't require me to know how to straighten my hair or apply mascara or make my breasts look good in a shirt. Oliver and his crew were sprawled out across the front steps of the school. Even in his hoodie with the school logo plastered on the front, he looked like the sexiest guy alive. I let out a dreamy sigh when the sun started getting to him, and he pulled it over his head, showing a brief flash of his tan six-pack. He was wearing a thin white t-shirt underneath that only made his muscles look even better, especially with his loosely styled hair leaving one perfect strand hanging down ever so slightly in his eyes. I could see a group of girls also watching him from the other side of the yard with the same adoration. One of them cut her eyes over to me, silently begging me to come over. I knew it was just another love note delivery. The girls realized Oliver had become more like a big brother or some kind of guard dog for me around school. I was also considered non-threatening. A guy like him would never be into the chubby girl. Not even when hell froze over and all that was left were bigger girls. Passing a note through me seemed to make them think they were getting brownie points or something, an advantage they wouldn't have if they simply slipped a note into his locker. It was as if by passing the note onto him, I was somehow vouching for the girl. They had no idea just how many other girls had me passing notes onto him. It was a game I was all too willing to play as long as it gave me extra chances to interact with Oliver. Besides, there was something sacred about our note exchange system. Some girls, of course, took the more predictable route of sliding a note into his locker themselves. But, funny enough, anything I passed on to him seemed to get more attention, which was a thought I worked hard not to read too much into. Okay, to be honest, I read a lot into it. My naively optimistic heart always cheered, did he pay more attention because they came through me? All those other girls fell over themselves trying to get his attention. Sometimes he was interested, sometimes he wasn't. He never stayed with one for long. They came and went. But I was here to stay. I nodded knowingly at the girl, giving her the signal to bring it over to me. If she wanted me to pass along her note, then she could make the effort. I wasn't going to play fetch like a dog. She was his type, no doubt, with her long silky red waves, pulled into a perky, playful ponytail at the top of her head, and I admired her perfectly trim waist, which you could see a hint of under her crop top. Ugh. I always hated our school for voting out the traditional uniforms and loosening up dress codes. It only made it easier for girls like her to show off how much more fit they were. Red ponytail girl walked toward me, and sure enough, once she was close, she pulled a small, folded slip from her pocket and slid it into my hand. She did so with such finesse, you'd think it was a drug deal or some top-secret document. 
when really, everybody knew exactly what was going down. Knowing the note was in my hand, the girl and her friends went inside, not saying a word. What a bitch. Oliver sometimes joked that I was getting more friends than he was girlfriends out of our little system. Friends my ass. I didn't have the heart to tell him none of my new friends ever spoke to me again, well, unless it was to get to him. The girl gang quickly disappeared inside. That's what happened with every letter delivery. The whole point was to not have to endure how Oliver reacted once he received and read the note. My heart would soar every time he laughed at one of the letters, often shooting me a wink. I wanted all the other girls to be laughable to him. I know, I was being pathetic. But it really only meant something to me if I was not laughable in his eyes. Of course, that wasn't the case. But not in the way you'd think. I was just his friend. Not enough to even consider passing a verdict on. But other times, he didn't laugh at the note. Instead, his eyes lit up with arousal as he showed it to his friends. Like today. We stood in the schoolyard, and I'd just handed him a note from Ponytail Girl. I shifted my gaze away, trying to hide the hurt. Oliver pulled a pen and paper from his bag and quickly scribbled a response before folding it and handing it over to me. I knew what to do. Thanks, Lainey. He winked and grinned, melting me inside. I had never given him permission to call me Lainey. It made my heart jump with joy. Nobody else I knew ever called me that. But once he made the mistake of calling me, doll, in front of his friends, and they never let him hear the end of it. It had been Laney ever since then, and I knew it was the only pet name we could exchange. I would take it. When I got through the front double doors, the note somehow slipped through my hands. I chased it as it floated through the air, landing in a corner. The moment I reached down to pick it up, I was hit with an urge. The voice whispered, read it. I tried to shake it off, telling myself, no, Elaine. That would be wrong on so many levels. It had never once occurred to me before, so why now? Of course you can't read it. Why would you want to read it? It's not like he wrote back, thanks, but no thanks. I'm actually in love with the nerdy, chubby girl who's playing messenger for us. Shoving the paper back into my pocket, my feet pivoted on the floor. Half of me was trying to move forward, while the other half seemed to be glued to the speckled tiling that matched the maroon and gold theme of our school. Then again, aren't you dying to know what he says to these girls? You could pretend, just for a moment, that he wrote that note for you. I rushed to the girls' bathroom and locked myself behind the last stall. Taking a deep breath, my hands shook as I slowly unfolded the lined paper. If all I was ever going to have of Oliver were fantasies, I might as well fuel them with as many realistic details as possible. Right? Nothing wrong with that. Against my good side's better judgment, I read what Oliver had written back to the pretty, thin ponytail girl. Hey, Rebecca, how about we take a ride after school? Wink, Oliver. I knew what he meant. Fooling around on school grounds wasn't good enough anymore so Oliver had started taking girls out to a parking view instead. After dark, they had much more privacy. I longed to be shrouded in the darkness with him like that. I could imagine music playing on his radio and the smell of his cologne as he leaned in close. The envy was getting to be too much to take. I had never betrayed my role as his letter carrier. Like I said, it was sacred to me. But something was coming over me. I didn't want to take it anymore. I couldn't take it anymore. My hands moved beyond my control, crumpling up the paper. I tossed it into the toilet and flushed it. I couldn't believe what I'd done. I started walking the halls in a daze, and I imagined Oliver waiting out in the parking lot after school for Ponytail Girl, feeling wounded when she never showed. He wasn't used to being refused. As messed up as it was, I felt bad for him. His feelings would be hurt, and it'd be all my fault. What have I done? Could I fix it? I could have gone and told the red-headed girl about meeting him. Maybe tell her she should write another one? I could say something spilled on the letter and that's why I had to throw it out. Tell her Oliver was interested and where to meet him. Even walk her to the parking lot? Oh, hell, what was I thinking? Put a big red bow on her head to match her shiny-ass red hair and hand her over like a gift? 
Um, nope. Or he could say that I accidentally lost it. I could add that while I did lose it, I knew he definitely wasn't interested. So, get lost, Red. But deep down I knew, no matter what I did, that girl would come and go. Next week, both she and Oliver would be on to somebody new. Something needed to change. I thought the little extra fuel for my fantasies would be enough, but it only seemed to make me want more. I needed Oliver to know how I felt. There had to be some way to get Oliver to really see me. And then it hit me. Of course. I impulsively hid in one of the janitor's closets, pulling up a milk crate to sit on. With pen and paper in hand, I started writing. I had held it all in for so long that suddenly it was just exploding out of me. I was tired of these girls always carrying on about how cool or hot Oliver was. They didn't care for him the way I did. If he weren't the most popular guy in school, he would have been as invisible to them as I was. All of my feelings came bursting from the ink, resulting in a three-page letter that bordered on an epic sonnet of Shakespearean magnitude. It was beautiful. I was so proud. I was finally going to tell Oliver how I felt. But when I reached the bottom, I hesitated. I probably shouldn't sign my name. I wasn't sure if he'd recognize my handwriting, but if I did sign it, I imagined the life I knew slipping through my fingers. No more pass to walk right up to him and his guy friends. No more letter deliveries. No more winking and calling me, Laney. If he knew the letter was from me, he'd probably treat me like one of them, thinking I wasn't any different. Or, I imagined a different scenario. One where it was all left up to the powers that be. He would read the almost anonymous letter, put two and two together, and know it was from me. Maybe, he'd know it deep down in his bones, in his soul. Because we were meant to be together. He wouldn't even need to respond to it. He would find me after school and just kiss me without saying a word. I signed with my initials, E.C., it may have been the most ridiculous idea ever, but I was too high on hormones and desire to care. I was convinced it could work, that he'd be happy I'd written the letter and look at me differently, not just as his friend. I knew it would work. I burst out of the closet and down the hall. Oliver was making his way to his first class. I made sure to slow down and walk more casually up to him, trying to breathe and act normal. He turned to look at me, then down to the letter in my shaking hand. Wow. Another one already? Busy morning. Yeah, but I think, I think this girl really likes you. I smiled with a wink. Like, really, really, you know? Oh, yeah, she's, super cool. I knew I sounded like a babbling idiot, but I felt the need to translate my thoughts into something that more closely resembled his lingo. He had three pages of my true language and would be reading every word of it soon enough. Oliver simply nodded and walked over to lean against his locker. I watched as he skimmed through the first page too quickly, and by the second page, he was bursting into laughter. I could see him silently mouthing through the words, sometimes regaling them a little louder for his cluster of guy friends that had gathered around. My heart shattered. I could feel hot tears welling in the corners of my eyes. I tried to forget what I wrote, somehow rearranging the words in my head to not sound as tragic and pathetic as they actually did. But there was no taking it back. I remembered each and every word perfectly. Sometimes the best things for us in life are right under our noses, and we never pay attention long enough to realize it. I believe I could be one of the best things for you, because you are for me. Maybe you've never considered me in that way before, but the powers that be brought us together under the roof of this school, and you do feel drawn to me, at least in some way. Maybe you feel drawn to me because we're soulmates. Ha! 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 Oliver laughed even harder, emphasizing the words. Your brown eyes are deep and mysterious. Your blonde hair is like a field of wheat dancing in the sun. What the hell? He tried to slow down to catch his breath clutching his stomach as he gasped between bursts of laughter. How could I see these things about you if you weren't my soul mate? If you took a closer look at me, maybe you'd see things you loved about me, too. What a nutcase. What a dick face, with a quick glance to make sure nobody had really noticed my part in the whole exchange, I took off running toward the bathroom again. I'd never once missed a class until that morning. 
Through the entirety of AP English, I sat on one of the toilet lids, locked away in a stall, sobbing as I accepted the reality that absolutely nothing would ever make Oliver see me the way I saw him. Thank God I hadn't put my full name on the letter. But did he recognize my handwriting? If he didn't now, he'd certainly figure it out later. And I would deny that the letter was from me. I braced myself against the sink and stared at my morning reflection. Okay, Elaine. Remember your little pep talk and that awesome five-step plan last night? Suck it up, buttercup. You've got this. You're going to have fun and enjoy your time with Oliver. No sappy shit today, got it? I tucked a few strands of hair behind my ear and put on some mascara, eyeshadow, lip gloss, regardless of what we were doing today, I wanted to look and feel good. I also put in my contacts. No glasses today. As I opened my bedroom door, I was instantly hit with the delicious smells of coffee, fresh juice, and hot syrup. Mmm. Thank you. Looks amazing. Oliver was reading a paper at the table where a plate of pancakes topped with fresh blueberries was waiting for me. Just a little fuel for the day. He poured me a glass of OJ. There's coffee, too, if you want some. What? No note for me? I asked with a wink. He glanced up from his paper and shook his head. Laney, I'm a man. You'll never see me write notes. In fact, hell would freeze over first. So you don't like it when I leave you notes? I didn't say that, but you're a girl. I'm a man. A man does not write cutesy notes. Got it? I fluttered my eyelashes, laying it on thick. Not even for his very best friend and best roommate, who makes awesome breakfast and spends hours watching Netflix and Oliver grinned and cut me off. Don't push it, goofball, or I'll eat all the pancakes myself. I laughed and filled up a mug from the pot before joining him at the table. You didn't have to go through all this trouble, you know? I wanted to, he said with a shrug. Uh, huh. He was up to something. Did a letter from NYU arrive for me? I asked. Nope. Sorry. I started cutting up the pancakes, wondering what was going on in that head of his. So, what do you have planned for me today? Spelunking? Rock climbing? It's a surprise. He winked. Oh. Shit. My heart jolted in my chest. Surprises from Oliver could go one of two ways, he could scare me to death, and actually make me think I was dying, skydiving. Oh, my god. Like, for real. That was not fun when you felt or saw your death coming at you just before the parachute saved your ass. But what if the parachute failed? It'd be Pancake City. Or it could be one of those where he wanted to show me something new he'd found, a new hobby. This was what I hoped for. Otherwise, I might not make it through the day. Rock climbing? Elaine, remember plan number one on your list, I will relax and be my normal happy self. That means, not overthinking things like a crazy person and just letting go. Okay, I could do that. I bit into a forkful of fluffy, hot syrup-covered pancakes and tried my best to forget all of that, especially Pancake City, as I watched Oliver eat while reading his paper, barely able to contain his smug smirk. He loved tormenting me with the unknown and being in control. I supposed I could put my reservations aside for a few hours if it meant making him as happy as he looked this morning. When we finished eating, I rinsed our dishes and put them in the dishwasher. Oliver had gone to grab his jacket, and it made me wonder if I was dressed appropriately. The little shit still hadn't given me the slightest hint as to where we were going. Hey, is my blouse and jeans okay, for whatever it is you have planned? I asked as he returned to the kitchen. Oliver stroked his chin, eyeing me with his signature smirk. What? Do I need to change? He chuckled. The pink heels should probably go. Maybe a pair of sneakers? I loved my heels, they matched my blouse, but he was right. What had I been thinking? Heels? Ugh. I laughed at myself. Um, right. Good call. Be right back, and then we can go. I headed to my room to change my shoes, that still matched my blouse, thank you very much, and met him in the living room. 
he escorted me out into the parking garage. I was relieved when he led me to his white convertible Porsche rather than his motorcycle. I let out a big breath as I climbed inside the passenger's seat. Figured I wouldn't scare you right off the bat today, he said as he slid into the driver's side. We'll start out slow and save the bike for another day. Thank God. Smushing my chest against his back and clinging to him for dear life was not the tone I wanted to set for the day. I buckled the belt across my shoulder and sat back, eagerly awaiting the big reveal for whatever he had planned. I was surprised when Oliver finally pulled into a large parking lot somewhere I didn't recognize. I followed him through the gates of a covered enclosure where men were posing with golf clubs on a vast green plot spread out in front of us. Golf? My mouth dropped open as he stuck a key into one of the lockers and pulled out a bag of his own clubs. You got me to agree to absolutely anything in the world, and you brought me to play, golf? Yep. Disappointed? Not at all. I was so relieved I'd not be staring down the side of a cliff he expected me to jump off of or some cave I was supposed to go dangling down into on a rope that I couldn't help myself. I stood on my tiptoes, hugged him, and kissed his cheek. Thank you for not forcing me into anything too extreme. I could feel the blush on my cheeks from my accidental kiss. Holy crap! I hadn't meant to kiss him, but his unshaven skin sent a thrill of desire straight to my panties. It made me wonder what his stubble would feel like between my legs. Oh, heavens! I had to squeeze my thighs together to ease the throbbing sensations growing more and more intense by the second. So much for relaxing. God, Elaine. Get a grip. You can think of this in your bedroom later. Not at a golf course while you're standing in front of Oliver. See. I told you that you can trust me. He was surprised to say the least. Ever played? He started walking toward two of the stations in a row of other men. I had to run to catch up to him. No, I've never played. I didn't know that you did, either. Oliver stopped at a small green square with a couple of feet of netting on either side of it. An identical empty spot sat right next to that one. You know I do a little bit of everything. Keeps things from getting boring. Anyway, golf is a good buffer for entertaining potential clients in my line of work. I stood there, watching cluelessly as he pulled out a golf ball and placed it on the tee in front of him. Like a pro, he swung his strong, muscular arms back before hurtling them forward again, sending the little white ball bouncing somewhere off in the distance, almost too far away to see. He nodded between me and the empty spot next to him. Go on. Give it a try. I sucked in a deep breath and stepped over to the bucket of balls behind us. I tried placing one on the tee, just as he had done, but of course, mine fell off and went rolling down the hill without ever even touching the end of the club Oliver had shoved in my hands. Bearing my teeth in a nervous laugh, I slinked back over to grab another ball. This one managed to stay put long enough for me to square up to it. Sure, I can get the hang of this, I said out loud to myself as I reared back in the same way all the other people were. No problem. I've so got this. But my club went flying right past the ball without even so much as grazing it. I laughed it off and tried again. Um, so, I don't got this. God, I sucked ass at golf. But at least I managed to hang onto the club. That was a plus. Oliver chuckled and stepped forward. I stiffened when he stood right next to me and said, Here, let me help you with your form. I had been worried about my chest against his back if he forced me onto his bike, but now it was his chest against my back, which as it turned out was just as bad. I could feel his perfectly chiseled abs pressing against me and his warm breath on the back of my neck. His large hands wrapped around my grip on the club, placing his arms skin to skin against mine. Everything in me tensed up as I swallowed hard, trying to keep my feet firmly planted. I wanted to run away. I needed to flee from him just like I always did. But I wouldn't. I had a plan. I also didn't want to be hit with another lecture from him for making things weird, and I didn't know how many more of those I could take before the whole awful truth came spilling out. Okay, I didn't really want to run, but his being so close, the feel of him, it was too much. I wanted him so badly, all of him. So, I told my internal voice to shut the hell up. Just relax, Oliver said softly against my ear in that deep, sexy rasp he pulled off so well whenever he was speaking quietly. 
The minute he said it, I relaxed too much. I completely melted inside and felt my grip loosen around the club. If Oliver hadn't been positioned behind me with his hands on mine, I might have dropped the damn thing. But it seemed to be exactly what he needed from me. He started molding me like putty in his hands. Everything around us seemed to dissipate as he offered tips on where to move my hands and how to stand. I couldn't breathe when his hand dropped to my hip as he moved one of my legs a few inches back. I was losing myself in his voice and turned my head, bringing us face to face. I didn't know why I did it, but there we were, suddenly, his face and lips inches away from mine, with his body wrapped around me from behind. Oliver had been in the middle of explaining something, but his words slowed before stopping entirely. It was like a million fantasies I'd had over the years, a moment where everything was still, and we were close. I pictured it happening so many times just before we finally kissed. I couldn't believe it was finally happening in real life. A breeze went by, filling my nostrils with the scent of his cologne, notes of cedar and mint. His brown eyes drifted down my face, landing on my lips. I parted them instinctually, and we both seemed to linger far too long. He took a step back. Just like that. You're getting the hang of it. Now try it again. I instantly missed the warmth of his body against mine, but I sucked it up and closed my eyes, trying to compose myself. Inside I was screaming, how can I be expected to swing this club like all of that didn't just happen? If I waited too long, things would get awkward. I hurled my arms forward like I never had before, letting them glide smoothly through the air. The tip of the club smacked into the ball, sending it flying all the way out to the 50-yard mark. 50 yards was the closest distance marker, so every other golfer around was looking at me like I was crazy. But since my first attempts had sputtered out at a much shorter distance, it was a huge feat for me. I erupted into a bouncing dance of cheers and squeals, dropping the club to the ground. I was so excited, I hopped all the way over to Oliver without thinking, but he was quick to oblige me with a big smile before wrapping his arms around me for a congratulatory hug. Our eyes met again but we were interrupted by a loud woman's voice. Oliver? Oliver? Oliver let go of me, and I looked up just in time to see a woman walking up to him to put her arms around his neck, practically running him over and forcing him to take three steps back. He smiled right back, which cut me like a knife. As the woman pulled away, my heart sank. It was the same chick from the kitchen the other night. Her questioning gaze eyed me up and down, but it was safe to assume she had no memory of me and was more concerned about trying to figure out what my relationship was to Oliver. Likely due to the fact I dashed back to my room because I didn't want to see her half-naked ass. Hey, he said slowly. This is my friend, Lainey. And this is, he turned back to the woman, but I could tell he was trying to remember her name. The longer he hesitated, the more frustrated she appeared as my face brightened up. Sandra, she said with a tight smile, relieving him from his lapse of memory. Of course, Sandra. It's so good to see you, Sandra said to him, not acknowledging me, her hair blowing perfectly in the wind. I was glad I'd pulled mine back in a ponytail. I've been waiting for you to call so we could have dinner. Maybe tonight? The confidence and certainty in her body language and voice made me cringe. That was the sort of thing I could never pull off. She didn't even bother to hide the suggestive tone in her voice. I knew exactly what she meant by dinner, and so did he. She made sure of it. She didn't care that seconds ago, he couldn't even remember her name. I would love to, he replied, causing my heart to drop again. But I have plans tonight. Maybe some other time. You better, she purred before walking away not even noticing that I was standing there and almost bumping into me. What a bitch. I went back to the task at hand. My irritation with the snobby, rude-ass girl was soothed by Oliver's response. The rest of it, I intended to take out on the golf ball. I flung the club back, just like he had taught me, and swung. Finally, I managed to get one out to the 100-yard mark. I couldn't help but jump up and down and squeal in another little happy dance. I guess that was one good thing I managed to milk out of our unfortunate encounter with Sandra. I did it. I did it. One hundred yards. Did you see that? I shrieked. That's what I'm talking about. Oliver appeared beside me, looking just as happy as I was. Thanks for humoring me. I smiled back at him. 
Hey, the small wins mean everything when you're learning something new. Go ahead. Take another swing. I was eager to try again, but it was infinitely harder to make any attempt at actually hitting the ball with his eyes burning into me from behind. I considered trying to pop my butt or hips out in some way that might look sexy and appealing, but knowing my luck, I'd probably fall over my feet from being so nervous. That would not be a good look for me or even remotely sexy. With a long inhale and slower exhale, I swung the club back a few times before finally sending the ball flying. I cringed as I watched it go completely sideways, hitting the 50-yard mark again, but three or four spaces over from my original shot. Well, at least it still went out pretty far. I shrugged, laughing as I imagined how far off the mark that would have been if I'd been aiming at an actual golf hole. Oliver and I went back to practicing, but my brain was spinning out of control. We had officially shared not one, but two ridiculously close intense moments. They were each only a few seconds, but time didn't seem to have much meaning to me as they were happening. What was that look he was giving me? What business did he have staring at my mouth like that, like he wanted to sink right into it? I wondered if Oliver pulled away so quickly to avoid whatever he was feeling toward me, but I had to stop thinking things like that if I was going to survive the rest of the day. A while later, Oliver slid his club back into the bag propped up behind us. You ready to get out of here? We could grab something to eat. My heart leapt with hopeful possibilities. But it was quickly squashed by my memory of the woman he'd run into earlier today. It hurt, but I needed to remind myself that he hadn't looked at her the same way he'd looked at me. Then I was hit with the vivid flash of the brief moments we had shared that afternoon. But he had looked at me that way for a few seconds, hadn't he? Don't you have plans with that triple T chick? I blurted. Shit. Why did I say that out loud? His brows wrinkled. Triple, what? Nothing. I said quickly. Nothing. But didn't you tell that woman earlier today that you'd call her? What woman? Sandra? Are you kidding me? He wrapped his arm around my shoulders, this time in his usual, big brother, kind of way. After you avoided my invites to go out for so long, I finally got you for the whole day. I'm not going to miss a moment of this. I just said that so she wouldn't give me a hard time. You lied. I grinned and raised a brow at him, but truthfully, I wasn't complaining. No, I didn't lie. I said maybe. Now, come on. Let's get out of here. I'm starving. He led me along the path next to the parking lot with his arm still wrapped around me, and I could hardly breathe. I couldn't help but stare at him as we went, until finally, he had the good sense to pull his arm away. Good, I thought. That was better. That was safe. At least two to three feet between us at all times. We hopped into his car and drove off to one of his favorite restaurants. He already had reservations. I stopped myself from asking if he typically made advance reservations on a Saturday night, we'd usually have somebody tagging along. But this time, it was just the two of us. I could hardly contain my excitement. For the rest of the evening, it almost felt like old times. Up until I started staying with him, I managed to survive years of hangout sessions where everything just came naturally. I wasn't obsessing over my feelings for him or trying to hide them. We just laughed and talked and had a good time. It must have been what he said he'd been missing between us, and I had to admit, I'd missed it, too. Dinner turned into drinks, and before I knew it, we were calling a car to come pick us up and take us home. Should we watch a movie when we get back? I asked from the opposite end of the dark back seat. The edges of his face were lit up by the passing streetlights, and I couldn't get over how handsome he was, even after all those years of seeing his face, he was still disarmingly good-looking to me. Yeah, but I get to pick, he teased. I took it easy on you today by taking you to the driving range. So now we're going to watch something good and scary. I want your adrenaline pumping, you screaming and covering your face, the whole works, or it doesn't count. Only if you promise to protect me, I blurted without thinking. The alcohol was causing words to fall out before I could catch them, which was dangerous territory. But Oliver turned toward me, looking suave as ever. Without missing a beat, he took my hand and replied, You know I always do. And I always will. I might even jump into your arms if I get too scared. 
I could not believe those words just left my mouth. Shit. Oh, well. He winked. Not to worry. I'll catch you. And, yeah, I might have melted a little right there on the seat while trying to push away fantasies of what being in his arms or on his lap could entail. I didn't dare test the boundaries of what had happened earlier long enough to see if our eyes might lock us into another long, intense moment. He chuckled and squeezed my hand before letting it go. I quickly turned to look out the window, avoiding his gaze. But if whatever scary movie he picked out sent me flying into his arms for safety, he couldn't say I hadn't warned him. I couldn't deny that I got a secret thrill from Lenny flying into my arms for protection when we watched The Grudge Saturday night, and not just once. The scene when the female apparition was climbing down the stairs backward with her limbs all jacked up, and when the kid's face just appeared from beneath the bed was all it had taken. Lainey had jumped from her seat and had practically been in my lap. I was still chuckling to myself about it as I strolled through the hall to my front door, whistling while I went. Something about inviting Lainey to stay with me had put a pep in my step. Maybe it was just a new element of surprise. I wasn't coming home to an empty apartment every night. I liked waking to fresh coffee. Or funny notes sticking to my bathroom mirror, the kitchen counter, the toaster, or the front door. I never knew when she'd be there first, curled up on the couch with takeout, or popcorn, or what movie she'd chosen, or if she'd have another surprise waiting for me. Or when she'd be coming and going. It was just a little extra excitement in the mix, and maybe I'd needed that more than I realized. I slid my key into the lock and turned. But as the door swung open ready to greet her with a playful honey, I'm home, I was met with an empty penthouse after all. Laney must be working late. I shrugged off my disappointment and walked over to the fridge, opening it to snag a beer. It hissed as I twisted off the cap and tossed it up in the air. As it landed, I heard the jingle of keys in the front door. Happiness rushed through me. Laney came shuffling in with her arms full and a dripping wet umbrella. Is it raining out? She stopped and stared at me, then back down to her soaked body and belongings. No. Not raining. I just decided to go running through a bursting fire hydrant for fun. I blinked, staring back at her with a blank expression. Yes, Oliver. It's raining. Hey, Yoda, far be it for me to judge somebody on how they like to have fun. Maybe running through fire hydrants is your thing. I shrugged, taking a sip of my beer. She dropped her scowl and snorted. Ah. So, you did read the other Star Wars note. Good. Uh. I couldn't help but grin at the surprised expression on her face. We love that movie. Well, all of them. Laney nodded and started shedding herself of everything, plopping it all down into the entryway before straightening to slide out of her drenched sweater. She lifted her arms straight up, giving a brief flash of her sexy, bare waist and stomach, and her black, lacy bra underneath, with beautiful perky nipples poking through the thin material. I cleared my throat and looked away out of politeness until she'd straightened out the t-shirt under the sweater. But damn if the brief flash of what I saw wasn't enticing. It made me think back to her first night here when I'd seen her tits on full display. The mental image alone caused my dick to jerk into a fucking semi, and I wanted nothing more than to tell her she shouldn't be ashamed. That I might have already seen her breasts, and they were fucking amazing. Holy fuck. Her gaze met mine, seeming to pick up on my interest in watching her partially undress. She had no idea just how fucking gorgeous she was. I cleared my throat and spun around to the takeout menus in the drawer by the fridge. Well, I was just about to go out for dinner, but if it's pouring outside, maybe it's a good night to stay in. What are you feeling? Chinese? Thai? Oh, maybe Indian. Don't you have plans with Miles or something? You know, one of the new club openings? I like a quiet night in as much as the next guy. I spread the menus out on the countertop. She tilted her head, cutting into me with a knowing stare. Oh, yeah. Oliver's just a regular old homebody. Always has been, she shot back with a sarcastic grin. I vote Indian. Fine, she sang, breezing past me to her room. Please order for me. Whatever your favorite is. I'm going to get my things put away and change into some dry clothes. Her bedroom door clicked shut, leaving me stuck on the image of her changing and her naked tits. I quickly shook it off. I didn't know what the hell had gotten into me. Maybe Miles had cursed me ever since he'd gone on about Laney's good looks that day at work. Or maybe it was the magnetic pull between us at the driving range. 
Whatever had shifted inside of me had my brain going to places it never had before, places I'd never let it go, but more and more, it was happening beyond my control. I focused instead on dialing the number for the closest Indian restaurant and placing our order. As soon as I hung up, another text came through. And then another. The first was from a brunette I'd exchanged numbers with at the coffee shop a few mornings ago. The second was from Nadine. But as I stood there glancing between the rain pelting against the window and the phone in my hand, knowing that Laney was changing clothes behind the door not far from me, the decision seemed clear. Or at least it felt that way, even if it made no sense to me. Is the food on its way? She asked, emerging from the bedroom. Yep. I turned and froze at the sight of her standing there in tiny lounge shorts and a tight-fitting spaghetti strap top. My eyes caught on her breasts for a moment before I noticed her shifting, crossing her arms over her chest. Oh, it's actually pretty chilly in here, she said, slipping back off into her room. I was kicking myself inside for staring, especially when she came back out wearing a big, baggy hoodie. She'd just been trying to relax in her temporary home. And I had to go and make it weird by ogling her. Maybe I needed to second-guess my decision not to hit up one of the girls blowing up my phone. It had been about 72 hours since I'd gotten any action. The lack of sex over the past couple of nights seemed to be getting to my brain. Everything okay? She had me skeptically as she walked over to the couch. Of course. I was just thinking about how gorge, I mean, comfy you look. I should get changed as well. I started off toward the bedroom, but stopped halfway. Oh, and Lainey? Yeah. She tucked her legs beneath her on the cushion. I had a really good time with you on Saturday. The driving range, dinner, drinks, all of it. I'm glad we're spending time together again. With a strange look on her face, she replied quietly, Me too. An hour later, we were bundled up, side by side on the couch watching some ridiculous show she'd talked me into. Our feet were propped up next to each other on the coffee table, and our laps were filled with styrofoam boxes. Laney laughed as she scooped up some curry and rice with her folded piece of naan bread. No, you see, she wants to be with him, but her career is more important to her. Sometimes you can love somebody, and it's still just not meant to be. I don't know how somebody like you watches this crap. I shook my head. You're a freaking genius. Your brain's too big to even stoop to this level. Whatever. She rolled her eyes. Anybody could do what I do if they studied and worked hard enough. I doubt that. Highly. Anyway, that's exactly why I need mindless TV like this. It's the only thing that takes my mind off work at the end of the day. And I want to enjoy it while I can. If I get accepted into NYU, I'll be spending every night slaving away on my PhD. Not if you get it, I corrected her. But when you get it, I smiled at the way she held up two crossed fingers in the air, scrunching up her nose without taking her eyes off the TV. She was chewing a mouthful of food, and somehow it was still adorable. Especially with her hair pulled into a loose bun on top of her head with little strands falling around her face. Her feet, wrapped in pink fuzzy socks, swayed back and forth next to mine on the coffee table. Laney had this way of looking better in nothing than sweats than most girls did when they were done up to the nines. Well, surely you understand choosing your career over your love life, she added. I'd say I divide my time between the two, only it's more of a sex life than a love life. I was still watching her while she watched the TV, pretending not to notice me. So, what's going on with your sex life, anyway? Mine's fair game, we make fun of it all the time. But you, I haven't seen you with a guy over once, and you never sleep anywhere else. What's up with that? You want me bringing guys over to your place for sex? She shot back. I paused for a moment, cringing at the thought. I was just curious. She kept her eyes glued straight ahead, taking small bites of the last of her food. Nothing's up with anything. I work too much to meet anybody, and you just heard me say that if I nudged her arm. Okay. When I start working on my PhD, I really, really won't have time. So, there's just no point in starting something up now. I won't have any time for a relationship. I leaned back against the cushion, directing my attention to the stupid girly TV show she put on. It wasn't my thing, but hearing her explain it to me was its own form of entertainment. Still, I was itching to know more about Lainey's whole deal with love and sex. I'd never known her to have a serious boyfriend. Or a serious relationship with anybody for that matter. Was she into girls? 
Is that why she's the only female friend I've ever kept without fucking at some point? Why my interest in her sex life was piqued, that was beyond me. I didn't need to know anything about what went on in her bedroom. But suddenly, I was so curious. You were into guys, right? I asked slowly. Her eyes widened for a moment. She burst into laughter and smacked my arm. Yes, Oliver. You're so dumb. Only men can be so blind. While I'm sure you'd love to fantasize about me having sex with another woman in your apartment, I am very much into guys, and only guys. How long has it been? I blurted out, dying to know. Excuse me? You know. How long has it been since you've been with a man? She kicked my feet off the coffee table and slammed her empty takeout box down in their place. Oliver Humphreys. What the hell? I'm a lady, and that is none of your business. I thought she might be embarrassed to admit it had been a while, but the big grin she was trying to hide told me otherwise. I can see that look on your face, you know, I said, kicking the box further down the table and putting my feet back up in their rightful place. You're thinking of somebody right now, aren't you? Whoever your last gentleman caller was. Gentleman caller, she shrieked in laughter. Who even says that? Anyway, I would hardly call it that. But there is something to tell. You know I'm an open book. And my last time was... Three nights ago. She smirked. I know all too well. I see them coming and going, remember? Right, so it's not fair that you get to remain so secretive. She rolled her eyes again. It's entirely fair, but I guess if you must know, I'm a virgin. I felt a strange pang in my heart, but couldn't control my urge to know more. A virgin? You never had a boyfriend? I did. We met on Tinder a few months ago. We both agreed we didn't really feel a spark or anything special, but we were attracted to each other. He's just as busy with work as I am. He also lives in another state. You've never slept with him? Obviously if she's a virgin, dumbass. Duh. What a stupid question. I wasn't sure why I asked again, or why I needed to hear her answer again. I just had to. No. Sometimes we give each other a call, she said. You know, a sexy call. It's like what you have going on, but just on a much, much smaller scale. I have one guy I call, instead of a new girl every night, like you. I didn't call anybody tonight. I crossed my arms. There's still time, she said, watching the phone buzz so far off the table that it almost fell off. I'm having a perfectly nice time just like this, thank you very much. We went back to watching her show. But inside, I was torn. Why was a beautiful woman like her still a virgin? I mean, I was kind of thrilled that she was, but who was this random tender asshole she was having phone sex with? So, he whispers sweet nothings in your ear? I asked. Yes, but he can be very naughty, too. Fuck, I had an uneasy feeling burning in my gut. I wanted to know more. What was his name? What did he look like? What did he do for a living? I wanted to dig deeper, but the more I learned, the more it bugged the shit out of me. I'm just being overprotective, I thought. I'd always looked out for her, and this was no different. That should have been the end of it, but it nagged at me for the rest of the night. I hated to think of Lainey calling up some guy who meant nothing to her when she was lonely. But why did that bother me so much? It was the exact same thing I did almost every night. Does he make you come? Lainey cut her eyes at me. Oliver, too far. You can't ask me that. Just answer. Not always, no, usually I have to, she shook her head. Make yourself come after you've hung up. Fuck, the thought of Lainey touching herself made my body come to life again. What I wouldn't. Then I got distracted by the persistent buzzing of my phone, which was starting to get on my damn nerves. The triple T's are getting restless, Lainey mumbled under her breath. What? What did you just say? Nothing. She grinned. No! You said that the other day at the driving range, too. What the hell is this triple T thing you keep talking about? She let out a sigh. It's your type. Type? I don't have a type. I give equal attention to all skin colors, blondes, brunettes, redheads. Lainey held up three fingers in the air. Tall, she said, slowly lowering the first finger, followed by the second two. Thin. Tan. That's your type. So, 
Don't try to sell me on all skin colors, because I have never once ever seen you with someone who was pale. Oh, really? I snatched up my phone. I knew it was childish, but she seemed to be having a good time, so I decided to humor her. What are you doing? Showing you proof. Oliver, no, she groaned. Forget I said anything. I really don't need to see photos of your girl flings, okay? I see enough of them around here. Audrey, I went on anyway, holding the phone up to her face to show a smiling dark-skinned girl. She had everything a man could want. I really liked her. She was pretty and smart. And how long did that last? She snorted. Actually, longer than the others, I said. She left me, by the way. She wasn't even near to the average relationship time span for me. She laughed even louder than before. Is that two nights instead of one? Oh. When you sleep with a girl more than three times, do you take her home to meet your mother? Laney fell over in hysterics while I glared at her. Very funny. All right, so, let's see your guy. She sat straight up, and her smile vanished. What? What guy? Your tender guy. No way. I didn't want to see your girl's photo. You forced me, so it's not even a fair trade. I'm just curious to know what competition is out there, that's all. I shrugged innocently. Unless you're making him up. Oh, my God, Oliver. She reached between the cushions where her phone had fallen and quickly pulled up a photo. Here. His name is Frank. He's a doctor. He's incredibly nice. And probably incredibly boring. My eyes flickered with satisfaction when she didn't disagree. I mean, he must be if all they did was phone sex. Also, what kind of name was Frank? Frank. Sounded lame as shit. Still, the moment I laid eyes on him, I was certain that not knowing was definitely better than knowing. My heart sank at the sight of the bronzed muscular guy staring back at me from the screen. He wasn't built like I was, but he definitely worked out. And traveled to the Bahamas frequently judging by the tan. I fucking hated the dude. A doctor? I shrugged. You could do better. She cut her eyes over to me. Gee, I appreciate your confidence in me, but uh, my track record says differently. I tapped my foot on the carpet anxiously. I was burning with the need to tell her just how much better she deserved, but I couldn't figure out why I was feeling the way I did inside. I regretted bringing up the whole damn thing, and now there was nothing I could do to erase old Frank's stupid face from my brain. What kind of doctor is he, anyway? I asked. She seemed hesitant to answer. A podiatrist, she said slowly, refusing to look at me. A foot doctor? I chuckled. So, you know I have to ask. No, you really don't, she groaned. Is he whispering freaky foot stuff into the phone? Like as a fetish? Talking about sucking and licking your toes and shit? It was somewhat funny to think about in general but a sick feeling was creeping up inside as I thought about it with Lainey. No, she shrieked. I breathed out a sigh of relief. I didn't want anybody doing weird crap to her pretty feet, or any part of her body. But then again, why the hell did I care? I'd begged her to stop being weird around me, and now I was being weird as fuck. The whole thing was making my head hurt. I was desperate for a blowy, a shower, and a good night's sleep to get my head back on straight. Oliver had been right about us needing to lift the veil of weirdness I'd let settle over us. But suddenly, it seemed like it had been lifted a little too much. Our new routine of regularly staying in and watching movies together, or going out for dinner and drinks, had blown my girlfriend fantasy into all new proportions. It was too easy to forget that we weren't a couple. We were just missing the main components of kissing, well, and more importantly, sex. Okay, so I guessed, really, we were far off from a relationship. Nonetheless, I was losing myself in the comfort of it all, and Oliver seemed to be spinning off into something else entirely. I couldn't get over whatever his deal had been the other night on the couch. He bombarded me with questions about my almost non-existent sex life, if phone sex even counted, only to turn around and get weird as hell the moment I'd given him any details. I was in no hurry for anything to change, regardless of how annoying all the questions rolling around in my brain were. Instead, I was ready to focus my attention on having a nice, relaxing weekend. I headed home from work. As I walked in the front door, I saw Oliver sitting at the dining room table. 
There was a stack of mail in front of him, as well as a bottle of champagne and two glasses. What's going on here? He grinned. You got a letter from NYU. Oh. My. God. A surge of nervousness pulsed through me, making it hard to move, speak, or breathe. I walked over to him slowly, eyeing the NYU stamped envelope with fear and excitement. He slid the letter over to me. I got out the champagne. But if this isn't the letter I'm expecting it to be, I've also got a bottle of bourbon. Depending on what you're in the mood for after opening that thing. I nodded and gently tugged at the corner of the envelope. I winced as I did it, as if a pile of venomous snakes might jump from inside as soon as it was opened. I can't do it. I exhaled, shoving it back into his hands. You have to open it for me. Oliver lifted a brow. You sure? I shook my head earnestly and waited while he tore into it. I was holding my breath as he unfolded the letter and skimmed it. His eyes darted back and forth across the words, but his expression was unreadable. The moment stretched on for what felt like an eternity as I waited for him to tell me what it said. Say it. Please say it. Please tell me I got in. Finally, a huge smile spread across his face. I don't know about you, but I'm not surprised. Laney. Yeah, you got in. Slamming my hands flat to the table with my eyes open wide, I barked, What? You're sure? He turned it around for me to read it myself. I'm positive. You got in, kid. You did it. The dining room chair went flying backward behind me as I jumped to my feet and began bouncing up and down with loud, shrill screams. He stood up and popped the bottle of champagne, but the minute his hands were free, I lost all control and threw my arms around his neck. It was only meant to be a quick, friendly hug, but I was bursting with excitement. My body was reacting in strange ways and doing things without my permission. I wasn't sure if Oliver was operating under the same pressure or not, but his arms wrapped tightly around me. At some point in the shuffle of it all, he lifted me up as if I weighed nothing, he was so strong, all these muscles, he wasn't even breathing heavy, and my legs wrapped around his waist, bringing us face to face. Briefly, everything came to a stop. I wasn't screaming or jumping. I was staring deep into Oliver's eyes, feeling overwhelmed with gratitude, love, and everything else all at once. I was just one big bundle of emotions. And it sent my lips hurtling into his. They were surprisingly tender, but with a sexy firmness that hinted at what a good first kiss he'd be. The moment our lips touched, I realized the severity of what I was doing. Sirens started wailing in my brain, blaring on repeat, oh, my god, alert. Alert. You're kissing Oliver Humphreys. It all happened so fast. I thought for sure he would pull away before I had a chance to do anything. But his gentle lips against mine, they softened, and I melted. Our mouths parted in unison, only to touch and tighten all over again as we melded together. The kiss did something amazing to my belly, and I forced myself to rip my mouth away before I fainted. Touching my finger to the tingling on my bottom lip, I quickly wiggled out of his arms, firmly planting my feet back on the floor. What had I just done? I couldn't believe I had just kissed him. Him. Out of my league, uber hot jock, Oliver Humphreys. And to make matters worse, he kissed me back. That was bad, right? A mistake. A mess. A huge confusing clusterfuck of bad decisions that was going to make my head explode if I didn't start backtracking super fast. Sorry, I. All good. Oliver started speaking at the exact same time, his lips still wet, and stopped when I did. I did a happy dance for a few moments, trying to stutter through some sort of awkward explanation. But my words kept spilling over each other, rendering us both speechless. I adjusted my fogged up glasses that had slid down my nose. Go change, he said finally, his gaze indefinable. No biggie. We're going out to celebrate. But you already opened the champagne, I reminded him, eager to avoid discussing anything that had happened in the past few minutes, not that he was interested in any discussion, either. And I have to shower. He poured a glass and held it out to me. For you to drink while you get ready. Take your time. I accepted it with a gracious smile and floated to my room on a cloud. Like a fairy with beautiful fluffy wings. 
I could feel his eyes boring a hole into me as I defied gravity, and I had to wonder, was he just as surprised slash amazed slash stunned as I was about what had just happened? Not to mention, aroused? Holy. Shit. That really happened. And not just that, I would officially have my PhD before age 30. How freaking cool was that? Back in my room, I pulled out my phone and quickly sent out a group text to my dad, Lisa, and anybody else I knew who I thought might bask in the achievement with me. My dad, of course, immediately responded, demanding that I come over for dinner as soon as possible to celebrate. I tossed the phone back down to my bed thinking, dinner will come soon enough, dad. But tonight, it's just me and Oliver. I knew just the dress to put on to celebrate. A new red dress hung in the back of my closet, one that I'd been saving for some kind of special occasion without knowing what it might be. Now it was clear that this was the perfect moment to wear it. It was sexier than anything I usually wore. So much so, that when I bought it, I wondered if I would ever actually be brave enough to wear it out anywhere. I held it up to my body and studied the reflection in the mirror. Wow! I was just accepted into the doctorate program at NYU. I just kissed Oliver Humphreys. I'm a queen. Thank you, universe. I can do anything and wear anything I want to. I hopped into the shower and rushed out to dry off and slip into the red number. I missed Lisa more than ever, but if she couldn't be around for this, Oliver would no doubt make up for her not being here. Superwoman 2.0, here I come. Oh, and by the way, I wouldn't mind another accidental kiss, when was my next NYU acceptance letter coming? I stared at the mirror and my reflection in the spaghetti-strapped dress. It was short, stopping in the middle of my thighs and showing off ample cleavage. I had instinctively put my hair up once it was dry, but with one big sip of champagne, I pulled out the clip and let it all come flowing down over my shoulders. I flipped it upside down and put in some frisbee gone and then hairspray to amp up the volume, adding a sexy smoky eye with cat-like liner and matching red lipstick. The final touch was a pair of strappy heels that only made the curves of my ass and hips pop even more. Last but not least, I removed my glasses and put in my contacts. What was I doing, clearly, the champagne and thrill of the moment must have gone to my head. Hell, I'd never been this daring. You are looking fine, girl. That's what you're doing. I mimicked Lisa's voice in my head. If she could only see me now. She'd be so proud. I held my phone out in front of my reflection and snapped a selfie, with kissing pouty lips and all, so she could see just how well I was killing it. Lainey, just thought you'd like to see how I'm celebrating my acceptance letter. Oliver's taking me out. Lainey, oh, by the way, we kissed. Lainey, P.S., don't get excited. It was an accident. Talk to you later. Wink. I quickly switched the contents of my large daily purse into a small handbag I'd snagged and rushed out my bedroom door before I had time to change my mind. Just as my hand reached for the doorknob, my phone lit up with Lisa's response. Lisa. Yes. Girl, get it. But also, what? Your ass better call me later. Or better yet, tell me all about it I in person tomorrow when I land. All I could think about while Lainey showered was the kiss we'd shared and how I wanted more. I loved it, loved her spontaneity, and how she'd wrapped her legs around my waist. But then I remembered she was a virgin. I'm ready! Lainey called out, breaking me from my thoughts. What do you think? I could see her out of the corner of my eye as I glanced over the day's finance section of the newspaper. My gaze darted in her direction to respond, but the moment I caught a glimpse of her curves wrapped up in that tight red dress, my entire body froze. She was dressed to kill. My brain spasmed for a moment, thinking I saw somebody else standing in her place. I did a double take, before fixing my gaze on her, taking in the full sight of her. Laney. I drank her in from top to bottom. The slightly tanned skin of her thighs was exposed, her pretty curves accentuated by the heels on her feet. By the time my gaze settled on her cleavage spilling from the top of the dress, I felt my throat tighten and my cock twitch, aching to come out and play. No. I needed to stop. This was Lainey. My best friend. It didn't matter how much I wanted her. I couldn't. Right, we're ready then, I murmured. What? She stared at me like I'd lost my mind. You look great. Really great. 
I tried to dismiss all the dirty thoughts that had just rang through my mind. I felt my hands twitch as I plopped the paper on the kitchen counter. They longed to graze against her soft skin, exploring those curves firsthand. Be the first man to. What was I thinking? Get a grip, man. Your best friends. She's not one of your hookups. You can't think of her like that. This is Lainey, for fuck's sake. She was more off-limits than a sex tape of my parents. Jeez, why did I let my brain wander in the gross territory? My parents? Fuck. You okay? Her cheeks had turned a light shade of pink from the awkwardness of the moment. And it was all my fault. I was the one making it awkward as hell. What the hell, Lainey? I chuckled. I had no idea. You just took me by surprise. I've never seen you look so stunning. Now, let me show you a beautiful night. Ah, don't make me blush. She smiled, stepping toward the door with her purse in hand. As we walked down the hall toward the elevator, I had to work overtime to avert my eyes from the shadow just below her dress line. I could see the hint of her ass bouncing underneath it with every step, and it was making it hard to think or speak, let alone act without losing complete control and having my dick taking over. The elevator doors closed in front of us. We were left to the mercy of the cramped space with only the two of us inside. I stared at her once more, taking in the ravishing beauty that she was. You're not wearing your glasses. She quirked an eyebrow. Nope. Or your normal clothes. Nope. I didn't know you had such long. You're wearing your hair down. I really had no idea. Oliver, you have great observational skills, and now you can stop. She smiled. You clean up nice yourself, by the way. New suit? No. I just haven't worn it in a while. Maybe once before. I winked at her. She threw her head back and laughed, and the outline of her neck, the shape of her jaw, everything about her was beautiful. Of course. Wouldn't want to wear it more than twice. The scandal. I rolled my eyes and extended my arm when the elevator doors slid open. She looped hers around mine and we walked through the lobby toward the door. I spat out the address of the club to the driver as we climbed into the back seat of the car. Laney shot shy glances and smiles in my direction as we settled in. I still can't believe this is actually happening. She beamed. I did it. I got in. And now here we are, going out to celebrate. I can believe it. I stared directly into her bright green eyes. I knew you'd get in. She shook her head and turned toward the window, a wave of her hair sweeping across her face. I caught myself staring at her glossy, plump lips as she brushed the strands away from her cheek. How had I not noticed how stunning Lainey was before? I mean, yeah, I knew she was gorgeous, but this, it was on a whole different level. Had I been a blind dumbass? Was this even the same girl, my Lainey? You should wear your hair like that more often. She shrugged and flipped it over her shoulder. It's not that different. Just left it down and styled it a bit. It's working. As soon as we arrived, I led her to the front of the line that had already formed in front of the club. I've done some business with the owners here, I explained to her over my shoulder. Which is code for? The bouncer inclined his head to both of us before unclasping the red velvet rope to wave us in. For not waiting in line, she answered her own question. Exactly. I flashed her a wide grin. We stepped into the crowded, noisy bar, and I felt my entire body tense by the way Lainey was forced close to me, more than close. Definitely tits. Soft, warm, inviting. Too inviting. Fuck. It made no sense. We'd been close like that before. Hell, I'd seen her tits. Why, all of a sudden, could I feel myself swelling in my pants every time she just brushed against me? Her perfume filled my nostrils, and my whole body was on high alert to her every move. I pushed my way to the bar and asked the bartender for shots. A moment later, I slid one of the small glasses into her hand, lifting my own in the air. Here's to you, Lainey. My dearest friend who just so happens to be a genius and who's going to cure cancer. No pressure or anything. Her cheeks rounded over a playful grin as she tilted her glass to mine. Here's to today, us, life, my mom. We clinked the shots together before throwing them back. The moment the burn slid down my throat, I steadied my gaze back on her. Your mom would be so fucking proud of you right now. You're doing everything you always swore you would. 
Not that anybody ever doubted you. Especially not you. Her wide green eyes met mine. They glistened with tears, but she was smiling from ear to ear. Thanks, Oliver. Really? With our eyes locked, all the air seemed to be sucked right out of the room. In that moment, I felt like I might crash right into her, like there was no gravity keeping us apart anymore. I wanted to kiss her, no, I needed to kiss her, but instead, I found myself calling for another round of shots. I settled us into a spot at the end of the bar and took a moment to adjust the chair. Lainey's hand brushed down the arm of my suit jacket as I helped her onto her seat. I had to sit the fuck down. How was work? she asked with her sweet smile. The usual. I shrugged. How's it been back at work? I feel like I haven't heard you talk about it much. She blew a breath out of the corner of her mouth. Good. It's strange to have so much back to normal while all these other things are so different. Like staying with you. Sometimes I still want to head back toward my old apartment at the end of the day. Any word from your apartment manager? Just that the renovations are still underway. I'm sure you'll be glad when I'm out of your hair and you can have your bachelor pad back, she answered in a half-mocking tone. Nobody to stop you from walking around naked or whatever kink it is you do when I'm not interrupting all the time. Actually, I love our movie nights in front of the TV, I shot back. You've always had an act for keeping me grounded. Anyway, it doesn't kill me to put some damn pants on. Wouldn't want you to get any ideas or anything. I waggled my eyebrows. But if you really want to know, I'm not in any hurry to get you out of my hair. I like having you around. I felt a strange sense of dread fall over me, thinking about when the time would come for Lainey to move out. I really had gotten used to having her around. Yeah, movie nights have been nice, she agreed. And going out like this is cool, too. I guess you've always had a knack for getting me out of my shell. We make a great team. Always have. I winked. Her eyes flashed up at me with warmth. I think so, too. The music blaring behind us changed, and my ears perked at the sound of the familiar tune. I glanced down at Lainey, waiting for it to register. I watched a slow wave wash over her until she giggled and buried her face in her hands in embarrassment. Oh, Oliver. So, you do remember this? I smirked, raising a brow. I'd rather not, but yes. Yes, of course I remember. She shook her head, throwing back a long sip of her drink. What was that? Senior year? Yes, she grumbled and cringed. My dad let you in, and you caught me dancing around to this in my bedroom, like a total spaz. Something you still enjoy, I guess, I said, referencing her performance in my kitchen, loose, and playing around like that was one of my favorite sides of her. But after you hid under your covers in embarrassment and begged me to leave. Which you wouldn't, she noted. And we had the best dance party ever right there in your room, I reminded her. I could still see the vivid picture of us bopping around her room, her grabbing a random hairbrush and stuffed animals as props, me playing air guitar, while we sang and danced. I never realized how big of a dork you could be until that night, I jabbed. She laughed out loud. Ditto. Well, why else do you think we get along so well? We're no different now. I held my hand out to hers, itching to drag her out onto the dance floor. Her eyes widened, and she immediately recoiled. No. No way. Kitchens and teenage bedrooms are one thing. You know I don't like dancing in front of other people. I know. Come on now. Don't be afraid. She stared back at me with a stern expression, like she had plenty to be afraid of. Lainey never did understand how I could be so carefree, not giving a shit about what anybody else thought. I might look stupid, I guess, she confessed dropping her shoulders. A sly smile spread across my lips as I grabbed her hand, dragging her down from the stool. Who the fuck cares? You're about to have a PhD from NYU. So, get the hell out of here, Dr. Carter, and dance with me. Let's look stupid together. She reluctantly followed me out to an opening in the crowd. Instinctively, I put my hand on the small of her back and pulled her close enough so she could hear me talk against her ear. Pretend it's just you and me in my apartment alone. Forget about everybody else. We were too close, and I felt the rise of heat between us, the gentle part between her lips and the way her eyes sparked, the sudden electricity that seemed to crackle any time our eyes met, or our bodies touched. I moved my hand around her waist, holding her and leading her into a nice dance so she could get comfortable. After a few minutes, she seemed to break out of her shell. 
She tilted her chin up with a mischievous and confident smile. Challenge accepted. Within moments, she was dancing without a care in the world, and I was moving right along with her. She was owning the dance floor with her moves and that dress. And she said she was afraid of what people might think of her dancing. She had nothing to worry about. Laney was sexy as hell. I remembered Miles calling her hot or sexy or something like that. Hell, the son of a bitch was right. After a few dances, I led her back to the bar. Hey, I'll be right back. Do you want me to order another drink? She shook her head. No, I'm fine for now. Thanks. All right. See you in a few. I excused myself to the bathroom. The drinks had gotten to me, and I needed to take a piss. When I walked out of the bathroom, my blood boiled. A guy was at Laney's side, wearing an expensive suit, sleek purple shirt, and tie. What kind of guy wore bright purple like that? A fucking pimp? He needed a feather cap. He flashed a mouthful of perfect white teeth at her and leaned down to say something in her ear. My chest burned when she smiled back. I swore under my breath when she handed him her phone, likely to exchange numbers. Hearing about her dating was one thing. I could even tolerate the distant memory of a guy she dated in college. Or this Tinder doctor she'd been hooking up with. But watching it? Fuck that. It was a whole other kind of poison, and one I wasn't the least bit fond of. Hell no. I wasn't standing for this shit. I marched my ass straight toward the bar, intent on laying down the law and letting the dude know Laney was with me, but as soon as he saw me coming, he left in a hurry. Asshole. I took my seat and was about to order a shot when Laney interrupted me. Come on, Mr. Humphreys. Dance with me. She grinned. I chuckled, sliding down from the stool and placing my hand in hers. What happened to your friend? She glanced back over her shoulder, wrinkling her nose. Who? Purple shirt guy. His name is Kyle, she said on a laugh. He's a dentist. I told him I wanted to dance the next slow song with you. Good decision. I held my hand out to hers and led her back to the dance floor. Looks like I can't leave you alone for two seconds. Laney smiled, and it touched me. I'd never seen that look on her face, the way she looked at me. Surely, she had to be used to all kinds of compliments. Had no guy ever told her what a cat she was? Tonight, all dances belong to me, I rumbled into her ear. It felt comfortable and easy. Of course it did. Hadn't that always been one of the things I loved about her? Pulling Laney close, I could hear her breath itch as she rested her head on my chest and wrapped her arms around my neck. I placed my hands on her hips, leading her through the dance, but I needed her closer, to feel her body press to mine. This wasn't enough. Reaching up, I clasped one of her hands in mine, stepped back, and spun her around. She smiled and gasped as I pulled her flush against me, feeling every delicious curve of her body. Laney hadn't been expecting it, and that was my intention. I caressed her cheek, and she leaned into my palm, tilting her head up toward me. Our eyes locked. Our lips were inches apart, and I wrapped one arm around her waist, the other tangled in her hair at the base of her neck, leaning in to kiss her. But the song came to an end, Laney's knees buckled, and I steadied her on her feet. She stared at me, her gaze questioning and we snapped like we were waking up from a dream. But it took us a moment to separate. We stood there like two kids at prom. Ready to go home? I cleared my throat before I asked the question. I'll call us a cab. She nodded and followed me to the bar where I closed out our tab before we left. The cool night air brought a rush of relief from the sweaty, hot dance floor. Within seconds, we heard the loud shrill cackles of a group of drunk bachelorettes stumbling around and slurring their ecstatic hoots and hollers just outside the club's exit. Laney threw her head back in laughter, and it was contagious. And it kept us giggling and joking the entire way back to the apartment. Laney and I were still cackling up a storm as we stumbled from the elevator to the apartment door. We weren't drunk, a bit tipsy at best, or more so than me, but we laughed so hard it made it difficult to catch our breath and walk straight. And then nobody said anything, and Mrs. Mulligan went through the rest of the class with that black streak across her lip. She howled as she walked into the kitchen. She looked like you know who. The bad haircut didn't help in that regard. I chuckled. Laney opened the cabinet where I kept all the booze and trailed her finger across the bottles until she landed on the Jägermeister. Aha. Somebody found my secret stash, I said. I rarely drink that shit, 
but Miles likes it. I raised a brow as she screwed off the lid and pulled out two shot glasses. Is it your bedtime, lightweight? By all means, you can call it a night if you want. That just means more Jaeger for me. I'm not ready to sleep yet, and this bottle isn't going to drink itself. Are you challenging me? I stepped up to the counter. Her eyes sparked back at mine with a sly sway of her head. Maybe I am, she replied in a deep, enticing voice. Challenge accepted. Pour away. I waved across the small tumblers. The purple liquid trickled into the glasses, and we both threw back a shot. Her hair was wild, tossed over to one side in a disheveled look. There was an ease around her slightly parted, glossy lips, and her eyes glinted with both mischief and contentment. You were quite the vixen out there on the dance floor. Now you're pouring the shots. I seem to have stirred up your wild side. I taunted. You sound so surprised. One strap of her torturously sexy red dress fell from her shoulder. I couldn't resist reaching across the counter and hooking one finger beneath it to slide it back in place. Her green eyes flashed across my hand as it grazed her skin. Damn. Her skin felt soft and inviting. She liked when I touched her, I could see it in her eyes. Can you blame me? I asked. All I've ever seen is the laney I'm constantly having to coax into trouble. Who knew that all this time you're perfectly capable of getting into trouble all on your own? Well, maybe Dr. Elaine Carter is a different woman. She swiped the bottle and tumblers from the counter and breezed her way over to the couch. Or maybe you just don't know everything there is to know about me. I plopped down next to her. Touché. Maybe we can work on that. Now it sounds like you're the one challenging me. Oh, I am. I poured two more shots. I'm challenging you to a game of truth. Remember how to play? She lit up at the prospect. Like truth or dare without the dare? Yep, no dares, unless you go streaking down the hallway naked. It'd give me a stern talking to from my buildings committee. I don't need another one of those. And after everything that happened with your apartment, I don't think your dad could handle any more stress from our late-night drunken prank calls. While I do think my NYU acceptance eased his worries a little, you're probably right, she said with a snicker. So, who goes first? I'll step up to bat first. Hit me with your best shot. I tipped my glass toward her and smirked. No pun intended. Okay, okay. Let me think. She grinned, pausing for a moment. Oh. Okay. I got it. How many women have you slept with? Oh. I blew out a long breath and whistled. We'll be up all night if I start trying to calculate that one. I knew it. So, it's a lot, right? Give me a ballpark figure. Would you say more than twenty? Oh, yeah. I nodded. More than fifty? I scratched my chin and lifted my glass in the air, signaling for her to go higher. More than seventy-five? She shrieked. But less than one hundred, right? I twisted my face and thought. I think that's a fairly accurate guess. Phew! I always knew you were a lady killer, but damn. Okay, drink up, man whore. We threw back our shots, wincing from the black licorice tasting, sweet as shit burn, and immediately poured two more. What about you, virgin? Since you're untainted by the D, how many guys have gone down on you? Ugh, I can't tell you after you gave your number. It sounds pathetic. Ugh. No way you can bow out. I answered it. Now you have to. Fine, she groaned, rolling her eyes. My number is, one. Joe, last year in high school. Go ahead and talk shit. I know it sounds pitiful. Absolutely not. You're just more selective. It's classy. I like it. I admire it even. Now, drink up. Inside I felt a warm swell of satisfaction with her number. I didn't like the idea of any random asshole guy off the street like Frank or Purple Shirt guy knowing Laney in that way. Thanks for coddling my ego, she quipped. All right, so you've slept with a bazillion women. But where did it all begin? Who was your first? The corners of my mouth curled into a grin. Oh, man. You're not making this easy on me. Hey, this game was your idea, she argued. Are you saying you can't take it? Fine. I sighed. It wasn't anybody you know. My sophomore year of high school. 
I went to a party at a sorority house where there were a lot of college girls. I played beer pong with this Irish chick named Cara, and we ended up making out. She dragged me off to her room, and one thing led to another. And so, all over the ladies' man was born. She lifted her glass. Yeah, I guess so. I shook my head. With nostalgic music from our high school years coming from the speakers, I raised my eyebrow at her. Here's one, I said. What's your deepest secret? Woo. She gave me a sarcastic grin. Is that all? Just my deepest secret? Would you like my bank account number while we're at it? Now that you mention it, yeah, write it down, I joked. I assure you the balance wouldn't be what you're used to seeing in your own account. Don't try to change the subject. She stared across the room with a sigh. The suspense was killing me while she took her time digging up her confession. I didn't know what could be buried deep inside of her, since tonight had proven I shouldn't be so quick to assume I knew my best friend as well as I thought I did. But I was dying of curiosity. All right. She finally shrugged. If you really want to know. I've always wondered. Yes. I motioned for her to continue. I've always wondered what it would be like between us, she blurted, her hand gesturing from me and then to her. My brain glitched from the words. Between us? What do you mean? Her eyes widened. You know what I mean. That. That? It clicked, with me. Oh. Who? She mocked back at me. You asked. So don't shoot the messenger. She giggled. That's not all. It's not. The real secret is, I've always wanted you to be my first. Crazy, right? I was speechless for the first time that evening. She wants me to pop her cherry? Not what I expected. Not even close. I mean, I knew she was tipsy. I knew we had a great time tonight. Hell, she'd kissed me. I'd almost kissed her at the club. Still, I expected her to tell me that she accidentally killed a bug or some shit, grabbed an apple from a neighbor's tree, or forgot to do her homework once, but that? I mean, it wasn't that I didn't want to. Hell, I was fucking thrilled. Ecstatic. Horny. Okay, I'm always horny, don't judge. The devil on my shoulder told me to take her to my bedroom and fulfill her deepest secret, the dirty son of a bitch. The angel on my shoulder urged me to convince her to wait for Mr. Wright, that goody two-shoes motherfucker. I'd rather listen to the damn devil. But this was Laney. Don't you think you should wait for Mr. Wright? I asked. No, I've waited long enough. Longer than you think. She smiled the most amazing smile at me. Don't you think? Not waiting for my answer, she nodded. You have experience, I trust you, and I love. She'd stopped herself and her expression grew more serious. I'd say to heck with waiting. Waiting is overrated. So, what about you? Have you ever wondered about it over the years? After dropping that popping the cherry bomb on me, it was all I could think of right then, and for a second, I hadn't even registered her words. But the question made the swig of Jaeger go down funny. I hated that shit. Fuck it. I poured another and downed it in one go. Laney stared at me expectantly the entire time. No, I haven't. I shot back as quickly as I could. I can't say I've ever wondered that. As I said the words, I knew I was lying, but not really. Earlier tonight, I'd been staring at her body in all the fucking wrong ways. It was true. I'd let my brain wander, many times, in fact. Even though it felt wrong to deny it, it didn't feel right to mention any of it, either. I knew she wasn't talking about just a couple of kinky thoughts. She was talking about all the years during our friendship. What the fuck was wrong with me? She's offering herself to me. She wants me to be here first, I repeated in my thoughts, still not believing it. Hadn't I thought of this before we'd gone out tonight? Shit. Laney nodded slowly, letting my answer sink in. I watched her demeanor change. And it changed completely. Her smile quickly faded, and her cheeks blushed. Suddenly, she wouldn't look me in the eye. Instead, she fidgeted with her hands in her lap and stared at the couch cushion beside her folded legs. Of course you haven't, she mumbled under her breath, almost too quiet for me to hear. This has been a lot of fun. She stood up quickly. Thanks for celebrating with me tonight. Too bad it's already so late. Oh, well. 
I should definitely get to bed. Wait, Laney. No, don't run off to bed. I'm sorry. I really am. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I've just never. My words caught in my throat as I struggled to remember exactly why I had never let myself go there. Her confession had drowned out my reasoning. We've just been best friends for so long. Right, of course. She nodded. No, I totally get it. It's fine. But you know, I'm a little tipsy, so now, Laney's secret telling time is over. At least for tonight. She tried to force a smile. Good night. No. Don't go. Oh, shit. 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 All at once, I felt painfully sober as I saw Oliver there with his eyes wide and his mouth gaping. I didn't know what had gotten into me. The high from my acceptance letter followed by our accidental kiss, however brief it might have been, made me forget about everything for a while. Everything. I'd had a plan. A good one, I thought maybe I could truly be the kind of woman that looked irresistibly sexy and danced with the most attractive guy in the city at the club without a care in the world. Mostly, I thought I could be the kind of woman Oliver would want as more than just a friend. I was such an idiot. A complete fool. Ugh. I'd forgotten about all the things that stood between us and kept me from being the type of woman he would ever go for. For a few short hours, I wasn't just the dorky girl that was completely out of his league. I was a smart, beautiful, sexy woman who could do anything, maybe even seduce her lifelong crush. Even if his body had been practically perfected and sculpted by the gods themselves. But seeing the look on his face at the mere mention of him viewing me in a sexual way, it was enough to bring it all crashing down, hard and fast, leaving me to feel like the world's biggest idiot. I got up, mumbled something to the effect of, good night, and headed, okay, basically ran, for my room, ready to hide under the covers, and hope that by tomorrow morning the humiliation of it all would be buried deep somewhere in another idiot me shouldn't have done this, memory. And him hopefully forgetting that the evening even happened. Laney, wait. He pulled at my arm to stop me in the hall. No. Don't go. I spun around, ignoring the thrill that still pulsed through me any time I felt his touch. I refused to let it get to me anymore. All this time, and it had never once led to anything but me feeling exactly like this, heartbroken and so, so stupid. Oliver. I sighed, staring up to face him with brutal honesty and acceptance. Look, I get it. It's okay. I know why you've never, I shook my head, unable to say it out loud again. I know why. And it's fine. Okay, because we're friends, Anne. He tried to answer slowly. I know I'm not your type. There. I said it. I see the girls you've been chasing since high school, and they're all the same. They're all skinny. You can't help what you're attracted to. I shrugged. So, don't worry about it. It's late. I'll. What? Laney, that's not it. He cut me off, shaking his head. Don't be crazy. My embarrassment turned to anger coursing through my veins. I wasn't about to stand there and let him try to convince me that I was crazy, or that I needed to wait for Mr. Wright, the irony, and that it was anything else just so he could feel like the good guy. I yanked my arm from his grip and started back for my bedroom door. It was just a few feet from my reach, and I couldn't get to it fast enough. I said it's fine, I repeated again, more sternly as I desperately tried to flee. Damn it, Laney, listen to me. It's not. His hand wrapped around my arm again, quickly followed by his other until he had me by my shoulders, pushing my back against the wall. I wanted to ask what the hell he was doing, but before the words could reach my mouth, his lips did instead. Oh, my, I knew exactly what he was doing. Oliver's soft, full mouth pressed against mine, immediately followed by his tongue urging its way between my lips. Oh, my goodness. I parted them, letting him explore deeper. He slipped his hand in my hair, drawing me even closer, and the kiss grew more demanding. I'd never in my life been kissed like this before, and excitement rushed through me. Oliver. Tingles of desire instantly raced to my sex, soaking my panties. I ached to have him nearer, closer. 
Pulling on his suit jacket, I jerked him forward, wrapping my leg around his, and God, I could feel his arousal pressing against my stomach. I was lost in him. I couldn't get enough. Hurry, Lisa. I'm climbing him like a tree. Get out of my thoughts, woman. Elaine, focus. You have no idea how much I want you, Oliver groaned against my lips. I squeezed his leg tighter, feeling his dick thump against me. Holy. Shit. Is this a dream? Did he really just say what I've dreamed about all these years? Is this really happening? OMG, this felt so wonderful I could hardly think. Is this a dream? Are you sure? I thought you. I'm sure. Now shut up and kiss me. Yes, okay. I tilted my head and melted into him again, letting my hands travel up the defined muscles of his arms and then down his back. Oliver dropped his hand between us and inched up my dress, trailing his fingers along my inner thigh, dangerously close to my panties. Intense heat flooded through me, and I knew he could feel how wet I was. The thought of it turned me on even more. I wanted him. I needed to feel him, too. I. Before I could finish that thought, Oliver slipped a finger inside my panties, and I gasped, dropping my leg. You're so wet for me. He trailed kisses along my jaw and down my neck, sliding one finger over my sensitive center before removing his hand. I want to make you come. I could hardly breathe, and instantly missed the heat of his touch. I, yes. I, he'd rendered me speechless. Please. But fair was fair. I reached down and let my hand run the length of his very impressive popsicle, did I really just think that? OMG. Schlong? Screwdriver? Oh, who cares? So funny. I stroked him through his pants, and his donkey kong twitched against my palm. My eyes snapped open in surprise, and they were met by his hungry gaze burning right back into me. His chest rose and fell with deep labored breaths as he growled, Laney, fuck, we need to take this to the bedroom. The lust in his eyes was clear as day, and I knew it wasn't just from being drunk. I think we both shocked ourselves out of intoxication minutes ago. Mmm. Hmm. Was all I could manage to say. I wanted more of his lips, his fingers, all of him. Our mouths crashed together again with much more intensity, his body pressing into mine, pushing me harder against the wall. We ground against each other, rocking, pushing, pulling, anything we could do to feel more. The straps of my sexy little red dress had been falling down my shoulders all evening, and Oliver had been the one to slide them back into place. But not this time. He tugged them down further, reaching around to the clasp at my lower back. His tongue darted deeper into my mouth as he undid the clasp and zipper, undoing more of me at the same time. I felt the silk brush against my skin as it slowly cascaded down to the floor, pooling at my feet. I was completely exposed in nothing but my black lace bra and panties, never actually expecting anybody to see them but me. He drew back for a moment, eyeing me closely. My chest heaved as he drank me in. Oh, Laney, he murmured. You're beautiful. The look on his face, the strain in his voice. If there had been any doubt in my mind about how badly he wanted me, it was long gone now. We stumbled to my door, our lips locked with even more urgency than before as he pushed us toward my bed. The moment we were inside, I impatiently stripped off his jacket, tossing it somewhere in the room. I ran my fingers down his grey button-up shirt and said, fuck it, pulling it apart from the top and hearing the buttons clatter to the hardwood. Oliver could buy another one. Impatient, are we? He chuckled, flung what was left of his shirt to the floor beside us, and cupped his hands around my face, drawing me in again. I was so turned on, I barely noticed as he hoisted me onto the bed. With his arm draped around the small of my back, he lifted my hips up toward him, settling between my legs, and I wrapped them around his waist. I bucked with the need to feel his hardness pressing against me again, only this time, it swelled against my dripping wet sex. Oliver's mouth fell from my lips to my chin, as he planted tender kisses down my neck. He skillfully unclasped my bra just as easily as he'd done with my dress, setting my breasts free. He didn't hesitate to wrap his large hands around them, drawing them to his lips so he could suck, bite, and tease my tender, hard nipples. I hissed and whimpered with each flick of his tongue. 
Caressing my left breast, he trailed featherlight kisses along the curve of my stomach, nipping at my hips as he moved down further and further. By the time the stubble of his chin brushed against my inner thigh, I found myself remembering this exact scenario in my mind at the golf course when I'd kissed him on the cheek. Only, this was really happening. Oh, my god. My core tightened and pulsed, aching for his touch, needing release. He pressed the palm of his hand against my sex and slid my panties to the side. Leaning down, he stared up at me with a wicked grin. Just a taste before I begin. I was going to die. He was seriously going to kill me. My hips jerked when he slipped his tongue between my legs, lightly grazing my sensitive bundle of nerves. Oliver. Stop teasing me. So impatient. He glanced up with a smirk, his brown eyes boring into me. I want to savor your gorgeous body, make you come, make your first time an experience you'll never forget. Damn. I loved naughty Oliver. And, oh, I'd never forget this, ever. What could I say to that? He'd certainly slowed things down, though. He toyed with the elastic waist of my panties, coaxing them down around my thighs, staring into my eyes as he tossed them to the side. It was so sensual, sexy, and, holy mother of. I sucked in a breath. Without warning, he spread my legs wider, descending on my sex with fervor. I threw my head back and held back a cry as his tongue played with me. I knew I wouldn't last long if he kept this up. And then I felt him gently slide a finger inside me, and I nearly came undone. Easing it in and out slowly, he pressed his thumb to my sensitive nub. Panting, I grasped the sheets. Oliver. I'm going to, I shuddered and saw stars dancing across my vision. My legs started to shake as he pushed further into me and curled his finger as he pulled out, only to do it again. I dug my hands in his hair, holding him in place. I'd never felt anything so. Oh, my, I gasped in shock. Holy. Amazing. Whoa. What the hell was I even saying? Did it freaking matter? I couldn't believe what was happening to me. I thought it was just pure adrenaline and that the feeling might fade, but the more I relaxed, the harder it rippled through me. I kept crying out louder, growing helpless to the tidal wave of sensations washing over me again and again. It tingled and spread from his mouth and ripped through my entire body until I seized up, bucking against his mouth and gasping for air. As the mind-blowing sensations seemed to recede, to a degree, my sex was still alive with the most amazing orgasm I'd ever had. I slowly sank back against the bed, only faintly noticing the trickle of Oliver's kisses working their way up my body again. When his gaze met mine, it was filled with a primal need of desire and much more. Um, yes, please. I'll have more of that. Thanks. Dear God, the things that man could do with his mouth, his hands. I pulled his lips to mine, tasting my sweetness on them. I'd never understood those sorts of things before, but in that moment, I was hit with the realization of just how satisfying, and erotic, it could be to taste yourself lingering on the mouth of the person making love to you. It made me feel powerful and connected to him. For that stretch of time in my bedroom, I was his. Did you like that? He murmured against the shell of my ear, then nibbled the lobe. You have no idea. I smiled breathlessly. Maybe I hadn't been wrong at the beginning of the night. Maybe I really could shed the old laney and just be a sensual woman in his arms. A woman who wasn't in any way, shape, or form as experienced as he was, but I wasn't naive either. And I wanted to prove that to him. It wasn't just about showing him what I could do, though. As hot and spontaneous as the moment might be, he was still my Oliver, my crazy hot dream come true. My heart still swelled with tenderness and love for him, and I wanted to make him feel good. I ran my hand down the ridges and curves of his perfect chest, right down to the trail of hair below his belly button. I followed it between his legs, gripping his erection as it strained against his zipper. It was throbbing and even bigger than before, enough so that I felt a hard lump go down my throat as I prepared myself to take it inside my mouth. Um, is that gonna fit? I stared at it long and hard, pun definitely intended. I sure hope so. Damn. Poor Melted Oliver was nothing compared to the real thing, I gulped. I've so got this. He shuddered as I caressed and gently applied pressure with a devilish look in my eyes. My other hand moved down to help him with the button and zipper, 
and he kicked his pants down and off his legs. Oliver's tongue delved back into my mouth while I worked, but the moment I slipped his heart on out of the stretchy fabric of his boxers, his lips froze. He hissed against my mouth, and I could feel every muscle in his body tense. Does that feel good? I smirked. Oh, you have no idea, he groaned, dipping his face to my neck as I began to stroke the soft skin in a steady rhythm. I trailed my finger around the tip, catching a warm drop of his excitement. I brought it back to my mouth and ran my tongue down the length of his shaft, only to pump harder and bring my lips to suck on the head, delighting in the intense expression on his face as he watched. His brows furrowed. Oh, shit, you're driving me crazy. Oh. I teased. Why is that? I licked and sucked, stroking him more intensely. Do you want more of this? I cupped his balls in. No, he growled, shoving my hands aside as he pulled back, jerking off his boxers. I want to be inside of you, Lainey. To feel you. I'm going to make you come again, but this time, on my dick. My heart gave me a big thwack against my rib cage. I so wanted demanding and naughty Oliver. Hearing him talk dirty to me like that caused a ripple of excitement to race down my spine and straight to my core. This was happening. Holy shit. I let out a soft whimper in anticipation, but then reality came crashing back over me. Could Oliver hear my heart trying to beat out of my chest? Yep. That was me, being nervous. After tonight, I'd no longer be a virgin. I was losing my virginity to Oliver. Do not hyperventilate. That is not sexy. His eyes softened, and he pulled me close, caressing my hair. Are you sure about this, Lainey? I don't want you to regret any of this tomorrow? Sweetest guy. Ever. I nuzzled into his chest. I'm sure. I've never been sure about anything in my life. I've dreamed about this for so long. I wasn't about to tell him exactly how long. Oliver stared at me for several seconds, seeming surprised by my confession. You did? You've dreamed about this? I have. How long? Oh, that's a secret. I smirked. Really now? Do I have to dare you to another round of truth? Yes, please. I mean, no. I scrunched up my face. No. I'll never tell. Hmm, we'll see about that. A slight smile came to his mouth. He climbed from the edge of the bed and reached for his pants, pulling out one glorious golden square wrapper. I heard him work the condom over his erection just before he moved back to me. I was startled by the presence in his eyes, full of intention and intensity. This was not some wrong decision born in the spur of the moment. This was, this was something else. I stared at the smooth expanse of his muscular chest, admired the outlines of his many tribal tattoos I hadn't noticed, because I hadn't seen him naked. Oh, wait. I had. Several times. It seemed like my vajaya had taken over all my brain power. I relished the self-control Oliver had. He was so patient with me, too, and I felt safe in his arms. You're so sexy, I muttered with a smile. He pressed his lips against mine again before he replied, You're the fucking sexiest woman I've ever laid eyes on. You take my breath away. I'd waited so many years to hear words like this come from Oliver's lips. Everything, tonight, he made my dreams come true, not only with what he'd said, but his actions, the way he looked at me. He really did see me. It felt wonderful, better than I'd imagined it would. God, I loved this man. I was so caught up in his gaze and the brush of his palm across my forehead, I didn't even hear Oliver when he spoke again. I mean, I was a little distracted by his gorgeous nakedness, and you know, losing my virginity. It happens. Are you okay? Yes. Only about to have a heart attack, but, yeah, I'm good. Perfect. I want you to tell me if it hurts too much, okay? I'll take it slow. I nodded. I trust you. He kissed me tenderly, positioning his hard length against my entrance. Look into my eyes, beautiful. Okay, I said and met his gaze. Don't worry, it'll be magical. I took a deep breath and prepared myself. 
With one careful push, I could feel his tip inside me. It hurt and burned as he stretched me. I stared deeply into Oliver's eyes, blinking for him to continue, afraid of speaking. Another push, and it felt like several more inches had gone in. He was huge. I whimper moaned. So tight and wet. You feel so good. He pulled out just a bit, and then filled me in one swift motion. Our eyes stayed locked together with a force that was almost too much to bear. I had to close them to escape, just to focus on the feeling of him. The pain soon turned into pleasure, and I found myself rocking against him, needing and wanting more. I gripped his back, drawing him closer. Laney, he picked up the pace, and I felt my core tighten around him, growing even wetter with each thrust. Yes. Just like that. Don't stop, I couldn't finish my sentence. I threw my head back with a whimper, clutching his hair. My breathing deepened, filling me with his scent, as he filled me harder, deeper. That sexy cedar and mint cologne I'd been catching whiffs of for years, mixed in with his smell. I'd never taken it in so strongly before, like it was seeping into the pores of my skin. Is this what people feel when they talk about, becoming one? Each thrust felt like a crack in the earth, like everything was breaking open and absolutely anything could happen. I lost myself in the rhythm of our bodies moving together and the taste of our breath mingling. And the wonderful, sweet nothings he continued to whisper in my ear. Oliver's head came to rest beside mine, and I heard the sexy groaning sound that he let out with each jolt and pulse of him inside of me. I'd never heard him make noises like that before. And, he was making them because of me. Every sound he made vibrated from his chest and through my entire body. I dug my nails into his back, losing myself in the sensation of him thrusting deeper inside me. As he moved, he ran his hands down my body. He squeezed my breasts and flicked his tongue against my sensitive nipples, only intensifying the feelings that rippled through me. I had never felt so wanted and desired. Oliver's touch made me feel like a woman who was incredibly sexy and wild. As the skin above his shaft, slick from sweat, rubbed against my middle with each skillful, long, and hard push into me, I felt the exhilarating spread of another orgasm building. I thought he would stay there, driving me over the edge. But just when I least expected it, he pulled away. He towered above me, giving me a full glorious view of his perfect body. I could see how all of his muscles moved as he thrust himself inside me again and again. He picked up the pace, angling himself even deeper into me. His groans grew weak, broken, and uncontrolled. I wondered if he was going to bring me to orgasm again, but the second the thought crossed my mind, he dropped his fingers to my clit and began moving them in a perfect circular motion to match his rhythm. He stroked me, playing me like an instrument he knew all too well, until he coaxed another crashing wave of ecstasy from deep inside. I tightened around him, feeling as if his own unrestrained grunts of pleasure almost drifted away, getting lost in a far-off tunnel. Everything faded into darkness for a moment as my body tensed. Just as I expected to feel him coming with me, his body hovered over mine, his cheek pressed to my face while the warm skin of our chests touched for the final thrusts. I gripped his face in my hands as his hips rocked against mine with precision and control, guiding us both to climax. He buried his face in my hair, breathing against my ear as we both shuddered through the crippling vibrations of exquisite pleasure. Everything seemed to stand still, and I didn't want the moment to end. Are you doing okay, babe, he rasped softly as he studied my face. Magical, I loved every second of it. Me too, he rumbled and kissed my lips softly. It was incredible. You're an incredible woman. I smiled and stared into his eyes. You're not so bad yourself. We should play truth or dare more often, he said on a chuckle and then kissed me passionately. I didn't know how much time had passed before he pulled away just long enough to toss the condom into the trash. I wasn't ready for it to be over. I thought maybe if I fell asleep fast enough, it would be kind of like hitting the pause button on everything. With him gone, I rolled onto my side and closed my eyes. But the feeling of him returning to the bed beside me, wrapping his arms around me and interlocking his legs with mine felt as wonderful as the sex had. I woke up with a feeling that wasn't foreign to me. That perfect body writhing beneath mine. Her warm skin sliding across mine and the taste of her lips, cherry-flavored lip gloss and the taste of innocence. 
The immediate flood of images and sensations caused an instant hard-on to form against the mattress, sending me rolling over to my back to ease the tension of my morning wood. But as my eyes slowly opened and took in the unfamiliar sight of the ceiling overhead, I shot straight up in bed. I knew the bedding and the curtains that were pulled tight to block out the morning sun. This was my house. But it wasn't my room. I looked over to the red dress tossed on top of the laundry basket, and it all came flooding back to me. The face of the woman in my enticing morning dreams became clear all at once. Laney. I spread my hand over the sheets, reaching for her warm body next to mine, but all I found was an empty half of the bed. A quick glance at my phone said it was 11.20 a.m. The full effects of what had happened didn't hit me until I swung my legs over the side of the bed, slowly standing to stumble toward the door. My anxiety about what Laney and I had done hit at about the same time. It wasn't regret. Oh, no. Far from it. Last night had been the best sex I'd ever had. I'd kissed her like I'd never kissed another woman. I'd touched her and couldn't get enough. But her absence put me on edge. Where the hell was she? Why wasn't she in bed, by my side, snuggled against my chest? I had to find her, morning kiss her, and see what she was up to. We had a few drinks, sure, and it probably wasn't the best time to cross the line with her. But then again, when would it ever be a better time to do that? I smiled to myself as I walked out into the hall. I swore I could still taste her tongue on mine, and my head was filled with the delicious sounds she purred against my ear as I moved inside of her. The softness of her skin, the hungry look in her eyes. The fresh memories weren't doing much to help roar my dick into a semi, but I managed to get it under control well enough to feel okay looking around the apartment. I scratched my stomach and realized I hadn't bothered putting a shirt on. Why would I? I was in nothing but boxers, but surely that was okay now that we'd slept together. The closer I got to the kitchen, I was struck by the invigorating scent of freshly brewed coffee. The simmering sound of something cooking on the stovetop hit my ears. I rounded the corner. All of that wasn't a surprise. Seeing Laney there, completely dressed, makeup and all, shouldn't have surprised me. But for some reason, it did. Before she noticed me, I stood there a moment and watched her flip an omelet in the pan. She was wearing a pair of tight-fitting jeans that made her ass look like a ripe piece of fruit. I wanted to walk right over and take in a big handful of it. Or wrap my arms around her and kiss her neck, taking in the fragrance of her strawberry-scented hair again. Maybe I'd even bend her over in the kitchen for round two. It was still strange to think of her in that way, but the night before I had apparently opened the floodgates of all my feelings about my best friend. Laney turned around to slide the cheesy eggs, olives, and peppers onto a plate, catching sight of me as she did. Oh. She looked down, clearing her throat. Good morning. Huh? My brow wrinkled as I instantly picked up on the change in her demeanor. Good morning. There had been times since she started staying with me that she'd seemed awkward and distant. But this was different. I swallowed hard, wondering if I'd screwed everything up. She refused to look me in the eye, but kept flashing her gaze across my exposed chest. And, she didn't exactly seem happy to see it. Sorry, I would have put a shirt on, but I just assumed since we... Sure, whatever. She cut me off, seeming irritated. I tried to smile through her coldness. Uh... I hope I didn't snow last night. How did you sleep? Are you okay? Great. Yeah, no worries. She shrugged, still refusing to look at me. What the hell? The sinking feeling in my gut grew as reality came crashing down on me. I woke up feeling great. It was obvious Laney did not. Was she expecting me to regret our night together? Did she regret it? Did she regret losing her virginity to me? Hey! Listen. About last night, I started slowly, scratching the back of my scruffy hair. Oh, hey. Don't worry about it, she insisted, wrinkling her face as she waved it off. I didn't like seeing the side of her. The side that made it painfully obvious she was trying too hard to play it cool. I'm not worried about it, I replied in confusion. Should I be? Her shoulders slumped with a heavy sigh, but at least she finally let her eyes drift up to mine. We were drunk, Oliver. I was all hyped up from that acceptance letter, and things got out of hand. That's all it was. Oh. I nodded, my chest tightening more. We weren't that drunk, in fact. A beeping sound started coming from the phone in her pocket. She pulled it out and stared at the screen. Oh, shit. 
I gotta go. Lisa just got back in town. I'm meeting up with her for brunch. But you just made a whole omelet, I said, motioning toward the plate. It's for you. I couldn't help but notice a stinging resentment in her tone. But she gave me no time to react or even thank her before grabbing her purse and racing for the door. Laney, wait! Please, I called after her. I really don't want things to be weird between us. They're not, she said over her shoulder. I just really have to go. The door slammed behind her, and I was left alone again in my empty, silent apartment. What the fuck just happened? Shit. So much for a morning kiss and before work quickie. I scrubbed my hand down my face. It was a harsh reminder of what things would be like when she was gone, which might happen much sooner now that she apparently had gotten what she wanted, me popping her cherry, and now, obviously, hated me. I considered running after her down the hall, asking if we could have dinner tonight. But if there was anything I knew about her, it was that there was a time to push her, and a time to let her breathe. Without a doubt, this time required the latter. Everything the night before leading to the moment I chased after her when she tried to flee to her bedroom had been beautiful. And I knew she'd liked it. There was no way she could have faked the lust in her gaze, the intensity of her touch, the wetness of her pussy. Fuck! If I'd known she'd be storming out the next morning like that, I would have sacrificed all that great sex just to keep things from getting weird. My mind drifted to the sight of her perfect breasts bouncing in front of me as I drove into her. The way she stared up at me and bit her lips, bucking her hips against me. My God, the sounds she made as she came. Okay, so maybe I wasn't so quick to want to give up the memory of all that. But couldn't I have both? Laney said nothing was wrong between us, but fuck that shit, her cold shoulders said otherwise. I considered everything as I stood in the middle of the kitchen, grabbing a fork to dig into the omelet she'd made for me. A peace offering, maybe? Even though I didn't need one. Or maybe some kind of veil to try make it seem like everything was okay when it obviously wasn't? I took the first bite and let out a deep groan. Damn, that's good. I scarfed the whole thing down, feeling even more blindsided with each passing second. Seriously, what the hell had just happened? I was usually the one running from women, not the other way around. Confused and brain dead, I hopped into the shower and tried to wash away the fucked up feeling in my gut. E was grateful for the cool overcast as I walked along the sidewalk to the patio on the side of the cafe where Lisa and I agreed to meet. My skin was already clammy from the anxious feeling in the pit of my stomach. A blistering hot sunny day would not have helped matters in the least. But all of my worries faded for a moment when I saw Lisa's bright smiling face. She was wearing her cute guys? Sorry, I thought you said french fries shirt. A gift I'd bought for her birthday. She lit up at the sight of me and leapt from the small, black iron chair to race over and throw her arms around me in a hug. Jairwurl, she shrieked into my neck. I missed you like hell. She stepped back, holding my hand in the air as she took in my outfit from head to toe. Damn, you look amazing. I know that fire sucked, but I think your wardrobe needed that reset. So do you. Am I crazy, or have you actually tanned? I chuckled, as her normally dark brown skin seemed like it had turned an even darker shade. You're not wrong. I think even my ass crack has somehow tanned. She flashed her perfect white smile as we sat down across from each other at the small table. Her ass crack? She was freaking hilarious. I missed that smile and her flawless ability to own every part of herself with grace. It was the thing about her that I hoped would rub off on me. So, when did you land? I asked before chugging down a big gulp of ice water. This morning. And girl, she groaned. I swear I couldn't get away from Chad fast enough. Just then, a sheepish-looking waitress with thick, black-framed glasses approached our table. Can I interest you ladies in? Alcohol. Quick. Please, Lisa told her immediately, laughing as she did so. She had a way of being blunt without being off-putting. Two Bloody Marys. And two Buddha Bowls. Dressing? House, I said, and Lisa nodded. The waitress smiled sweetly and hurried off. Oh, that actually does sound good. I sighed. Anyway, what happened with Chad? Was it that bad? He didn't, you know, propose? She twisted her lips to the side. 
let's just say, two weeks in another country, being around a guy non-stop is very different from a few sleepovers a week at home. You see a whole new side of each other. Take it from me, if you find someone you think you can spend every freaking day with, without wanting to murder them, you've found the one. What did he do? Trying to control what I drink and eat. She rolled her eyes. He kept asking me, do you really want to have that, and when I said, hell, yes, it's freaking vacation, he wouldn't say anything, but that look. You know, at my stomach and thighs, just to make his point. I couldn't believe it. What a dick. Right? Screw that shit. Nobody's gonna tell me what I can and cannot put into my body. But that's not all, girl. No. He also wanted to tell me what to wear. Nuh-uh. Not with me, mister. She shook her head and rolled her eyes. Damn. He'd really screwed up. Nobody messed with Lisa's wardrobe or her food. The waitress returned with two Bloody Marys and two salad and veggie bowls. I quickly shoved a fork into mine, pushing around one cherry tomato with a frown, trying not to let her words bring Oliver to my mind. What? Lisa stared at me. What is it? Nothing, I mumbled, putting on my best smile. I'm glad you're back. Uh huh, she replied in a skeptical tone. So, how did celebrating with Oliver go last night? I wish you'd been there, I said earnestly, trying to block the images of the night before out of my mind. I knew I wouldn't be able to avoid the topic with Lisa. It was part of why I was so excited to see her, and also why I was dreading it. You're not telling me something, she sang back as she took a big leafy bite of her salad. I let out a heavy sigh and took a big sip of my drink. The spiked tomato juice was even better than I expected it to be as the thick, spicy coolness slid down my throat. I tried not to think about Oliver's sculpted body or how perfect he felt inside of me. I didn't want to give it away, but really, who was I kidding? Lisa didn't miss a beat in picking up on my sly grin. Wait. Did you, her words were cut off with a sharp gasp. Oh, my God. You didn't. Did you two sleep together? I sank down in the chair, shielding my face from the customers at a table nearby who were glaring at us. Shh, keep it down, will you? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I'd be expected to keep quiet when my friend just told me she finally gave up on that V-card with the major hottie she's been crushing on for 12 years. She stomped her feet under the table with a giddy little dance and erupted into a series of yelps, which certainly didn't make the surrounding tables stare any less. Oh, my gosh, will you calm down? Lainey lost her V-card, she sang. I think you're more excited about this than I am. Exactly. So, please tell me what's going on here? Why are we not celebrating? Her eyes grew wide. Oh, my God. Was it bad? Is his, you know, too small? Oh, no, no problems there, I shot back bluntly. My cheeks burned from the memory of just how non-existent of a problem that was. Honestly, it can only be one of those then. She lifted a finger. Too painful? Her second finger. Too big? And the third finger went up. Too boring? At that, she raised a perfectly arched eyebrow. So? No, it was actually, quite nice. Really nice, in fact. Damn, girl. What got into you while I was gone? Besides that popsicle, I mean. I knew you two shared that little accidental kiss, but I can't say I was expecting for the night to evolve into all that. I hear you. I pressed my hands to the table, trying to ground myself. It had been amazing and wonderful and everything I'd ever wanted. You burn down a girl's apartment and throw her into the lion's den, I guess these things are bound to happen, Lisa said with a shrug. I'm just as surprised as you are. Believe me. I need a full report, Missy. Don't leave me hanging. How did this happen? She stared back at me, eyes wide, with bated breath. God, I loved her. Well, we went out. We were dancing, I began slowly. I was having a good time and feeling really good about myself. I guess I kind of let my guard down. A lot. I felt like he got sort of jealous over this guy that was hitting on me. 
And then we danced slow, Oliver leaned in, I thought he was going to kiss me, and the song ended. But, yeah, Lisa pointed her fork in the air. The other guy, who we will definitely come back to. Especially if this whole Oliver thing turns into a shit show. Jealousy is a great motivator, though. But please. Continue. The almost kiss. I lifted my shoulders, my mouth gaping. I struggled to find the words, even though I'd lived it firsthand. I don't know. It all happened so fast. That's never good. No. Not that part of it, I assured her. We got back home, and my adrenaline was still racing. I wasn't ready for bed. So, we played this game of truth or dare, but without the dares. It's not like we drank an ungodly amount of Jaeger shots, no, but apparently, I don't tolerate anything. Blaming it on the alcohol doesn't work this time. And then, well, I asked if he had ever wondered about what it would be like if we hooked up. Phew, damn. I know. That was a ballsy move. She raised her glass at me, and we clinked. So, let me guess. He totally had. I'm not surprised. No way a guy and a girl are friends for that long without letting their brains go there and do all that kinky shit at least once. Actually, he said he hadn't. My heart dropped just saying it, the same way it had in that moment with him on the couch. Oh. It was just a harsh reminder that no matter how perfect Oliver and I may be together, he's always going to write me off because I'm not. Her brow wrinkled as she chewed a bite of her food. Where'd that come from? I haven't heard you say shit like that in years, but we'll return there in a minute. She eyeballed me. I'm confused about where the sex comes in. Well, I might have told him that I wanted him to be my first. Lisa's mouth fell open. She raised her glass, again, this time wordlessly. We clinked again. You go, girl. The smile returned to my face against my will. I got upset and tried to storm off to my room. He wouldn't let me go and then, he kissed me. Oh, how romantic. He's a prince. My eyes glossed over, as if he was right there in front of me, doing it all over again. Yes. And then y'all accidentally stumbled into your bedroom. I nodded. I'll let you piece the rest together from there. She started fanning herself with one hand and clinked her glass at mine a third time. Sounds hot. It was when it was happening, I said, but the thing is, when I woke up next to him this morning, I felt different. I saw him sleeping there, and Lisa, it made me so happy. I can't describe it. It was everything I'd been dreaming of for so long, but, I think, I think he only did it because he felt sorry for me. I shrugged. Bullshit. Lisa glared at me with disapproval. Uh, uh, no. I'm not having any of that kind of thinking at this table. You have to stop that. He's your friend. He respects you. He thinks you're his princess. And obviously, he has some kind of feelings for you, too, or else y'all wouldn't have gone tumbling off into those sheets together. Hell, maybe that's what he's been hoping for ever since he asked you to come stay with him. Hmm. I considered it for a moment. It sounded so nice. He was being all weird about me not hanging out with him and stuff, I thought out loud. But no. I don't think that's it. I think he respects me about as much as any of his other conquests. I love him and all, but he doesn't exactly have the healthiest habits with women. For all I know, in his brain, he gets some kind of bonus points for sleeping with his best friend. Maybe even more points if she's a, I made air quotes, chubby chick. Like he's probably just crossing stuff off his sexual bucket list. You really think that about your best friend, she asked, not seeming convinced. Hell, I hope you don't think like that about me. Oh, no, I. Be careful, girl. In all that talking down about yourself, you're starting to talk down about Oliver, too. Give the guy more credit than that. He's hot as fuck. Not my type, by the way. I like alpha holes, obviously, who make me feel bad. Has Oliver ever made you feel bad about those curves? Hmm. Let me think. He hadn't. Not even once. Ever. 
Oh, you'd remember, she said, raising a brow. And I'd have heard about it. Not even once, am I right? Okay, was she reading my mind? I shook my head. You're right. Never. I guess you have a point. Sure, he's a ladies' man. But be honest. That's the reason why you like him. No woman likes the boring ass shit looser brat. But it's not like he's out there lying to these women or pretending these little flings will be any more than that. Which is more than I can say for a handful of my exes. I guess you have another point. So, what about this morning? Did you guys talk about it? Ugh. This morning, I groaned, burying my face in my hands. It was so awkward. I just couldn't bear to hear him give me the whole, that was a mistake, speech. So, I beat him to the punch. You ran out? I know, real mature. What if he wasn't going to say that? She stared at me. Do you even know? Oh, he was. But you don't think it was a mistake? Maybe it was. I mean, if it messes things up between us, I definitely don't want that. I pushed around the clumps of carrots drenched in the leftover dressing at the bottom of my bowl, feeling like the sky was getting even darker. Or maybe it was just how I felt inside at the prospect of losing Oliver as my friend. Or, maybe, it was inevitable. Huh? I snapped back from my thoughts. What do you mean? Come on. You know I'm not some crazy believer in fate and destiny, but sometimes things do happen for a reason, she argued. Oliver was the popular jock with a rich family in high school. You lived in the suburbs with your dad, and everyone bullied you. What are the odds that you two would not only become friends, but that you'd stay friends all this time? Don't you think it's possible that this kind of thing has crossed Oliver's mind a few times, even if only subconsciously? Maybe he's just so scared of commitment he doesn't want to admit to how he really feels about you. Because with you, he knows it'd be different than all his meaningless flings. No, it's not like that. I shook my head. I know better. Look, I just need to put things back to normal. I can go out and find a ton of other guys to fool around with and date. At least I'm not a virgin anymore. But Oliver, I can't risk losing him. So, if we just have to be friends, then that's what we'll be. Suit yourself. She tilted her head with a doubtful expression. But once you open that can of worms, it might be kind of hard to put everything back in. Her words sounded ominous. Maybe because I knew they rang true. But I didn't want to lose hope that everything could just go back to the way it was with Oliver. As much as I thought all those years of unrequited love and lust were torture, nothing compared to the sickness I felt inside at the thought of losing him as a friend just because of one dumb mistake. Suddenly, everything before last night seemed incredibly simple. I kept everything bottled up inside. No one got hurt. Well, maybe I did a little at a time. But Oliver didn't know that or do it on purpose, and he usually found ways to unknowingly make up for it. I turned back to Lisa, desperate for an escape. She leaned forward, clearly noticing something was up. Honeybun, speaking of a can of worms, you better not think of running and moving in with me. Well, I was wondering about that, but I don't know if that would be the right move now. It wouldn't, she said. Your ass better stay where it is, or you can kiss that friendship. Goodbye. She grabbed my hand and squeezed. All jokes aside, Sug. If you need a place to stay, you can come knocking anytime. I wanted to think about literally anything else other than Oliver and me. Hey, are you up for some shopping? I asked. I've gotten pretty good at trying new things after this whole wardrobe being burnt to a crisp fiasco. Oh, and this is for you. I reached inside my purse to get Lisa's gift bag and then handed her the pink shirt. She opened the gift and Belly laughed when she read the letters printed on it. Bra off. Hair up. Sweats on. They were bold and white and freaking hilarious. Oh, my goodness, she shrieked, holding the t-shirt up to her chest with a beaming smile. That's so me. I've been wanting this one. Thanks, girl. Wait, I've got something for you, too. She winked and produced a gift from beneath the table. Sneaky, sneaky. Hurry up and open it. 
I tossed the paper from the gift bag only to find a brand new notepad and matching pen, she'd clearly gotten on her mini Vaki with Aruba's logo and the words, son of a beach. I burst out laughing and reached over and hugged her. I love them. They're perfect. Son of a beach. I'm dying, I couldn't stop laughing, and it was infectious. She cracked up, too, to the point people were staring. Who cared? Once our cackling asses calmed down and put our gifts in our purses, I had to tell her about my new fashion ideas and get her expertise. I'm dying to get your opinion on some new looks I've had my eye on. Girl, you know I'm never gonna say no to shopping, she quipped, waving down the waitress for the checks. But you have to do just one tiny little thing for me in return. Oh. What's that? Her eyes lit up with a devilish spark. How big was it? How big was WH, uh huh. I giggled and rolled my eyes. Let's just say, if I was a man, and I was packing that kind of heat, I'd be a total slut, too. Lisa seemed pleased with a dreamy look in her eyes. Yeah, men should be obligated to share that gift with as many people as possible before they settle down. Good thing he was your first. I don't even want to think back on Shrimp Tom. Shrimp Tom? She rolled her eyes. Oh, don't remind me. How big is Chad? Oh, his is seven inches and a quarter. Soft. You measured it? Of course. How else would I know? You haven't measured Oliver's? Um, no. Can you imagine the look on his face? I asked and then added my mock conversation, hey, there, Oliver. Hang on. Stay still and don't move. Yeah, stay vertical. I've got to get a measuring tape. Be right back. I almost fell out of my chair fighting a case of the giggle snorts and continued in my best Oliver impression. What? Why? Well, you know, need the details, people are gonna wonder. I finished and held my belly as I giggle snorted. Laughing, we signed our checks and threw down some cash for a tip before walking down the sidewalk together, arm in arm. I couldn't resist gushing about everything else I'd learned while she'd been away. Speaking of which, I totally found out his number. Like the number of people he slept with. Thank the heavens. She tossed her head back and squealed. If I'd known you had all this juicy tea waiting for me, I would have made you pick me up from the airport just so I could get it all that much sooner. So, how many? The rush of riding my bike down a long stretch of open highway was exactly what I needed to clear my head. For three blissful hours, all I could think about was the scenery around me and the ice-cold beer that waited for me at our destination. I was relieved and ready for air conditioning by the time the big red and white sign appeared on the horizon. Miles and Damon pulled into the parking lot with me following close behind. But the moment the roar of my engine cut off, I was met with that same sinking feeling in my gut. Fuck. Laney. I took off my helmet and raked the hand down my face. I needed to try and take my mind off her for a while, hang out with the guys, and maybe, nah, fuck that. I wouldn't be talking to Miles about this shit. It'd be nice if I could, though. I shook my head to clear my thoughts and walked toward the door. Beer. Maybe coffee. Whatever. Susie's tipsy motor shack in Providence was a dark, smoky, hole in the wall, with neon beer signs covering the walls. It was an infamous biker spot with all the sprawling countryside roads surrounding it. Other bikers like us would spend their Saturday afternoons taking in the view and feeling the wind in their hair, then rest up at Susie's before driving back into the city. Most of them got sloppy-ass drunk and headed back home around noon the next day. I was smacked in the face with smoke the moment I stepped inside finding Damon and Miles settled in our usual spot. There were clusters of smaller groups, laughing together or eyeing women dancing in their booths. A wall of slot machines, a couple pool tables, and a few places for playing cards, Susie's pretty much had everything a place like this needed. I walked over to the guys at our table in the back where they just started playing darts and getting ready to order food. Hey, bro, nice of you to make it in. Miles smirked. Ready to get your ass kicked? Ready for a jump punch? I grinned, slinging my jacket over the back of my chair. Damon. I nodded. Hey, man. So, what'll it be? But I didn't get a chance to answer. Our waitress, Babs, strolled right over with her signature beehive cherry red hair. 
Her voice was thick and raspy from years of smoking, but she was always a sweetheart. What can I get for my favorite boys today? She croaked, popping her pink chewing gum as she filled our mugs up with beer. Oh, Babs. Miles leaned back in his chair with a wink. Don't try and fool me. I know you're in here telling all the guys they're your favorites. Then maybe just don't listen to me talk to the other guys in here. Watch you don't know won't hurt you, she teased with a wheezy laugh. We'll have the usual. Thanks. Damon handed her our stack of menus, which he'd already collected from the table. Coming right up. Babs knew me all too well and left another cup sitting on the table just in case I wanted some coffee later. I stared into my mug of beer and couldn't help but think how the light tan shade resembled Laney's skin. What the fuck? Where the hell did that even come from? I sounded like a fucking moron. I was ordering a dark amber ale. This was bullshit. What's gotten into you, man? Miles interrupted me, yet again. Ah, uh, nothing. I shook my head and tried to act normal, but they kept staring at me. I knew they wouldn't let me off the hook. Guessed I'd be talking to my brother after all. Fucking perfect. Well, okay. Something might have happened last night. And it's got me all fucked up in the head. Damon sat straight up and leaned toward me from across the table. Did you get her pregnant? Do you need an attorney? Miles asked. No, nothing like that. I chuckled, trying to feel relieved. But the truth felt even more gut-wrenching than any legal trouble. At least anything like that could theoretically be sorted out with money. But things with Laney, not so simple. You know how Laney's been staying at my place while her building's under renovation? Miles slammed down his beer mug. I knew it. I knew it. He turned to Damon. Dude, didn't I tell you it'd only be a matter of time? I blinked. You told him what would be a matter of time. You fucked her. Miles said, loud as hell. Damon and I both hissed, trying to get him to quiet the fuck down. Don't talk about her like that, I growled. Like what? He held his hands up defensively. Did you, or didn't you? Yeah. But Jesus, don't say it like that. She's my friend, and I don't know. Just don't say it like that, man. She's not like one of my hookups. This is Laney. Miles tilted his head toward Damon, raising his brows like they knew something I didn't. They were probably thinking it wasn't like talking about fucking women had ever bothered me before, but saying that about Laney felt different. It didn't feel right. What we did last night, I sighed, spearing my fingers through my hair. It was more than just fucking. That's all I'm saying. Miles just chuckled, leaving Damon to be the one to reply. So, now what? You've been friends for so long. Does this make it an insta relationship? No! I shot back too quickly. Absolutely not. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. You know, there's a gray area between fucking and making love, or making love and being in love. I rubbed the back of my neck. I didn't even know if what I'd said made sense. At least I think there is. Anyway, she got fucking weird when I saw her this morning. Awkward. So, maybe things will just go back to the way they were. I shrugged. Hell, if I know what goes through a woman's mind. Miles smirked. Maybe you didn't hit it like she wanted. You know what? Fuck you. Hey, chill, bro. Take it easy. Whatever, man. And this was why I didn't want to talk to Miles. Fuck her. But what I'd said didn't seem right. Because I knew Laney well enough that if I really thought about it, I could usually guess what she was thinking. Maybe this time I'd read her signals all wrong? But something else was up, something she was hiding. I just needed to figure it out. Fuck. I'd never been in a situation like this before, and honestly, I didn't know how to act. Do you want things to go back to the way they were? Damon was the planner, never wanting to leave loose ends. Just friends? No more sex? I nodded, weighing my options. Friends? Absolutely. Non-negotiable. We'd been friends too many years to let anything come between us. Sex? Thinking back on last night, it wasn't something I really wanted to lose, either. Far from it. Hard no. I'd race home and fuck her again if she wanted me to. Damn it. I sounded like a sappy motherfucker. But as far as where that left us, I wasn't sure if I was ready to face that yet. 
You've got to talk to her. Damon demanded as Babs returned with our plates. That's the answer to 99% of your troubles with women right there, she chimed in. But it also seems to be the thing you boys suck at the most. I gave her a tight smile. Thanks, Babs. The moment she was gone, Miles couldn't wait to throw in his two cents. Talking about it is the least sexy thing you could do. Women like strong and silent types. They like reading our minds. It keeps them guessing, or they'll get bored. It's simple, bro. Damon cut his eyes over to him. You've never stayed with a woman long enough for her to have a chance to get bored. Yeah, so? That's how I live my life. He shrugged. And I thought that's how my brother was, too. But, crossing that line with a friend? He shook his head. I would not want to be in your shoes, bro too fucking complicated. The rush of riding my bike down a long stretch of open highway was exactly what I needed to clear my head. For three blissful hours, all I could think about was the scenery around me and the ice-cold beer that waited for me at our destination. I was relieved and ready for air conditioning by the time the big red and white sign appeared on the horizon. Miles and Damon pulled into the parking lot with me following close behind. But the moment the roar of my engine cut off, I was met with that same sinking feeling in my gut. Fuck! Laney. I took off my helmet and raked the hand down my face. I needed to try and take my mind off her for a while, hang out with the guys, and maybe, nah, fuck that. I wouldn't be talking to Miles about this shit. It'd be nice if I could, though. I shook my head to clear my thoughts and walked toward the door. Beer. Maybe coffee. Whatever. Susie's tipsy motor shack in Providence was a dark, smoky, hole in the wall, with neon beer signs covering the walls. It was an infamous biker spot with all the sprawling countryside roads surrounding it. Other bikers like us would spend their Saturday afternoons taking in the view and feeling the wind in their hair, then rest up at Susie's before driving back into the city. Most of them got sloppy-ass drunk and headed back home around noon the next day. I was smacked in the face with smoke the moment I stepped inside, finding Damon and Miles settled in our usual spot. There were clusters of smaller groups, laughing together or eyeing women dancing in their booths. A wall of slot machines, a couple pool tables, and a few places for playing cards, Susie's pretty much had everything a place like this needed. I walked over to the guys at our table in the back where they just started playing darts and getting ready to order food. Hey, bro, nice of you to make it in. Miles smirked. Ready to get your ass kicked? Ready for a jump punch? I grinned, slinging my jacket over the back of my chair. Damon. I nodded. Hey, man. So, what'll it be? But I didn't get a chance to answer. Our waitress, Babs, strolled right over with her signature beehive cherry red hair. Her voice was thick and raspy from years of smoking but she was always a sweetheart. What can I get for my favorite boys today? She croaked, popping her pink chewing gum as she filled our mugs up with beer. Oh, Babs. Miles leaned back in his chair with a wink. Don't try and fool me. I know you're in here telling all the guys they're your favorites. Then maybe just don't listen to me talk to the other guys in here. Watch you don't know won't hurt you, she teased with a wheezy laugh. We'll have the usual. Thanks. Damon handed her our stack of menus, which he'd already collected from the table. Coming right up. Babs knew me all too well and left another cup sitting on the table just in case I wanted some coffee later. I stared into my mug of beer and couldn't help but think how the light tan shade resembled Laney's skin. What the fuck? Where the hell did that even come from? I sounded like a fucking moron. I was ordering a dark amber ale. This was bullshit. What's gotten into you, man? Miles interrupted me, yet again. Ah, uh, nothing. I shook my head and tried to act normal, but they kept staring at me. I knew they wouldn't let me off the hook. Guessed I'd be talking to my brother after all. Fucking perfect. Well, okay. Something might have happened last night. And it's got me all fucked up in the head. Damon sat straight up and leaned toward me from across the table. Did you get her pregnant? Do you need an attorney? Miles asked. No, nothing like that. I chuckled, trying to feel relieved. But the truth felt even more gut-wrenching than any legal trouble. At least anything like that could theoretically be sorted out with money. But things with Laney, not so simple. You know how Laney's been staying in my place while her building's under renovation? Miles slammed down his beer mug. I knew it. 
I knew it. He turned to Damon. Dude, didn't I tell you it'd only be a matter of time? I blinked. You told him what would be a matter of time. You fucked her. Miles said, loud as hell. Damon and I both hissed, trying to get him to quiet the fuck down. Don't talk about her like that, I growled. Like what? He held his hands up defensively. Did you, or didn't you? Yeah. But Jesus, don't say it like that. She's my friend, and, I don't know. Just don't say it like that, man. She's not like one of my hookups. This is Laney. Miles tilted his head toward Damon, raising his brows like they knew something I didn't. They were probably thinking it wasn't like talking about fucking women had ever bothered me before, but saying that about Laney felt different. It didn't feel right. What we did last night, I sighed, spearing my fingers through my hair. It was more than just fucking. That's all I'm saying. Miles just chuckled, leaving Damon to be the one to reply. So, now what? You've been friends for so long. Does this make it an insta relationship? No! I shot back too quickly. Absolutely not. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. You know, there's a gray area between fucking and making love, or making love and being in love. I rubbed the back of my neck. I didn't even know if what I'd said made sense. At least I think there is. Anyway, she got fucking weird when I saw her this morning. Awkward. So, maybe things will just go back to the way they were. I shrugged. Hell, if I know what goes through a woman's mind. Miles smirked. Maybe you didn't hit it like she wanted. You know what? Fuck you. Hey, chill, bro. Take it easy. Whatever, man. And this was why I didn't want to talk to Miles. Fuck her. But what I'd said didn't seem right. Because I knew Laney well enough that if I really thought about it, I could usually guess what she was thinking. Maybe this time I'd read her signals all wrong? But something else was up, something she was hiding. I just needed to figure it out. Fuck. I'd never been in a situation like this before, and honestly, I didn't know how to act. Do you want things to go back to the way they were? Damon was the planner, never wanting to leave loose ends. Just friends? No more sex? I nodded, weighing my options. Friends? Absolutely. Non-negotiable. We'd been friends too many years to let anything come between us. Sex? Thinking back on last night, it wasn't something I really wanted to lose, either. Far from it. Hard no. I'd race home and fuck her again if she wanted me to. Damn it. I sounded like a sappy motherfucker. But as far as where that left us, I wasn't sure if I was ready to face that yet. You've got to talk to her, Damon demanded as Babs returned with our plates. That's the answer to 99% of your troubles with women right there, she chimed in. But it also seems to be the thing you boys suck at the most. I gave her a tight smile. Thanks, Babs. The moment she was gone, Miles couldn't wait to throw in his two cents. Talking about it is the least sexy thing you could do. Women like strong and silent types. They like reading our minds. It keeps them guessing, or they'll get bored. It's simple, bro. Damon cut his eyes over to him. You've never stayed with a woman long enough for her to have a chance to get bored. Yeah, so? That's how I live my life. He shrugged. And I thought that's how my brother was, too. But, crossing that line with a friend? He shook his head. I would not want to be in your shoes, bro too fucking complicated. No shit, I groaned. But, here I am. Yeah, fucked in the head. Miles told me with a smirk, stating the obvious. Maybe you're right, Damon. Maybe I just need to try and talk to her again. I mean, we talk about everything else. That's why I don't sign up for female friendships unless it's friends with Ben's only, or hit it and quit it, Miles added. Otherwise, it gets too fucking messy if you try to add that shit later. Nobody's got time for that fucking drama. It's not a business contract, Damon argued before turning back to me. Anyway... So you talk to her? What are you going to say if you don't know what you want out of it? I raked my hand down my face. He had a point. The thought of being in a relationship hadn't crossed my mind. But Laney and I were already so close. The sex had been fucking amazing. Even though we'd accidentally already crossed that line, and she hadn't admitted to wanting to do it again. But hell, she'd given me her virginity, asked me to take it, 
but I wasn't about to tell the guys that. I had this sneaking suspicion she was either lying to me or lying to herself. Maybe both. But what if she wasn't lying? What if she didn't want me? I say you talk and have one more hot night together, hit it real good, then forget all about it. Miles waved his hand with a shitty eating grin. He was such an asshole. Huh? Damon stared at him like he was crazy. Why one more night? That's just going to make things worse. The first time they fucked, Miles looked at me and shrugged, dude, calling a spade a spade. Anyway, it wasn't planned. They can fuck again, get it out of their system, knowing it's their last time and then really move on. He sat back with another damn smirk and took a swig of his beer. What the fuck? Damon glared at him and shook his head. Dude. Or, I could just let things happen, you know, see where it goes from there. I took a drink of my beer. We have to talk eventually. We live in the same fucking house. The words made sense. A hell of a lot more sense than Miles did. But then again, his idea did leave room for one more night of those lips, her tits, that ass. My dick pressed against my fly just thinking about it. Whatever you think's best. All right, enough talking about Laney. We finished our food, not playing one game of darts as planned making sure to tip Babs well like we always did, and got back on our bikes. The sun was hanging low in the sky by the time we got back into the city. I took a deep breath to brace myself before walking into the apartment, just in case Laney was home. Just act casual. Like nothing happened, and nothing will ever happen again. I slid the key into the lock and turned it, opening the door slowly. I prepared myself for the possibility of running into Laney when I walked in, but not literally. The moment I stepped inside, I was hit with the blur of a body and what felt like soft breasts crashing against my chest. Looking down, I saw Laney's stunned face staring up at me, with her purse, phone, and keys clenched in her hands. Her big bright green eyes cut through me like a knife, followed by those pink, kissable lips. I felt like I could lean down right then and taste her all over again. All my resolve was shattered in an instant. She tensed up and steadied herself back on her feet, flashing an awkward smile. Oh, hey. I'm sorry about that. Didn't see you. I was just heading out. Oh, yeah? I nodded. Where you headed? That's a thing I would have asked before we slept together, right? A totally innocent, friendly question. To my dad's. He invited me over for dinner, she explained, seeming only slightly more at ease than she had that morning. I haven't seen him since everything happened with my apartment, and you know how he gets. Plus, with the PhD thing, he wanted to celebrate with me. Cool. My head kept nodding incessantly as an awkward silence fell between us. God, what was I, twelve? Well, all right. Uh, have a good time. Tell him I said hi. Cool, she echoed back. There was an odd shuffle between us as she slipped past me, her breasts brushing against my chest, sending another signal to my dick. But just as she reached the doorway, I stopped her. Hey, do you want me to come? The prospect of seeing her dad after what I'd done to her innocent body the night before sounded awful. But the promise of us acting like good old friends again was exactly what we needed. Sure, yeah, she said, but her expression was unreadable. Really? I asked, surprised she'd agree. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. If it's okay with you, tag along. I wouldn't have asked if I wasn't okay with it, I told her with a wink. She smirked, pushing a strand of hair behind her ear. I knew that bashful smile, and it gave her away. She really wasn't sure she was okay with it or not, but she, like me, was grasping for straws and clearing the air between us. I should change. I glanced down at the t-shirt and blue jeans I'd worn for the ride today. No, it's fine. Just a casual dinner. The three of us. She shrugged. No big deal. Yeah but I've been up riding in it and probably smell. Give me a few to clean up and change. All right. Laney walked to the kitchen and took a seat. I'll just wait here. Hurry up, princess. Ah. I've got your princess. I chuckled and headed to my room. Well, she was joking with me. That was a good start. In my bathroom, I took the quickest shower known to man and dressed in a navy button-down shirt and dark jeans. Boots in hand, I walked out to greet Laney in the kitchen. Quick enough for you? She eyed what I was wearing. 
I guess so. If you're going to wear that. She tried to hide her smirk. Those shoes, though. Staring at her, I remembered the day I'd taken her to the driving range and made her change her pretty pink heels. Paybacks. Ha. Ah. Would you rather I wear something pink, cause that's not happening? Laney burst out laughing and stood from the table. Get your shoes on, sweat stain. Ah, there it is, my favorite term of endearment. I shook my head and did as she said. Nerdy birdie. I smiled and followed her out the door. The elevator ride down was silent, but not as silent as the long, tortuous drive to her dad's place just outside the city. It seemed our playful banter had shifted again. I opted for one of my drivers to take us when I remembered how dinners at her dad's usually involved several bottles of wine. And he would never let me leave with his precious baby girl in my car after we had a few drinks. We'd have to call a cab. I was not about to sleep at his place with everything that was going on between us. Every time I glanced over at her in the darkness of the back seat, I racked my brain for something to say. But as much as I wanted nothing to have changed, it was too late. Now when I looked at her, all I could think to do was compliment her or talk to her the way I would any other woman I was interested in. Unless Laney initiated the conversation. How fucked up was that? She'd started our usual teasing back and forth in the kitchen before we left, and I had to admit, I loved it, but now I couldn't think of a damn thing to say. I was fucked. I could only hope things would settle back to our normal over dinner. She smiled at me awkwardly as we approached the doorstep of her father's two-story suburban home the same house she'd grown up in. I remembered it well from high school. Mr. Carter answered within seconds, like he'd been waiting for us by the door. He immediately scooped Laney into his arms for a big bear hug. His body towered over hers at well over six feet. The years had packed a lot onto his gut, but his legs were skinny and long as ever. Oh, my baby girl. He grinned and kissed her hair, like they hadn't seen each other for years. But I knew it couldn't have been more than a month. I've been worried sick about you. You look thinner. Do you get enough to eat? I'm fine, Dad, she groaned, prying herself from his arms. He turned to me with his warm smile, red cheeks, and salt and peppered hair. Oliver, is it ever good to see you? He pulled me in for a hug, too, patting my shoulders. Good to see you as well, Mr. Carter. Oh, none of that. Your family. You know to call me Mark. He patted my shoulder again before ushering us inside. Since we're celebrating, I put a bottle of champagne on ice. But my bar's always stocked. I don't drink much these days unless I'm having company over, which doesn't seem to happen often. He shot Laney an accusing stare. Dad, come on. You know I visit as often as I can. I'm busy with work, and you're 45 minutes outside the city. She is a workaholic. I slid my hands in my pockets. I had to beg her just to take a few days off work after the fire. Her eyes grew wide as she glared at me, begging me to stop talking. But Mark knew exactly what I was talking about. I believe it. She's always been that way. He chuckled. Gosh, Oliver, I just can't thank you enough for taking such good care of my baby girl. There it was. I almost choked on my saliva. Yep. I needed a drink. Or three. Laney cleared her throat, her cheeks glowing bright pink. So, Dad, how's dinner coming along? Need help with anything? You know I always do. Your mother was the better cook. Come with me into the kitchen. Oliver, the champagne's on the table, but there's a bottle of bourbon right over there. Help yourself. Make yourself at home. You know the drill. Laney flashed her eyes at me over her shoulder just before they vanished behind the swinging doors into the kitchen. It had to be strange for her, having me around under the circumstances. Normally, she'd drag me along to visit her dad so we could laugh about him behind his back, in a mildly annoyed, but mostly adoring sort of way. I was like her refuge from his predictable, overprotective ways. But now her refuge had been infiltrated by all the lingering feelings from the night before. I went back to hoping that dinner would help and poured myself a glass of bourbon, before roaming the entry hallway to admire the pictures of Laney when she was little. I'd seen them a hundred times, but they still never failed to make me smile. There were even a few of us together. I glanced over each one, reminding myself how important it was to make things right between us, even if it meant never being able to sleep with her again. She was practically like family to me, just as her father had said. 
I couldn't let that slip through my fingers. Not just because of one fucking perfect night. My dad was as chipper as ever, whistling around the kitchen as he seasoned the pot of pasta sauce on the stove top. I smiled up at him as I threw a handful of cherry tomatoes into the big bowl of salad in front of me. Go on and spit it out, dad. I see that look in your eyes, and I know you're just bursting at the seams to say something. He glanced at me over his shoulder with a sly smile. Oh, nothing. He shrugged. It's just, you and Oliver, eh? He waggled his eyebrows. Stop that, I said. Maybe this fire tragedy has a silver lining after all. I brought him here as my friend. Just like it's been every other time before. I see the way he looks at you, he argued. It reminds me of the way your mother and I used to look at each other. My eyes teared up instantly, like they usually did when my dad mentioned my mom. They'd had the perfect marriage full of love, and it was such a shame that their time together had been cut short. I felt the pain of growing up from age five without my mom, but I also felt my dad's pain of losing the love of his life. He'd never seen anybody seriously since she passed. Well, I'm here tonight so we can celebrate my career and this new PhD journey, I said. Not to gossip about boys. Can't I dream about my girl having it all? He gave me a wide smile. The career, Mr. Wright, and maybe a few grandchildren to follow? Oh, my God. Am I having deja vu? I have to get out of here, no kids until after I finish my PhD program and get my dissertation published. I filled my arms with the salad bowl and a stack of plates, preparing to cart it all out to the dining table. Oh, and I'll have to find a husband, too. Because, I hate to break this to you for the millionth time, it's not going to be Oliver. What's not going to be Oliver? Oliver appeared suddenly. He startled me so much that I nearly dropped everything. My muscle memory had learned from the whole pan of eggs sent flying during my singing performance disaster. I managed to balance the load in my arms so the stack of plates didn't shatter across the floor, and so we wouldn't all be caught in a downpour of lettuce and veggies. But I wasn't able to save a few of the small ripe tomatoes from sliding out of the bowl. They went flying off in every direction like little bouncy balls. Oh, crap, I said. Let me go set this stuff down, and I'll... No, here. Oliver stepped closer. I've got you. He poised himself in front of me to transfer everything into his arms and then headed back out to the dining table. I tried to ignore the smug expression from my dad who thought any basic act of decency from Oliver was a sign that we were destined to be together. Quit looking at me like that, I said. He's used to dealing with my clumsiness. And anyway, if he wasn't here, you would have stepped up to help me just the same. Anybody would have. It doesn't make him some knight in shining armor. I confidently spun on my heels only to feel something mushy under my foot. It sent my right leg sliding out from under me, and the next thing I knew, I was midair, dangerously close to falling flat on my ass. I winced in anticipation of hitting the floor, but suddenly my weight caught on a pair of strong arms. My gaze drifted up to find Oliver towering above me, gripping me tight. Whoa, easy there. He stared down at me with a chuckle. See, I told you, Elaine, my dad chimed in. This guy is always around to save you and grant you any wish. What kind of father wouldn't want that for his daughter? I was suspended backward with his arms wrapped around my waist, just like we were gearing up for some kind of fairy tale kiss. Just great. Like my dad needed even more encouragement. Thanks. I laughed nervously and pulled myself up to my feet before straightening my clothes. I didn't need the encouragement, either. I'd agreed to bring Oliver along to help put the other night behind us so I could let go of all my ridiculous fantasies about our future once and for all. I certainly didn't bring him along to make things worse. My dad gave us the happiest smile. Well, let's eat, shall we? I just turned in my damp sheets, unsure if the temperature of my room was rising with the sun beating in through the windows, or if it was just my sleep-deprived sex-thirsty state. Probably the latter. Definitely the latter. It had been a week now since Laney and I had sex, and I still hadn't been able to stop thinking about it. How pathetic. No woman to date had ever managed to work their way beneath my skin so deep. What the fuck was wrong with me? And more importantly, why the hell didn't she crave any of it? I reached for my phone on the nightstand, noting the time. 
It was afternoon on a Saturday, and I was stretched out in my bed, apparently avoiding the outside world because, pathetic loser. Every night when I tried to go to sleep, I was plagued by the same memories. That one taste of her had left me wanting more, and nothing I did seemed to shake it. Maybe I stood a better chance at taking a nap, but that wasn't proving to be any more of a success than the nights had been. Accepting defeat, I rolled out of bed and hopped into the shower. I needed something to get me out of this fog. As I lathered my body under the streaming hot water, I scanned my brain for all my go-to distractions. Banging another chick? Not even an option. I could go to the rock climbing gym or maybe take the bike out for a spin. Anything to get my adrenaline pumping and push these thoughts of her out of my brain. Aside from the broken film reel playing on repeat in my head, everything else had gone back to normal. The dinner at her dad's house had worked as a sort of reset button for us. We had dinner a few times together in the evenings, and even had another movie night. Although she did sit as far away from me on the couch as possible, acting like I had the fucking plague. Even as she squirmed and flinched at the goriest parts of the movie, she resisted jumping into my arms for comfort. I supposed I could live with that as long as she was still talking to me and acting like my old friend. When I tried to talk to her about it, she insisted that we were just friends and stopped any further discussion. Fuck! I got dressed and braced myself to walk out of my room. Not only had I never been so thrown by a woman, but I'd certainly never lived with a woman who'd put me in that state. Who also happened to be the very person I'd turned to for advice about this kind of situation. Every time I went through the living room or kitchen, it was like walking through a minefield. I never knew when I might see her dancing in the kitchen, watching TV on the couch, or reading a book by the window. The only thing that jolted me more than running into her and having to pretend like everything was fine was not seeing her and wondering where she was, or what she was doing. I wished I could just tell her the extent of how I felt without worrying it would ruin everything. Turning the door handle, I stepped out, and was met with an empty and silent apartment. I checked for a note. Nothing. Just warm coffee and a few homemade, wrapped up muffins. Sighing with disappointment and relief at the same time, I headed out the door. I climbed into my Porsche and drove around aimlessly. After about twenty minutes, I found myself drifting to the same driving range I'd taken Laney to. Why had I been so insistent on forcing her to hang out with me? Did some part of me want us to eventually sleep together? Was I just trying to put those forces into motion? My restless mind dragged me out of my car. I walked along the edge of the field and thought back on that afternoon when we were there together. I remembered how sexy she'd looked that day, even though I hadn't wanted to admit it. How excited she'd been when she got in a good swing. The brief, awkward moment when we almost kissed. Even then, things seemed to be different between us. There had been a new kind of sexual tension that had built up, one I wasn't ready to admit to yet. But looking back on it then, I could see how it was only a matter of time before things exploded. I was plagued with questions like, why now? Why had I blocked her out for so long? After all this time, why was I only just now seeing her in this light? Or had some part of me always wanted her in that way? It seemed like the only way to find out was to have her again, but that was the exact thing she wanted to avoid. I practiced my swing for a while before heading home. The moment I opened my front door, I was hit with the floral, apple scent that drifted through the apartment. Laney was taking a shower. It inspired instant visuals of her naked body underneath the steaming hot water, the water dripping down the curves of her skin. Her eyes closed with her head back, just as she'd been when I was inside her. My throat grew tight and dry as I tried to swallow it all down. The water had stopped. A figure caught in the corner of my eye. My head turned to see Laney sitting down on the window seat with her wet hair, but she didn't seem to hear me come in. She was in nothing but a towel, and she leaned against the glass, staring out over the city with a dreamy look in her eyes. Her arms were crossed with her legs tucked underneath her. My gaze followed the curve of her knee, up her thigh, to the shadow just beneath the towel where I could see the hint of her cherry. I wanted to bite and kiss every inch of that glowing skin until she was squirming and moaning in my arms again. I stood there for a moment, steadying her soft features as she stared at the view of the buildings below. I tried to stay firmly planted, resisting the urge to march right up to her and sweep her into my arms. If you touch her, if anything else happens, it'll just put you both right back where you started. Every time you cross that line, you risk losing your best friend. It wasn't just about sex. I mean, it was but I also wanted to know what she was thinking about, how her day had been, what ideas she'd come up with. I wanted so many things right then, in that moment, that I could hardly breathe. 
She turned her head when she finally noticed me. The gentle smile that formed on her lips wasn't helping matters, either. I wanted to kiss along the curve and feel those lips part as my tongue slid into her mouth. Hey, what's up? She asked innocently, moving her hand to adjust the towel. Her brow furrowed as she noticed the strained expression on my face. I wanted to say something, but I came up empty. I didn't have any words left, and the urges in my body were bubbling over to the point where I couldn't take it anymore. I knew I needed to talk myself out of what I was about to do, but I was running out of strength. My feet started moving forward beyond my control. The magnetism between us was too strong to fight anymore. I let myself be pulled toward her until I was close enough to slide my hands under her legs and lift her up into my arms. I needed to be in her now, deep and hard. She kicked and giggled. Oliver! What are you doing? Put me down! I'll hurt you. I froze in the middle of the floor and stared intently into her eyes. I should put her over my knees. I can't listen to you talk like that anymore, Laney. Do I have to fuck it out of you? With that, I kicked open the door to my bedroom and tossed her down onto the comforter. I moved over her, supporting my weight on my elbows. From this day on, you won't say another word about your beautiful body. I smoothed my hand along the length of her. With one tug, I removed her towel, her naked body in front of me. You're fucking perfect. It stopped laughing when I looked into Oliver's eyes and saw just how serious he was. His gaze was filled with a hunger that only solidified his words. He wasn't just telling me my body was perfect. He truly believed it, and I believed what he'd said. His lips crashed against mine, parting them with his tongue. Within seconds of losing myself there, I felt the cool air of his bedroom drifting over my skin. The chill across my chest was quickly remedied by his hot mouth, sucking my nipples one at a time. He drew away, taking a step back to admire my body again. A slight smile curved the corner of his mouth, and I could see the evidence of his arousal standing firmly beneath his pants. And I'm going to fuck this bullshit you keep telling yourself out of you, starting today. His words came out as a growl. Yes, please, a tiny voice whispered in my mind. I could only nod and lick my lips. He lowered his body over mine again and kissed my face. My heart pounded as his hand spread across my shoulders. I relished his scent and the feeling of his palms sliding down my skin. It was slower and more intentional than the first time. My brain screamed that we needed to stop. This was a terrible idea. But all my reasoning rapidly flew out the window. I didn't have the willpower to fight it when he was already so close, with our tongues tangled together in the perfect dance. I moaned with the feeling of him, rock hard and pulsing in my grip. I wrapped my hand around his girth to tease him, which sent his other hand clawing into the skin of my thigh. My head fell back against the pillow in surrender as he trailed kisses down to my center. His lips brushed against me, filling me with so much warmth and wetness I thought I might explode. I felt myself opening up for him, desperate to be filled with so much more. He nibbled along my inner thigh and stared up, his eyes burning into me. You're so fucking beautiful. I'm sorry if anybody ever made you doubt that, if I ever made you doubt it. God, I haven't stopped thinking about you since the last time. Everything inside of me twisted and turned. I was all tied up with knotted nerves, bursting with so many thoughts and feelings. It was overwhelming. I wanted to know what he meant. And why is it any different now? His taste and his touch, I seemed to know what to do with that. But anything beyond that was terrifying. I knew what to do with his heart and feelings, too. I'd been waiting for the chance to prove it to him. It was my heart in his hands that I was far more concerned with. But I couldn't think of that right now, I wouldn't, only his touch, his mouth, his hands, his body. Me, too, was all I managed to say. I was breathless with anticipation. Oh! He had a devilish glint in his eyes, teasing one finger against my tingling skin that was dying to be touched. In that case, I shouldn't keep you waiting. God, I loved when he talked dirty to me. Before I could get a single word out, he bent down and sucked me into his mouth. All my words and reservations melted with the feeling of his hot tongue spreading across my pulsing bundle of nerves. A whimper escaped my mouth as I clenched the sheets in my fists. My entire body was on fire, and the friction of his stubble only made it grow. I sank into the bed, at the mercy of his lips and tongue, until I was shaking and close to exploding. 
Let me show you how perfect I think you are. I moaned, biting my lip to contain my cries. His tongue continued its circling motion, bringing me closer and closer to the edge. You're delicious and perfect. The vibrations of his voice sent a tremor roaring against my sex, hurtling me over the edge. Wave after wave, Oliver rode out my orgasm. He brought his head up, and I felt the warmth of his lips leaving me. My entire body was teeming with so much need that I knew it wouldn't take long before I'd be lost in a sea of ecstasy, lost in him. He climbed his way up my body, drawing my face to his. Our lips collided in a reckless kiss. We were past the point of no return. He undressed in front of me, letting me take in the sight of his muscular, naked, and tattooed body again. It was still a shock to me. The defined planes of his chest and his hard length as it twitched against his stomach. I wanted him inside me. So badly. I reached for him, pulling him on top of me. He nibbled my bottom lip and darted his tongue in my mouth hungrily. He hovered over me with my arms wrapped around his neck, keeping his face close to mine. Our eyes locked. I was aching and wet, and I couldn't stand it anymore. I was taking control. I rolled over, forcing him onto his back. Leaning to the side, I grabbed a condom from the nightstand, opened it, and rolled it down his perfect length. Laney, he murmured, reaching up to the ends of my hair hanging around my shoulders, over my breasts. I couldn't escape his tenderness, no matter where I went. Shh! I whispered, pinning his hands above his head. It's my turn to pleasure you. Yes, ma'am, he groaned, arching his hips toward me. I gripped his swollen shaft in my hand and slid it inside of me. My core clenched around him tightly, and I felt my body swaying with lightheadedness from the rush of him thrusting upward. His hands kneaded into my thighs as I rocked against him. He guided me in the perfect rhythm, angling himself inside me to hit all the right spots. Oh, fuck, he growled, shuddering inside of me. I tilted my head, running my fingers through my hair to keep it from sticking to the sweat forming on my face. He could see all of me, my curves, my breasts as they bounced with each movement, and the way I had to bite my lip to keep from screaming his name so loud that everybody in the city would hear. My body buzzed with the growing shockwaves of pleasure. I dragged his hands to my breasts, placing mine on his to squeeze them the way I wanted. I stole one hand to suck a finger into my mouth, causing his groans to grow weak and broken. I could feel him getting close, and it only pushed me further along as well. You're the most amazing woman in the world, he hissed as I rode him harder, deeper, until we were both crying out in ecstasy. My body seized up, my hips suspended with the last few, slow thrusts between us. In that moment, everything felt so perfect. I wasn't sure how we'd deprived ourselves of this for so long. I kept my eyes closed for a long time, just feeling his body against mine as his fingers lazily caressed my bare skin. The warmth of his touch caused chills to skate along the surface of my naked body. When I finally got brave enough to open my eyes and face him again, he was lying there by my side. We were face to face with our foreheads touching, our limbs tangled together. He lit up with a smile as our eyes met. Hi. He smirked, his voice tinged with a giddiness that melted me inside. Hi, I whispered back. That was... Uh... Fucking amazing. Even better than the first time. I laughed a little. I was going to say unexpected. But... Yeah, it was pretty amazing if I'm being honest. He sucked in a deep breath and sat up, propping himself on his elbow. We have to do this more often. So, what, what is this thing between us? I instinctively realigned my body, pulling back a few inches. I had no idea what was happening between us, but I knew the look in his eyes was too much for me to take. You tell me. You're the one who came busting in and carried me off to your bedroom. I fumbled with the sheets between my fingers, avoiding his gaze. These are very nice sheets by the way. What's the thread count? Where do you even buy sheets like these? He cupped my cheek, pulling my gaze back to his. Look at me. Stop trying to change the subject. You know you're my best friend, and, well, what do you want? I stared into his sparkling brown eyes, wishing I could tell him exactly how I felt and what I wanted. But I knew what he was getting at. I was his best friend, and we were hooking up, so why not give ourselves a pass and just call it friends with benefits? 
but that was a dangerous, slippery slope, one that I knew would destroy me. I want to keep it the way it was, before we started sleeping with each other, like I said the last time, I decided out loud. My heart clenched even saying it. It was easier to pretend like I didn't want more when we talked in the harsh light of day, fully dressed, standing in the kitchen with plenty of distance between us. You're my best friend, and I don't want to ruin our friendship, so, I guess that means all this has to stop. We shouldn't do this again, and I mean it this time. It was harder to stick to my resolve while we were wrapped up together, the chiseled muscles of his perfect chest visible above the sheets. A tight expression washed over his face, and it was even harder to process. Are you sure about that? Was it disappointment, or was I just projecting? It was one of those times when I wished Lisa, or some other non-biased person could magically appear in the room to help me decipher what might be going through his head. No, I didn't need anybody else. I had to ask him. What do you want, Oliver? He sighed as his gaze fell to my chest, and I was suddenly painfully aware of just how exposed I was. My breasts spilled over the bedding, on full display. He made no secret of drinking the sight in with longing. We can stop. He nodded. If that's really what you want. Or, he dropped his head, and his teeth grazed one of my nipples, sucking it against his tongue. Shivers of desire shot straight down my spine, striking me to the core. Or we could take advantage of being here right now, like this, and not worry about what we are or what we aren't. Just enjoy. His fingers danced their way down, 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 circling me, teasing and enticing me even more. As if I needed any help. It didn't matter what I managed to say or how confident I sounded. My body was too vulnerable to his. One look, one touch, and all my decisiveness blurred and dissipated. Beautiful, I quickly double-checked my reflection in the mirror on my way out of my bedroom. The bright red of my blouse made the green in my eyes pop, and the plunging neckline displayed more of my cleavage than I'd normally show. But that was one good thing that had come out of Oliver and I crossing into uncharted sexual territory together. It had done wonders for my confidence. Throwing my big bag over my shoulder, I shuffled through it one last time to make sure I had everything, including my work badge and cell phone charger. I was so late. Then I bolted out the door. I could hear Oliver making coffee in the kitchen and groaned a little to myself. It had been two weeks since we'd found ourselves in bed together again. That one time that turned into a second time, and then three and four times, just for good measure, since we weren't supposed to be sleeping together anymore. It should have been enough to satisfy us, but somehow, it only made me that much more insatiable. Oh, shit. I was so screwed. Good morning. He grinned as he poured coffee grounds into the coffee maker. Hey, I'm kind of in a rush. I exhaled, blowing a strand of hair out of my face. But I hope you have a good day. Oh, hey, wait a sec, he called out, catching me halfway to the door. I rolled my eyes to myself and slowly turned around. Yeah, there's this gallery opening I'm supposed to go to tonight. I need to do some socializing with new clients we're trying to land, but it should be a pretty good time. I thought you might like to join me. You know, since it's not just a usual night out at a club or bar. I thought maybe an art gallery would be more your speed. He didn't seem to understand that the clubs and bars were not why I kept refusing his invitations anymore. The sex was great. But inside, I was wondering. I was always wondering. I couldn't stop. I just didn't need a fifth night of us stumbling home and falling into the same bed by accident again. A fact that only hurt more now that I knew what kinds of things he could do to me in bed. I sighed. Oliver, what are we? What do you mean? Are we friends? Are we friends with benefits? Are we more than friends? Relax, beautiful. Let's take it one day at a time without labeling things. I nodded. So, how about tonight, he asked. Uh, I really can't tonight. I tugged on the strap of my purse. I'm sorry. I have a million things to do before this PhD program starts, and I'll probably be working late on top of that. Okay, then. How about this weekend? His determination was relentless. I could finally get you out there on my bike. You did say you'd try it one day. I don't know. 
We'll see. I shrugged, barely masking the irritation in my voice before making another attempt toward the door. I heard him turn on the coffee pot behind me, followed by the feeling of his hand wrapping around my arm. One touch sent every nerve in my body firing off with need. Having sex with him had amplified that effect to unbearable proportions. Laney, you're doing it again, he said. I whipped around, meeting him face to face. Doing what again? You're avoiding me. I thought the whole point of us refraining from, you know, was to keep things from getting weird between us. But if you're going to avoid hanging out with me, then we might as well. I lifted a finger to his lips, resenting how soft they felt. Don't finish that sentence. Maybe the real issue here is that when I say something isn't a good idea or that I don't want to do something, you just keep pressuring me to do it anyway, and you never give up. I'm not one of your clients or business proposals. You can't steamroll me into doing whatever you want. I winced at the mistake in my words. He perked up, letting me know he caught it, too. The thing was, he could steamroll me into doing whatever he wanted sometimes. Like the last time we were in bed and he proposed one or two or three more times for the road. All he had to do was plant that skillful tongue of his between my legs, and I was a goner. I would have agreed to anything he asked. You shouldn't try to steamroll me into doing whatever you want, I added, feeling my chest and cheeks flush. Because sometimes, Laney Carter, it turns out that I'm right, he quipped with a smug smirk. Like the driving range. You loved it. And, he stepped closer, skimming his finger up and down the strap of my bag that rested on my shoulder and chest. His voice grew deep and suggestive. I can think of a few other ideas of mine that you ended up loving. In the moment, maybe. But that's the difference between us, Oliver. You're only ever thinking about what's right in front of you and never considering the consequences of any of it. I'm the one who has to think two steps ahead and keep my ass out of trouble, and sometimes yours, too, when you let me. What's so wrong with living in the moment, he insisted with that adorable pleading expression in his eyes. I stared into them for too long, almost getting sucked in enough to cave into him like I always did. I gotta go. You're going to make me late for work, I huffed before bolting out the door. I didn't feel safe until I was tucked away into the backseat of the Uber. Every step before then threatened to turn in the opposite direction and go crashing back into Oliver. I imagined flinging off my pants, him having me bent over and doing all the beautiful things to me. He made it obvious I wouldn't get any objections from him, but every time we were together, put me at a greater risk of being hurt more than I already was. I felt even more secure as I walked through the entry points of the lab, scanning my badge at each door until it beeped and unlocked. If only relationships could be that easy. If I had the magic password to make Oliver understand how I felt, that I loved him, that I needed to know that he had feelings for me, too, and all the doors would just open right up for us. But I knew I had to put those thoughts far from my mind as I sat down at my desk and got busy. Until my apartment was finished, work was my only refuge away from all the confusion and unsatisfied wants boiling up inside of me. Which reminded me, I needed to check in with Mr. Cruz and see how the renovations were going. I'd heard it shouldn't be too much longer. Sooner would be better right now, at least so Oliver and I could finally get back to what we had before. Maybe some time apart would be best. Hell, what did I know? I just knew something had to give. By lunch, it was all pushed into the back of my mind. The anxiety of being in his presence, wanting him, and not really having him, always lingered in there somewhere, but at least while I was working, it wasn't in the driver's seat anymore. Right after placing a delivery order for pizza, my phone started ringing. I was convinced it was Oliver, asking me about whatever he wanted me to do that night or that weekend. But I was surprised to see an unfamiliar name scrolling across the screen. I answered, hoping it might have something to do with my apartment, or maybe it was someone from NYU calling. Hey, Elaine. I'm glad I got a hold of you. This is Kyle. The man's voice didn't ring any bells. My brain fired off trying to place him, but I just couldn't. Kyle, Kyle, I don't know any Kyles. I'm sorry? I said. We met a few weeks back at the club, he added after my painful silence. Sorry I didn't call sooner, but things got really crazy at my clinic. I haven't had a night off since we met. I pressed my hand to the side of my face, my features softening as it all clicked into place. 
tall, devastatingly handsome Dr. Kyle. The guy who so boldly approached me the first night Oliver and I ended up sleeping together. He'd been quick to remove himself when he saw Oliver approaching. It was funny to think back on it then. I'd been surprised to learn that he, too, was a doctor like Frank, just not in the same field. Kyle. Yes, of course. I remember you. How have you been? I rattled off nervously. Oh, wait. I guess you just told me how you were. Busy. Oh, great, Laney. Real smooth. He chuckled graciously. Other than being busy, I'm great. How about you? Oh, you know, I stammered, realizing that my life since meeting him had been completely devoured by all things Oliver. Good. Everything's good. I'm actually at work right now. Then I won't keep you. But I was curious, do you have dinner plans this evening? I'd love to see you again. And get a chance to talk when we're not surrounded by loud music and drunk people. My brain froze. First, Oliver. Now, this ridiculously gorgeous successful doctor wanted to see me. What was happening in the universe? Oh, thanks, Kyle. That's really sweet. I don't think I, I racked my brain for excuses not to go, but then, I stopped. Why the hell shouldn't I go? This guy had the potential to be every bit as enticing as Oliver if I gave him a chance, only it wouldn't be muddied up by years of friendship and other complicated feelings. Even if it was just a one-night stand, maybe it was exactly what I needed to detox from Oliver Humphreys. It was evident that Oliver didn't want anything serious anytime soon. Obviously, he wanted a best friend with benefits, nothing more. And as much as I loved the benefits part, I didn't think my heart could go on like this. You know what, I actually don't have any plans this evening, I decided. And dinner sounds lovely. Great. I can pick you up around seven? Perfect. I'll text you the address, I replied, still in disbelief at what was transpiring. Can't wait to see you, he said in that deep sexy voice that only rich men with six-pack abs and a huge package seem to be able to master. My body tingled with anticipation as I hung up and shot him the text. I typed it out and paused, blinking at the screen. Was it strange that he was picking me up from Oliver's? I mean, it was my home for the time being. It was obvious that Oliver didn't want a real relationship with me. He didn't feel what I felt. But I still didn't want to hurt his feelings. Enough of that, Laney. We aren't a couple. Theoretically, we're both single. Super single. You can't hurt his feelings because he doesn't have feelings for you, at least nothing beyond you being a friend that he likes to fuck. I mean, who wouldn't love it? You two are dynamite in bed. But. That's beside the point. Maybe Kyle's dynamite in bed, too, and you have every right to find out. I shook off my doubts and pressed send before getting back to work. But, to be honest, there was the relentless nagging feeling in my gut that I'd rather be with Oliver at the gallery opening, and I'd take whatever came after that, too. But going out with Kyle instead was the smart thing to do. I had to start looking out for myself and get over this thing with Oliver once and for all. Instead of working late as usual, I raced home at a decent hour to get ready for my dinner date. After taking a shower, I wrapped up in my robe and thumbed through the clothes hanging in my closet. The infamous cherry-popping evening red dress had been dry-cleaned and returned to a hanger, but I'd worn that the first night I met Kyle. I didn't want him to think I only owned that one dress. My gaze drifted to another dress I'd bought with Lisa but hadn't had a chance to wear yet. I tilted my head, considering it. It was a black vintage-style dress that hugged and accentuated all of my curves. In the past, I would have opted for something that hid my curves instead. But I was starting to realize that there was a lot of power in owning and flaunting my body like it was one of my best features, rather than hiding it away like a flaw. I turned for my purse, sitting on the edge of the bed, and rifled through it to find my phone. I dialed Lisa on FaceTime and waited for her smiling face to appear on the screen. Hello, lovely. Wait, is that your room I see in the background? Can it be? Did the geek Elaine Carter actually leave work before dinner time? Very funny, I grumbled. Listen, I need your help. I have a date tonight. 
With who, she gasped. Let me guess, with Oliver? I'm so happy. Ah. Uh. No. This guy I met at the club a few weeks ago. He's a dentist, and he wants to take me to dinner. So, what do you think? The black dress? Lisa's face melted into a frown. Wait, why are you going out with a dentist? Ugh. Why? Ugh. What about Oliver, girl? What about him? I snapped. I've told you. I can't handle being a friend with easy benefits to him. I have to move on, and this date is a perfect way to start doing that. But you never actually gave him a chance and told him what you really wanted besides some BS, or see if that's what he wanted, too. You're just assuming, she argued. And more importantly, you never told him how you felt all these years, which is the real game changer. Oh, yeah, it'd change the game, all right. I scoffed. He'd be forced to say he doesn't feel the same way, and I'd be humiliated and heartbroken all over again. Just like in high school when. I know, I know. You gave him the letter and he laughed at it. You've told me the story before. I know, but it's the truth. Laney, you dummy, I'm sure he doesn't even know that letter was from you. You've never actually just come right out with it and confessed your feelings for him. The closest you came was telling him you wondered what it would be like to sleep with him and lose your v-card to him. And what happened? You slept together. So just think what could happen if you told him how you really feel? Men are idiots, basically. You have to tell them things straight out. They don't get hints. They don't understand subtleties. They don't read between the lines. This is really not the conversation I expected to be getting into with you right now. The black dress, or no? Maybe that yellow and pink one I showed you? No. Not the yellow and pink one, she shouted. It's dinner in the city. Not a summer barbecue in the Hamptons. Yes, the black is fine. If you insist on doing this. All I'm saying is, don't you think you should find out exactly where Oliver stands before you go running off to see someone new? And a dentist? After the foot fetish doctor, that's a downgrade, times ten. I'd never trust a dentist, that's for sure. Let alone take me on a date. Gross. Small popsicle for sure. I've never heard of such a thing. Everybody knows that. That's why they like to torture people. It's to compensate. Stop it, Lisa. Or I won't be able to keep a straight face all evening. Good, she said. You know, I'm normally all about you getting out there and living a little, but won't it just drive you crazy not to know for sure? Not at least try? I humored her enough to sit back and consider it. I stared at the dress hanging in the closet and thought how good I'd look wearing it on Oliver's arm. But trying to predict the feelings conversation always ended in the same inevitable way, me crying and hiding in my bedroom, wishing I'd just kept my mouth shut. I'm a big girl, Lisa. I know what I'm doing, I told her finally. M.M. Hmm. Sure. She sounded like she believed I didn't know what the hell I was doing. That's why you were about to wear a tropical sundress off to some fancy restaurant with that tooth doctor. Because you know exactly what you're doing, she taunted sarcastically. Maybe I just threw that out there so you'd get back on topic and tell me to wear the black one. I flashed a cocky grin at the screen. She let out a sigh, shaking her head. Oh, how I long for the day when my best friend can just have normal conversations with people without trying to dictate the outcome. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm a control freak. Get over it. I'll call you later. You better. Even though I think this date isn't the best idea, I still want to hear every last detail about it. Bring a measuring tape. She threw her head back and cackled. You can count on it. I ended the call and tossed the phone back into my bag before grabbing the black dress and sliding it on. It fit like a glove, and even without fixing my hair or doing my makeup, it made me look like a sexy vixen. I just finished applying the last touch of mascara to go with my smoky eye look when my phone dinged with a text. Kyle, hey, gorgeous, I just pulled up to your building. I'm coming up to get you. 
My hand dropped limply to my side, and my eyes grew wide as I swallowed a hard lump down my throat. I hadn't considered what it would be like if Oliver saw the guy picking me up. I meant to tell him to wait for me in the parking garage, but the phone call with Lisa had me all over the place. The penthouse had been empty when I got home, so maybe Oliver went straight to the gallery opening from his office. Oliver hadn't come home yet. So, when I get out as quickly as possible, I only have to pray that I don't run into him leaving the building. I crossed my fingers and opened my bedroom door, but of course, I was instantly hit with the sound of the stereo playing in the living room. I walked around the corner to find Oliver standing there with a glass of wine. Shit. He was home, I didn't even hear him coming in. Shit shit shit. His jaw dropped at the sight of me, which at least let me know I was looking as good as I thought I was. Hey, you're, wow, you look beautiful. He leaned in and kissed me on the cheek. I thought you were working late tonight. Before I could answer, there was a knock at the door. Knock. Knock. Hang on. Who the hell could that be? He started for the door. I'll get it. I shrieked, racing to cut Oliver off. With my hand on the knob, I glared back at him over my shoulder. He was hovering so close behind me, I could feel his breath on my neck. I didn't need those sensations creeping over me right then. Do you mind? Can you back up a little? Knock. Knock. Geez, okay. He stepped back with his hands up in mock surrender, his eyes dark. I flung open the door and smiled at Kyle who was waiting there with a bouquet of roses in his hand. Red roses. He looked just as handsome as I remembered, but his perfect smile faded into confusion when he noticed Oliver standing right there behind me. Barney? Oliver narrowed his gaze on Kyle's face. This is Kyle, I corrected him through clenched teeth. And this is, my roommate, Oliver. You might remember him from the night we met at the club. Roommate? Oliver's eyebrows nearly hiked to his hairline. Oh, a roommate? Kyle's brow raised. It's a long story. I grinned at Kyle, feeling my cheeks blushing. I can tell you over dinner. Are these for me? Oh, yes. He nodded, sliding the bouquet into my hand. He leaned in to kiss my cheek, the same one Oliver had just kissed, as he handed the flowers over. I could feel Oliver's body closing in on me from behind again. They're beautiful. I've never received such a nice bouquet. Kyle's eyes cut to my roommate before he pulled back. I could only imagine what kind of look they exchanged over my shoulder. I'm glad you like them. Well, should we get going? I have reservations for the lighter. Oh, the lighter? Wow, I said. Absolutely. Let me just get these into some water. I spun around to go into the kitchen and find a face but ran smack dab into Oliver's chest. He stared down at me. Hurt flashed across his eyes. His fingers wrapped around mine and the stems of the bouquet. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of these for you. My face felt hot, and my heart was pounding. This was the worst-case scenario. Oliver didn't seem too happy as he loomed over the start of my date, and now he offered to take care of the roses the guy bought for me. I could imagine that the flowers wouldn't survive the next few minutes if I left them in his care. He'd likely shred them to pieces, with Kyle's face in mind based on his expression. This was not good. Shit. No, you really don't have to do that. I smiled politely praying for him not to make it any more awkward for me than it already was. I've got it, Oliver said. Something in his eyes shifted. Don't miss your table, it would be a shame. You should try the Greek-style tart. The lighter's chef is from Athens. The dessert is delicate. I didn't miss the hint of disappointment in his undertone. It was like I was staring at a different man. I let go of the flowers, leaving them in his hand. He leaned down and whispered, he kinda looks funny. If he tries anything funny, call me. We can talk later, I said sternly. Besides, I don't want you to be late for your gallery opening. I raced to Kyle's side, desperate to get the hell out of there, a hard lump in my throat. You ready? Enjoy your evening. Oliver tried to smile, and failed. It looked strained. 
Damn it. Nice to meet you. Kyle waved to him, which Oliver ignored, before sliding his hand into mine and escorting me down the hall. I resisted the urge to glance back and see him standing there in the doorway, staring at me leaving with my dentist date. I refused to let myself think that Lisa might have been right. Oliver had plenty of chances to tell me if I was more than just a friend to sleep with. Holding my head high, I kept walking along with Kyle. I'd seen him run off on plenty of dates, leaving me behind. It was about damn time he was the one left waiting, if he was even waiting. I felt utterly horrible, but there was no way I'd turn back. My fists clenched as I watched that tool strut down the hall with her on his arm. I noticed the lack of space between their bodies, and part of me wanted to punch the fucking wall, but instead, I turned and walked back in the apartment, resisting the urge to slam the door behind me. Roommate? Her fucking roommate? What the fuck? The large bouquet of roses in my hand taunted me. The bloom smiled up at me, and I swore I could hear them singing little songs about her and that douche making out in the car or, God forbid, stumbling into her bedroom together at the end of the night. Surely, she wouldn't be so cruel and bring him back there, would she? Over my dead fucking body. I considered throwing the damn things in the trash, or maybe shredding them and leaving them in her bedroom. Why not give the happy couple some ambience to come home to? I tossed them onto the counter to stop myself from doing anything fucking rash. Instead, I snatched up my glass of wine. After throwing back what was left in the glass, I planted myself on the couch with the whole bottle in hand. I hated the thought of another man near her, or even looking at her in that dress. Where did she even get that thing? She was dressed to kill. And it was working. Because I felt like I was dying inside. My mind was reeling with all the possibilities. Was he putting his hand on her back as he showed her into the restaurant? Did he stare at her perfect ass when she walked by? It was too much to take. I sank back against the couch, bringing the bottle to my lips for a big swig. I knew I couldn't just sit there and drink all night. I'd be a sloppy, half-crazed, drunken mess by the time my roommate came home, if she came home. A light bulb went off. Why should I sit around all night, torturing myself over whatever she was doing out there with that schmuck? I had plenty of girls chomping at the bit to go out with me. Hell, I could have a chick on my dick in less than ten minutes. If she was going to flaunt her dates right in front of me, I'd go on a date, too. Maybe we'd even end up at the same restaurant. It wasn't right, but I couldn't contain my jealousy. I pulled out my phone and started flipping through my contacts. But as I swiped through the list of available women, my heart sank further. I hadn't been with anybody else since I'd slept with Laney. It wasn't even a conscious decision I'd made. It just felt better to wait around for the possibility of things evolving between us rather than taking a chance with another woman. Obviously, she doesn't feel the same, dumbass. Or she wouldn't be out there with that moron right now. Just pick a chick and call. You'll forget all about what Laney's doing in no time. My thumb hesitated over several different names. Shit. I couldn't bring myself to pull the trigger. I finally gave up and let my hand flop down beside me with my fingers loosely curled around my useless phone. I'd just have to accept my agony for the night and find a way to pass the time. I stared down at the dark screen. Damon! He was a pro at tracking anybody down. He could tell me what kind of creeper we were dealing with here. I dialed his number and waited anxiously for him to pick up. He would barely said hello when I started rattling off instructions. Sup? You know how we put files together on high-risk clients? Well, I need you to do the same for me. I don't have much information on the guy. Just that he's a dentist, first name's Kyle, and he wears a bright purple shirt. Whoa, buddy. Slow down. What's going on? I could hear the background noise drift further away as he stepped off somewhere more private. And why aren't you here at the gallery? I heard a door close. Probably a bathroom. You know we're supposed to be schmoozing these new potential buyers. Forget that, I said. My brother can do the ass-kissing for tonight. I need you to get on this. Why exactly? Who the fuck is this guy? That's what you need to find out. Okay? I hated the tone in his voice. Like I'd lost my mind. Maybe I had. Okay, I had, but fuck it. And I was only about to make it worse. He's out with Laney tonight. I just want to make sure he's not a date rapist or some kind of con man. Uh. The line fell silent for a moment. So, 
I take it you haven't talked to her yet? We hooked up again, I groaned. Well over and over again, actually. But then she fed me the same bullshit. Then it had to stop. She just wants to be friends, then. Shit's just fucked up, all right, and I don't know what's going on now. It's fine. It's whatever. But the least I can do is keep no good perverts away from her. He let out a chuckle, mixed with a sigh. Listen, Oliver. I get that you're worried about her. If that's what we're calling it, I could imagine him hanging his head, pitying me and thinking I'd really lost it, instead of pure unchecked jealousy, which is what we're really dealing with here. But Lainey is a grown woman. She can date and fuck and make her own decisions about who she does that with. Anyway, why do you care so much now? Surely you've seen her date before over the years. It's different now, I said. My frustration grew as I realized I'd done this to myself. All those years I spent completely blind to all that Lainey really was. I blocked it out, everything I could feel for her. It all made the bed I was being forced to lie in now. Can you fucking help me or not, Damon? No, dude, he said. I'm not going to help you stalk her boyfriend. His pitch raised, sounding incredulous. Obviously. He's not her fucking boyfriend. Just come out to the gallery, and get out of your head for a while. Maybe by tomorrow, you'll finally just accept that nothing is going to change unless you risk telling Elaine how you fucking feel. I raked my hand down my face with a growl. Fine. Whatever. I'll think about coming out. I ended the call, knowing damn well I was in no shape to go out and be around anybody. Taking several deep breaths, I plopped back on the couch and tried to calm down. I thought back to the first time Lainey and I had sex, and how she'd avoided me afterward. How she'd driven me nuts until our friendship had gotten back to normal again. How I couldn't sleep until I had her in my arms again. That had been a fucking walk in the park compared to this shit. She was on a fucking date, and not with me. Kyle could eat a dick. And this burning in my chest? Jealous? Fucking Damon. The prick. Thanks for walking me in. I stopped Kyle in the lobby to avoid another run-in with Oliver at the apartment. I had a great time tonight. Did you? He winced. You seemed a little distracted. Don't take this the wrong way, but is something going on with you and your roommate? I saw the way you looked at us when I picked you up. No worries if you're wrapped up in something else. I shuffled my feet and stared down at the floor. I couldn't very well tell Kyle that things with my roommate were complicated. Or that I'd just recently given him my virginity. I know it took me too long to call you after we met, he said. I guess this is kind of an odd time for me. I sighed. I'm sorry. But maybe we could do this again sometime, when I'm not feeling so off. I'd like that, he told me with a smile. You sure I can't talk you into coming out for one more drink, or two? I know a nice place just around the corner. We could go back to my place after. I don't have any roommates. I stared into his big blue eyes, paired with that charming smile that made him look like a male model. A part of me wanted to want to get drunk enough with him to make me forget all about Oliver, at least for a little while. I thought having another man's hands on me might be the perfect remedy to everything. But in that moment, all I could think was, as perfect as this handsome doctor may be, he's not Oliver. Not even close. Not tonight, I finally answered. But some other time? Sure thing. He leaned down and kissed my cheek and stood by like a gentleman until he saw the elevator doors close between us. I slumped my back against the mirrored wall and felt my chest growing tighter with each passing floor. Would Oliver be home by now? And worse, would he have brought a girl home? Come to think of it, I hadn't seen another girl around in weeks. But maybe he was just polite enough not to flaunt that sort of thing in front of me after we'd just been together. The apartment was dark when I walked in. I let out a sigh of relief. Oliver must not have been home yet. I flipped on the light and felt my heart jolt at the sight of the figure in the corner. I jumped and shrieked, picturing the baseball bat I knew Oliver kept in his closet until I realized it was him sitting there. Jesus! You scared the crap out of me, I cried, trying to catch my breath. What are you doing, sitting around in the dark like that? Sorry. Couldn't sleep. Did you have a good time? His eyes were glossy with his lids hanging low. He looked terrible, like he'd been up for days. I'd only been gone a few hours. It was good. I sounded casual but confident. Why the hell does he care, anyway? He shot up from his chair and walked over to me, 
waiting to meet me face to face as I rose from setting my things down by the door. His eyes were dark and filled with worry and stress. They dropped to my lips. Did he kiss you? he asked with dead seriousness. No. Or touch you in any way? No. Jeez, Oliver. It was just dinner. We're not all man whores who fuck on the first date. His head suddenly dropped to mine, bringing his hand up, cupping my chin to draw my face to his. He inched closer until his lips softly touched mine. I got lost in it for a moment, almost giving in to him completely. A few seconds later, I forced myself to pull away. Please don't make this harder than it already is. We shouldn't. I shoved him back. I told you we're not doing that anymore. I'm sorry, he said. It's just, seeing you with that douche. He's not a douche. I fired back, burning up with rage. He's a perfectly decent guy, which I'd think you'd want for me. Are you going to see him again? Really, it's none of your business who I date. We agreed all this physical stuff between us was over. We're just friends now. Like it used to be. No, that's not what I agreed on, he said. I suggested we see where all this leads to. And now, you're just too scared to face your feelings for me. What? My heart pounded and rattled through my body, making me shake. What the hell is that supposed to mean? I tried to hide the trembling in my hands. How dare you accuse me of being scared to face my feelings? I'd become all too familiar with facing down my feelings for him each and every single day. It wasn't my fault he was too blind to see it. I bit my tongue to keep from laying it all out on the table. You tell me what it means. He sounded exasperated, and his hair was disheveled like he'd been raking his hands through it all night. You're the one who says you want things to be normal. You're hot, then cold. You avoid me and make it impossible for anything to feel normal. Why don't you just admit that you're scared to be around me, because you know you can't stop yourself from letting it happen again? Letting what happen again? I knew it was a mistake as soon as I asked the question. He charged forward and moaned, this. His lips crashed into mine, his body pressing against me, pinning me between him and the kitchen counter. I opened my mouth wider, relishing the sweet relief of his tongue tangling with mine, each playing for dominance. My fingers dug into his shirt, begging for more and pleading with him to stop all at once. I could have kept going, but then I imagined the next morning when I'd be reminded of the pain, knowing I would never really have him. He'd never feel the same way. I finally gathered the strength to pull away from him, quickly sliding myself from under his grip. This is all just about sex for you. How could you even say that? How could I not? My voice grew shaky and shrill. I've watched you hop from one woman to the next, since high school. Who are you kidding here? We both know you're just riled up, because for once, I'm not falling at your feet, begging for more. You only want what you can't have, Oliver. You've always been that way. I've never been that way. Oh, stop it. You've always been a risk taker. Yeah, well, you've always been so afraid of life you can't be bothered to take a risk. Even if it meant something wonderful could come out of it. I shook my head, unable to look at him anymore. Being hit with the harsh cold reality of Oliver running off the moment I opened up to him, what that would do to me was surely not wonderful and not a risk I was willing to take. At least this way, I was getting up with my dignity still intact. I'm going to bed, I rasped, turning from my bedroom before he had a chance to argue. Laney, wait. I kept going, not letting myself give in to him anymore. No matter how badly I wanted to go running back to him, I just couldn't bring myself to. With the door slammed shut behind me, I collapsed against it and slid down to the floor. I wanted to cry and scream all at once. What if everything I'd always wanted really was within reach, if I'd just let go and tell him how much I loved him? Flashbacks of high school and all the years after when I watched him parade around with woman after woman, it all swirled around in my head, paralyzing me. If there was any potential for something real between us, it would have happened a long time ago. Even if he didn't know that that damn three-page letter was from me. And all the trouble around our recent hookups just proved what a terrible, impossible match we were. I pulled myself up off the floor and caught sight of my reflection in the mirror. I looked better than ever, aside from my smudged makeup. Some match. A rich, gorgeous, ballsy risk-taker who wasn't afraid of anything. And a scared, mousy, little science nerd who was afraid of everything. I held my head high and reminded myself I was not that same girl in high school anymore. I unzipped the dress, letting it fall to the floor, 
and admired my curves wrapped in the black lace lingerie I was wearing underneath. No more begging and chasing after him or waiting around for him to really see me. He helped unleash a new woman, and I was not about to let her shrivel up under the weight of this ancient high school crush. My feet shifted in place as I fought the urge to go pounding on her bedroom door. For a moment, I was strong enough to resist. But my stubbornness went out and sent me barreling forward. I didn't believe in going to bed angry. I approached her door with my hand in the air, ready to knock. But before I could bang my fist, I heard a soft sniffling sound coming from the other side. I glanced at the crack at the bottom and noticed the shadow, Laney sitting with her back to the door, crying. Every ounce of anger faded and was replaced with regret. I wanted to burst in and comfort her, but I was upset and knew I needed to cool off. I couldn't risk saying something that would make things between us even worse. I didn't want her to hate me. See, Laney. I don't always take the risk, I thought to myself, wondering if she was in there thinking about what a jerk I was. Good luck explaining that one. The notion enraged me all over again and sent me retreating into my own room. A cold shower helped take the edge off a bit. When I climbed into bed, I was wide awake, running everything we'd said to each other through my mind over and over again. We'd never fought like that before. Maybe she was right. Maybe this whole thing was a mistake, and we really had ruined everything. I rolled over, desperate to escape my racing thoughts with sleep. I let a couple of days slip by, making a point to avoid Laney as much as I could. I needed time to clear my head, and she probably needed time to stop hating me. After a long day of work, I met up with Damon at a bar near our office. I was desperate for drinks. I wanted to think about anything other than her. But it wasn't easy. Before, it was simple, I had work in my social life. But everything had changed significantly since Laney had moved in. I'd become a one-woman man, consumed by thoughts of her and only her. Suddenly, the life I'd been living seemed gray without her, now that she'd been the one who'd brought color in with all her adorable quirks. Sure, she wasn't one of those extroverted girls, but she gave me more. She had something about her that always made me feel appreciated. No, it was more than that. Laney had this special spark about her, and a way of making me feel like the king of the world. The way she looked at me. The way she touched me. How she spoke to me. How she never put herself first, that's why her profession made so much more sense now, to help even more people feel good. How she made sure I woke up with a smile, making me coffee every morning, and even my favorite muffins at times. Laney had thought about other people and bought gifts for them when she had the worst day of her life, even after losing everything she owned in a fire. She always put so much thought into giving gifts, writing short or long notes, getting the best cards, anything to make them feel special. She was special. One of a kind. Nobody could even compare to Laney. I thought of all the times she tried to tame her frizzy hair and how often she jumped to remove her glasses before she saw me. I've been such an idiot. How could I have been so blind and not seen this gorgeous woman and made her feel how she deserved? Fuck. I'd blown everything with Laney. From day one. I'd never be able to look at her the same again, not as just my best friend. And hell, I doubted she could, either. I knew I'd already let her down by being too blinded by everything. It was like I'd been wearing some kind of fucking goggles all these years, and somebody finally ripped them off so I could see clearly. That sounded corny, even for me. But it was the truth. I never really saw her for the beauty she was, not in the way she wanted me to. And the science had been there all along. Yeah. Asshole, now you've lost the best thing that's ever happened to you. Good going, fuckstick. My heart sank when I thought about the night she asked me to be her first. How she'd made herself vulnerable and offered her most precious gift to me. And what did I do? Fuck. Why the hell was I such an idiot? Why didn't that just make her understand that she was mine and only mine from then on and the rest of our lives? Why hadn't I insisted that there was so much more between us than just friendship? And now she was going out with a loser, when I could be the one by her side, inside her, instead of some motherfucking dentist. How did things turn out after your stalker freak out the other night? Damon asked grimly as soon as I sank onto the stool next to him. I buried my face in my hands. I wanted to get away from it, but no such luck. Oh, perfect, I answered sarcastically. She came home. I yelled at her. It went just great. Dude. When are you just going to give it up? He asked. You've liked that girl since high school. 
According to her, all I've done since high school is hop from one woman to the next. I took a swig of my beer as soon as the bartender slid it into my hand. Well, she's not wrong. He winced, tilting his head. Did you ever think maybe that's why she hasn't admitted how she feels about you? Surely she knows it'd be different with her. Are we still going on about this? Miles appeared behind us, slapping me on the back. Come on, man. This broken record shit's got to stop. Just go tell the woman you love her. Or one of us is going to crack and do it for you. I raised an irritated eyebrow. Shut up. Miles shrugged like he'd be open to doing just that, but Damon was quick to interject. He didn't mean it. Jeez. Lighten up. You're going to lose her if you don't make a move. And soon, Miles told me, and then ordered a beer when the bartender came back. I know, I said. I fucking know. Hey, do you remember when she used to pass all those notes to you from girls back in the day? Miles asked. Too bad things aren't so simple now. A note would make things so much easier. A thought sparked in my brain. I glanced over to the stack of napkins on the edge of the bar. A pen for signing receipts rested in a cup right next to them. I snatched them both and started scribbling. Oh, no, Miles groaned. Bro, I was just kidding. Don't do that shit. No, it's perfect, I insisted as I finished the last of my note and grabbed my jacket from the back of my chair. One of you cover this beer for me. I gotta run. Go get her, man. Damon tipped his glass toward me as I bolted out of the bar. I ran out and called a car to take me home, reading the ridiculous napkin letter in my hand as the driver took off. I yelled at him to go faster and tried to calm the nerves bouncing around inside of me. Suddenly, I was filled with anger and regret for letting everything stew between us the past few days. I should have said something sooner. The familiar worry that kept me silent started to stir inside, but I did my best to swallow it down. I was already on course. Backing down now was not an option. I saw the light on in Laney's room the moment I walked in. I almost flung the door right open but skidded to a stop just in time to knock. Barging in on her and that moron certainly wouldn't help the nerve I'd built up. I rapped on the door three times. Knock. 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 No answer. Before knocking again, I got an idea. I looked down to the bottom of the door and slid the napkin underneath. Three more knocks. Knock. 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 I chewed the inside of my lip and waited. And waited. I let out a huge breath when the small corner of the napkin disappeared under the door. The door opened a few seconds later. Oliver? Laney called out. The napkin was still folded in her hand. I didn't hear you. What's going on? Did you slide this under the door? I wanted to tell her to just read it already, but then I noticed the stacks of boxes behind her. What's all this? I pushed past her. She was packing up everything. My building manager called today, she said. The renovations are complete, so I'm going home. I looked across the stacks of boxes and then back to her. Fuck. Is that what you want? My throat closed up. Babe. I watched Oliver glance between the boxes and then back to me, his shoulders dropping and his eyes filling with desperation. Babe, talk to me, he pleaded again, wrapping his hands around my shoulders. My confusion boiled over, finally pushing me to snap. My throat tightened with burgeoning tears, but I did my best to hold them in. What do you want, Oliver? I shook my head in exasperation. I'm not sure why you keep asking what I want, but never really answering that question for yourself. Does it matter what I want, he fired back? You're the one who said you didn't want to risk ruining our friendship. That kind of closes off all the options. Well, what we're doing now isn't helping much to save our friendship. Okay, fine. You know what I want? What I really want? His voice grew desperate, earnest. Tell me, I said. But don't freak out. And don't run off. I'll do my best. I want you to stay. He reached out and caressed my cheek with his thumb. I never want you to leave. I want to be the only man that you kiss or go on dates with. I want to be the only man that sleeps with you. I want you to be in my bed, every night. I want all of it. I want you, Laney. 
my chin quivered and I was dangerously close to crying. Seeing his glossy brown eyes searching mine and hearing him say everything I'd always dreamed of him saying since I was fourteen. It was too much. It all swirled together, snatching up my breath. I collapsed onto the edge of the bed and buried my face in my hands to cry. The napkin he slid under my door was still balled up in my hands, and I nearly wiped it across my face. But just as I lifted it up, I caught the sight of ink scribbled across it. I unfolded it slowly and read the words, I'm madly in love with you, Lainey. What's this? I sobbed, growing still despite sniffling. Did you write this? He knelt in front of me, wrapping his hands around mine. I'm sorry. It's stupid. I just thought it'd make it easier to. Ah, uh, damn it, Lainey. I'm not good at stuff like this. You were right about what you said. But then this. This? I stared at him, full of hope. Was this really happening? Could Oliver really, truly be in love with me? I was dizzy, and my eyes kept reading and rereading his words. Part of me was too afraid to believe it and wondered if I was dreaming, and the other part was overwhelmed with happiness I'd never experienced. It was so enormous and shattering that my heart began to beat so quickly that I thought I might faint or die and go to heaven. I thought it was just an accident. What started happening between us? His voice was low and raspy. But maybe deep down I knew what I was doing all along. I love you. Oh, Oliver. I kept trying to block the bigger picture, but the more I had of you the more I wanted. I want you to stay. I don't want us to have to avoid each other because we might sleep together again. I want to sleep with you again. Every day. Multiple times, if necessary. I want us to keep going. I don't want us to end. My heart leapt from my chest, reaching for him. I wanted all of that, too, but saying it out loud felt like I was betraying a secret I'd been cradling for so long. All those years I'd spent trying to keep the words stuffed deep inside, but with him sitting in front of me, bearing his heart, they all threatened to come spilling out. But I knew once I said them, there would be no taking them back. I would be so vulnerable to him, and completely at his mercy. I don't know what to say, Oliver, I said, swiping a finger under my wet eyes. Say that you want me, too. That you want to stay here with me. He softly grabbed my face with both of his hands. Don't be afraid. If that's how you feel, beautiful. Please just say it. I want to hear it. I need to hear it. He waited, pleading with me through his eyes. The air in the room was thick and heavy, filled with our hot, anxious breaths. Come on, I'm out on a ledge here. Don't leave me hanging. He smiled. A smile of my own cracked through my tears with a broken, sobbing laugh. Oliver Humphreys, I've never once left you hanging. And you know it. His throat rolled with a hard swallow. So, what do you say? I stared into his big brown eyes, caressing the sides of his slick back sandy blonde hair. I love you, too, I whispered. Thank God, he murmured. His eyes closed with a huge sigh of relief as he nestled his face into my neck, hugging me tight. He pressed his lips against the shell of my ear. Babe, what's taken you so long, he asked, I've been dying. Then, without allowing me to answer, because I couldn't breathe, he worked around to my neck and up again. We lingered and relished the feeling before his tongue finally swept inside my mouth. We kissed softly, as if it were the first time our lips had ever touched. He pushed me against the bed, and I melted. I need to be inside you now. Everything inside of me screamed with excitement, but on the outside, all of that pent-up energy flowed through my hands, grabbing at his clothes and the skin beneath in desperation. I'd waited so long, holding everything in. The other times we'd slept together had been uncertain and testing. But now there were no questions left hanging between us. We were in love. He loved me. Oliver Humphreys loved me. The growing swell of joy inside my heart only fueled my lust, sending shivers of desire sprinting to my girly bits. He hovered over my body, spreading my legs with his knee. What are you doing to me, girl? You drive me insane. I can't even think when I look at you. His throbbing arousal pressed against my core, driving me over the edge with need. 
I ripped off his shirt and threw my head back with a gasp as he bit into the straps of my bra, working his way around to undo the clasp. It was an endless flow of kissing, licking, biting, touching, and exploring, stripping away clothes as we went. Our heavy breaths matched the pulse of our movements, our hips grinding relentlessly with want, until finally, we were both naked, skin to skin. Oliver slowly kissed his way down my body, then stood and stared at my nakedness, running his thumb across his full bottom lip. So, I take that as a yes, then? You'll stay? I grinned. Yes, I'll stay, but only if you get your ass back in bed. <laughs> I rather like this view. He paused, his gaze searing into me. Something's missing. He grabbed my knees and forced my legs farther apart. That's better. That's mine. Hell, yes, it is. It's all yours. What are you going to do about it? I smirked, squeezing my left breast and running my other hand down my body, teasing. The look in his eyes was breathtaking. Oliver palmed his length, stroking it in a languid motion. Keep touching yourself. He looked like a Greek god standing before me, and a flood of liquid heat rushed to my core. God, demanding Oliver drove me insane. I did as he said, watching him watch me, and whimpered, circling my sensitive bundle of nerves, but needing his hands on me. This was torture, yet so damn sexy. I gasped as I felt the first sensation of burning need shudder through me. Oh, Oliver, I need you. I could hardly take any more. I know. He dropped to his knees and pushed my hand aside, immediately giving me a long lick where I needed it most. Holy shit. This was the most erotic game we'd ever played. His hot breath ghosted across my sensitive bud before he nibbled and sucked, causing me to cry out. How did he even do that? Had he been holding out on me before? He pushed deeper, harder, and the sensations, fuck, I was gonna go blind. Holy. What? That, oh, my, my breaths were coming in short, rasping pants. I writhed against him, digging my hands into his hair. I couldn't even string a coherent sentence together. You, inside, me. Now. I tried to order, yet it was so hard to speak. But it seemed Oliver had taken control this time around. I found I was just fine with that. Holy mother of, sweet heavens. Oliver's tongue circled my clit. That's it, baby. And that's all it took. I pulled him closer, writing out the most explosive orgasm I'd ever had in my life. It caused my entire body to tremble with the force of each pulse-racking jolt. I cried out his name as I came in wave after wave of ecstasy. Oliver trailed kisses along my inner thighs, moving his way up the length of my body. It was still hard to breathe. My chest heaved as he cupped my left breast, bringing my nipple into his mouth. He nibbled and sucked the hard, sensitive peak, paying homage to the other. His gaze locked onto mine, and he stared into my eyes as he pleasured me. I almost fainted, it was so intimate, so sexy, such a private moment. Kissing between my breasts, he moved up my neck and to my jaw, whispering in my ear, Do you still want me to fuck you? Yes, please. I clutched his face, bringing his lips to mine. He took his time kissing me hard and reckless, positioning himself between my legs. With his face cradled in my hands, I admired his expression. The one I'd dreamt of late at night, alone in my room. I'd imagined him looking at me just like that. It was something I couldn't fully appreciate before, when I'd been so fearful of what it all meant or what would happen. Now there was no fear, just love, and nothing standing between us. His dick was at my entrance, and he held it there, ready to push inside me. I pushed inside her. Ah, oh, she felt perfect. Everything about her was perfection. She slowly adjusted to my size as I stretched her, and I took my time filling her, caging her with my arms, no rush. She bit my shoulder, taking me in, and pressed her hands against my hips. Dipping my head next to hers, I glided into a steady rhythm, fucking her nice and slow. Hell, you're gorgeous. I hissed between my thrusts, feeling her tightening around me. I love your eyes, I continue to rasp, enjoying your soft moans. Your hair, your skin, your belly, your belly button, your legs, your whole body. You're everything. I pumped a little harder. I love every inch of you, you're everything to me. 
I pounded a little deeper. You're not only perfect, but you're perfect for me. Everything I said, I believed. She knew I was serious, that I meant every word. I could see it in her eyes. And I'd spend my life telling her until there was not one single doubt in her mind. Ever. Mm -hmm, was all she could manage to say. My hips rocked against hers more urgently while my breathing grew ragged. She cradled me against her, crying out each time I pounded into her again, whispering my words of appreciation. Her breasts heaved with rasping breaths that were rising between my groans of pleasure. It all came together in a perfect symphony of breathing, moaning, and immense building pressure. She was so wet and hot that I slid in and out of her with ease. I throbbed and jerked inside of her, getting closer to the edge. I sensed the start of another orgasm rippling through her just as I began to groan and growl into her ear, pulling back only to thrust harder and faster into her, guiding us both to climax. She kissed me with fervor and rocked her hips to meet my every movement. Each slide of me sent her tumbling into a primal state where nothing existed but the two of us. I felt her tighten and tremble and did the same. Oliver, she whimpered, gasping for air. Laney. My voice was suddenly unfamiliar, dark and low as I hurtled over the edge. You're the one. You're mine, forever. She threw her head back, clenching around me as we felt an explosion of sensations, and she basked in the words and sounds cascading from my lips. Another orgasm ripped through her as I came, and she slammed her eyes shut, writhing against me until we were both completely spent, drowning in the pulsing pleasure as it rose and fell in waves. God, who knew it could be this good? She gasped softly. She clung to me, wrapping her limbs around my body and keeping me close. Our hands roamed over one another's slickened skin as we smiled and tried to catch our breath. I thought what we had before was pretty fucking amazing, I rasped after a while. But that was... Something else entirely, she finished my sentence. It was amazing. You're amazing. You're the amazing one. I'll never let you go again. A few minutes later she was lying on my chest, cuddled up in my arms. I searched her gaze. To think I almost lost you, I grumbled into her ear. I was too stupid to see what was right in front of me. By the way, do me a favor and lose that guy's number. She smiled wide. Done. I think he caught on that we're more than just roommates, anyway. He already asked if something was going on between us. Good. I smirked. You can tell him your boyfriend said to get lost. I swept my palm along the side of her face. She closed her eyes and leaned into my touch. He who? I don't even remember his name. She chuckled to herself. I like the sound of that, how boyfriend just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, and girlfriend should be just as easy. Give it a try. I gave her my signature Oliver smirk. I'm Oliver Humphrey's girlfriend. Huh. Yeah, I like the sound of that even better. She couldn't help but smile. Lisa is going to flip her shit when I tell her. It sure as hell does. Then my expression changed to serious. Jealousy may have been the catalyst to me waking the hell up to what's been right in front of me all this time, but my love for you is real. I placed a kiss on her forehead. I know it is, because it's terrifying. And wonderful. It's pretty much the enigma everybody always said it was. She rolled over, letting the sweetness of my words dance around in her tired brain, singing her to sleep. Cuddle with me, Oliver. I wrapped my body around hers from behind, squeezing her tight. I wanted us to hold onto each other as tight as we possibly could. She drifted off to sleep with a gentle smile on her lips. She was mine. Epilogue. Six months later. The smile on Laney's face was contagious, and I couldn't resist stopping her on the sidewalk outside the restaurant. I held her hand high above her head and spun her around in front of me, getting another good look of her in that red dress that drove me crazy. Damn, you look good, I grunted as she twirled in front of me. She grinned even wider and collapsed into my chest, nuzzling into me as I kissed her forehead. You ready? She intertwined her fingers with mine and turned toward the front door. Let's go! We walked inside to find Damon and my brother Miles waiting for us in a booth in the corner. They lit up at the sight of us arm in arm, probably out of relief that we were officially free from the dance of, will they, or won't they? Hey! Here they are, Damon said as Miles tipped his glass to us. They shuffled around, giving us room to squeeze in next to them. Laney's body melted against mine, fitting perfectly at my side. Cheers to the happy couple. 
Miles smirked as we all clinked our glasses together. After all these months, when will that stop being a celebratory thing? Laney asked on a laugh. When you get your PhD and there's something else to celebrate. I kissed her cheek. This was twelve years in the making, Damon reminded us. So, we might be celebrating it for another twelve years. Fine by me. I flashed a grin. I was personally celebrating it every day, but I wasn't about to admit that in front of the guys. They'd never let me live it down. The only thing I have to cheers to is how our dad won't stop riding my ass, Miles groaned before throwing back a shot. He won't let up. Ever since those fucking tabloids started circulating pictures of me partying. Miles shook his head. He keeps telling me I need to settle down. Your new relationship status isn't helping me, bro. He stared at me from across the table like I'd wronged him. Like it was my fault. I had to chuckle, which only caused another glare. Ah, oh, well. He talked to me, too. Damon nodded. He was hoping I could talk some sense into you. I tried to tell him you were just sowing your wild oats, and you'd get it out of your system eventually. I twisted my mouth to the side, treading lightly. Well, you do have to admit you've been sowing those wild oats for quite some time now. You know, Miles, you can grow up a little without settling down completely, Laney chimed in. Look at your brother here. He still goes on all his adrenaline adventures and has a good time. And we do a lot of fun things together. She shrugged. But the other nights we're at home watching movies together, just taking it easy. Yeah, I nodded, it's actually nice. You should try it. Your dad did take a huge chance in giving you that COO position, Damon noted. You can't blame him for worrying. Yeah, yeah, my brother huffed with a wave. Maybe I can take a lesson from my neighbor. She's the definition of an uptight bitch. Actually, Damon, no offense, but you two would get along great. She's hot, too. Banging body. If she wasn't such a goody two-shoes, I'd bang her. Hey, shut the fuck up. I'm not uptight, Damon defended. We all shot each other a glance as we quickly took a drink, giving us an excuse not to respond. Damon was one of the most meticulous guys we knew. He didn't take a single step that wasn't carefully planned. But if you're not going to have a go at her, you might as well set me up with her, he suggested, only half-joking. Miles shifted his gaze to him. Well, I would, but there's just something about that chick. So maybe your days of quiet... Relaxing nights staying in and watching television aren't so far off after all, Laney teased with a smile. Miles shook his head. You wouldn't say that if you met the woman. She's ice cold. Sometimes it just takes the right person to melt all that iciness away, I taunted, nudging Laney's arm. All right. Enough, you too. You're going to make me lose my fucking lunch. He flinched. I haven't had enough to drink for this shit. Let's order another round. She's here. Laney shrieked, bouncing out of the booth and toward the door. We watched as she met Lisa with a huge hug. I stood to greet her, knowing this moment was a big deal. I'd met Laney's best friend in passing here and there over the years, but I'd never been formally introduced to her as Laney's boyfriend. She was wearing a Holmes with a pants aren't t-shirt, and I almost laughed out loud. She had me with skepticism, and I could feel the protective vibe for her friend radiating off of her. So... You're the guy who's been stealing my best friend away for months now. Hey, we had a honeymoon phase. Laney shoved her playfully. But look at us now. We're out. And slowly acclimating back into the outside world. I winked before pulling Lisa in for a hug. I promise I'll let you borrow her back from time to time. You better. Lisa leaned in close to Laney. I've got that measuring tape, girl. You never shared the details. Lisa. What? She shrugged. It's a normal thing. I'm sure if you asked your man, he'd let you lead him to the restroom for, well... Yes, I would. I interrupted with a smirk. See, I told you he was a prince. She dug inside her clutch and pulled out a blue, rolled-up measuring tape. Here, Oliver. This is for later. She winked. You know us girls, we share everything. Oh, my God. Laney hit her face, and this time, Miles heard what had been said. She's not wrong. What do you have to hide, bro? Damon sat there with his mouth hanging open. It was funny as shit. Not a damn thing. 
I stood to make for the restroom when Laney tugged on my arm. Not here. Later. Her face was bright red, so I decided to let it go. You heard the woman, Lisa. It'll have to wait. She put her hands on her hips with a huge grin. Fine, but Laney, I'd best be getting a call tomorrow. Oliver's game. Lisa cut her eyes to me, and I nodded, trying not to embarrass Laney further, but it was so damn funny. Dear God. What have I done to deserve this? Laney tried to cover her face again. Lisa pulled her hands down. Well, you found me outside a coffee shop, and the rest was history. Now you're stuck with me as your best friend forever, girl. Deal with it. She raised an eyebrow, and the two started snickering. Laney grinned big. I love you. And that was one of the best days ever. Yep, it was, Lisa said. Girl, you're the confident bitch we all aspire to be. Laney pulled her into the booth beside us where we laughed, drank, and talked for a couple of hours. It was one of those warm, magical kind of nights that we didn't want to end. But the promise of what would happen when Laney and I got home was enough to pull us away. After months of hiding away in bed with her as often as we could, for as long as we could, I still wasn't satisfied. It felt like I would never get enough of her. Laney even jumped on the bike with me. I thought that had never happened, but she finally told me her real reasons as to why she'd always refused to go riding with me, her worry of being too close to me and some bullshit about the bike slowing down. After I told her that the bike was strong enough to carry more than the weight of two of me and two of her at the same time without me noticing, she finally relaxed and had a hell of a time. What should we do with the rest of the night? She asked as we stepped inside our apartment. She tilted her head to remove her earrings. A movie? Some junk food? A little of both? Or maybe, we could just go straight to bed. That last option does sound appealing. I smirked, pulling her close to me. But I have a better idea. Why don't you go change into something more comfortable and meet me in the living room? Oliver, you know I don't like surprises. Trust me! I smacked her ass as she turned to go to the bedroom. While waiting for her to change, I grabbed a bottle of tequila from the liquor cabinet and put some pillows on the living room floor. I threw on one of our favorite playlists full of songs from our high school years and sat cross-legged on the floor until she returned. What's all this? She grinned as I tugged her down to sit on the pillow across from me. I'd like to propose another game of truth or dare, without the dares. I handed her the bottle. She threw back a swig and wiped her mouth with a grimace. Oh, boy. First question is yours. She cut her gaze to the side, pausing in thought. Okay, I have a question for you. When did you know? Know what? That you loved me. She giggled, still blushing every time she said the L word in reference to us. Ah, that's a tricky one. I smirked. It happened in phases. But hindsight is twenty twenty. And I'd say, looking back now, that I fell in love with you the first time I saw you sitting in the principal's office. Liar. She smacked me on the leg playfully and grinned. And again, when I wanted to punch Amber Collins for bumping into you and calling you names. Stop lying. You'll grow a long nose like Pinocchio. Okay. There was the time I found you crying on the steps of the school building. I remember that moment. But, I remember something better. The first night you slept on my couch, and I saw your boobs. Laney's eyes widened. What? When did you see my boobs? How? You never said anything. Oliver. Well, what was I supposed to say, that I woke up and your tits were just out there? Your shirt had rolled up while you were sleeping. I didn't look too much. I covered you up with a blanket. I couldn't help but chuckle at her reaction. Oh, my God. Okay. Moving on. The next time? Her cheeks were pink and so adorable when she was embarrassed. The night we danced in your bedroom. And pretty much almost every time we saw each other. Until it all compounded and was so obvious, I couldn't hide from it anymore, which was pretty much the night at the bar before I ran home with that stupid scribbled napkin in my hand. It wasn't stupid, she said, her eyes growing misty. It was cute. She climbed across the pillows and kissed me deeply. You remember when I used to pass you all of those love notes from girls in high school? I nodded and let out a small chuckle. Of course. It's really no different. You writing it down on a napkin. It's sweet when you think about it that way. It didn't hurt your masculinity, either. 
That's exactly what I thought. I grinned at the memory. Of course, I was much more to the point with my note. Most of those you used to pass along to me were so cheesy and dumb. I know. I've read one. I saw a hint of guilt pass across her eyes. She was cute. Like I cared about it. Ha ha. You did? But there was one, though, it seemed more heartfelt than the rest. Oh, really? She said softly, pressing her lips to mine again. Hey, you're not getting out of this that easily. I teased against her mouth. It's your turn. All right. She sighed. Hit me. I took a drink of the tequila, forcing her to wait in suspense for my question. Last time we played, you said your secret was that you always wanted me to be your first. Uh, her cheeks rounded with a big smile, our hands playfully dancing together between us. And that mystery has been solved. So, why me? Her features softened, and I knew she instantly had the answer in mind. Her eyes sparked with intensity. You really want to know? I quirked an eyebrow. I'm dying to know. Please don't laugh. I'm dying to know, I repeated. I'm going to say it quick before I lose my nerve. I smiled. Shoot! I've been secretly in love with you since I was fourteen. For a second, I was fucking speechless. But her innocent expression made me smile again. You have? Only I was much more aware of it than you were. Painfully aware of it, actually. And one of those letters I gave to you, well, it was actually from me. But I think you knew that? My gaze darted around the room as I pieced it together. Sometimes the best things for us in life are right under our noses, and we never pay attention long enough to realize it, I mumbled. You remember it? She sat up in shock, her eyes filling with tears. I believe I could be one of the best things for you, because you are for me. But you laughed at it. You made fun of it with your friends. Of course I did. I was an idiot. I was being a stupid high school boy and trying to look cool, I assured her. That letter always stuck with me. I can't believe you never told me you were the one who wrote it. I can't believe you actually paid enough attention to it to remember. I thought it was the dumbest thing in the world to you. That you thought it was ridiculous no matter who it came from. Hold on a sec. I jumped up and ducked into the bedroom, returning a moment later with a cardboard box. I opened it and sifted through the tiny mementos I'd kept from high school, football game ticket stubs and award ribbons, prom souvenirs, and different pins I'd won. There in the bottom of the box were the folded pieces of notebook paper. I dug it out and handed it to her. You kept it, she gasped with wide eyes, a tear rolling down her face. Why would you do that? I wiped the tear away and kissed her cheek. I figured if someone cared about me enough to write all that out, even if it was just a high school crush, the least I could do was keep it. Besides, that was some of the most thoughtful stuff any chick has ever said to me. I had the letter in her hands in disbelief. I still can't believe you wrote it. I thought for sure you'd recognize my handwriting. I promise, it never crossed my mind that you were the one who wrote it. Why didn't you tell me then? Or put your name on it? Fear of rejection. She shrugged. But at least I put my initials on it. See? E.C. I thought you knew. Do you have any idea how many girls were in our school with those same initials? I didn't think it was you. You were always Laney to me. Next time you write me a note, sign it with Laney or at least an L. I'll keep that in mind, she said. I paused and thought about the question I'd been wanting to ask. Do you still feel that way? That maybe we're soulmates. More than ever. She smiled softly. But, also, we have to burn this thing. Oh, no. No way. I lunged forward, wrestling it from her hands. I'm keeping this forever. Actually, I'm going to read it a hundred more times now. She giggled and squirmed in my arms until our eyes met, followed by our lips. I guess it's good to know all those years I spent pining for you weren't totally in vain. She stared at me, stroking my face. Even if you never realized you felt the same way, you kept the letter. Her eyes filled with admiration. You're a good guy, Oliver Humphreys. I love you. I love you more, babe. I brushed her hair away from her face, holding my hand against her cheek. I may not have been ready for you then. But I am now. She leaned in and kissed me again, something we could never get enough of. 
Pulling a plain white envelope from my pocket after we'd come up for air, I handed it to her. That's not all. I wanted to surprise you with something. Laney's eyes lit up. What is it? It's not a surprise if I tell you, I said with a wink. Here, open it. She tore into the envelope, and when she pulled out two tickets to Coney Island, she jumped and squealed. Oliver! I can't believe you did this. I wrapped my arms around her and stared into her beautiful green eyes. We're taking it back to where it all began, babe. This time, it's a vacation for two, I said and kissed her nose. I love you, Laney. I love you, too. Always. Always, I echoed with a promise. I kissed her passionately in the middle of the living room floor. We ended up staying the entire night, making love until the sun came up. There would be many more nights like that to come. I'd left the gorgeous girl waiting for twelve years. I intended to make up for every second of it. The End